kiss as you're leaving. Blow me. Oh, a kiss as you go. And always think about me as you're going down your list. Blow me. Blow me a kiss. Oh, yeah. I'll miss her arms and her elbows. <laughs> He'll miss her legs so tall. I'll miss her neck and her shoulders. But I'll miss her head most of all. Go down, boys. Mr. Royce Campbell on guitar, ladies and gentlemen. I loved it when he sang Rhinestone Cowboy, didn't you, Pally? That was Glenn Campbell, oh, you tool. <laughs> Blow me A kiss as you're leaving, baby Blow me A kiss as you go Here's the big finish, Dean And if you wanna come home, honey Hey, that's okay Just grab Top show. Wah, 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 wah. Hello, Christy. Hey, Chick. Hello, Pat Godwin. Hey, Chick. Hello, Josh Arnold. Chick. <laughs> Hello, Ace Cosby. Chick. There's Willie Griswold. Chickster. Uh, we're ready to roll. I'm Chick McGee at the sports desk, such as it is. And here's Tom. I think it's a nice sports desk. It's an okay sports desk. Got a good sports day for us? Well, let's face it. If you're if you're looking for real sports information, you're in the wrong place. But if you're looking for fun, for biased editorializing, um, uh, outlandish claims with half the facts, a randomness of things we cover, <laughs> you are in the right place. This is the spot for you. any news source That's at all. Right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, Rumors and overheard uh, bromides. That's right. It's all here. Uh, Christy Lee has her Kiss t-shirt on. Real dumb. That's really nice. Um, <laughs> all the Love Gun t-shirts. Yeah, oh boy, yeah. <laughs> love Gun, I don't love. get it. <laughs> what are they trying to say with the term Love Gun? Uh, you got me. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Email us, Bob and Tom at bobandtom.com. <laughs> Try to explain. Actually, we have some interesting, uh, an interesting news story about about um love guns a uh, kind of about um uh, what would be considered classic rock bands oh yeah 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 and uh that ticket makes sense. ticket pricing yeah it, it's kind of a mr obvious yeah. story about uh what bands are charging the most and what their fans are willing to pay you can kind of put it together in your mm -hmm. head mm -hmm. uh, although i think a lot of every, i think everything is kind of skewed by the two years of covid and that research but we'll get to that coming up well any chance uh, these guys getting back together to uh, have a concert I don't think so. Oh, that would be so cool. Did they ever tour? Think, did, I don't think so. No. They it, were a made-up band. How could they yeah, but wasn't the guy that sang that part of one of those oldies, uh, oldies I wanna, tours? I want to say Andy Kim or something. Was Is that Andy name? Kim? I think. I don't know. Yeah, Sounds uh, like uh, it. But um, I, I want to get right to a letter here, and I'm going to have to You play. know that Hot Dog played the tambourine in the Archies. <laughs> He was the puppy dog. <laughs> he was the puppy dog. Well, anybody can play tambourine, obviously. Well, that no. proves no, it. No, I've, I've, I actually... <laughs> no. Uh, I have seen bands really? that can prove that sometimes don't give the singer the tambourine. Are you serious? Oh. Yes. No, no rhythm? Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, where was I? Oh, okay, uh, we, have a, we have a letter here, but I want to play just a little something to explain the letter. Now, yesterday we had a rather unusual story about uh, some research involving dolphins... And um, I, I guess technically the, the, this this is an inaccurate term. Porpoises, right? No, these were dolphins. What's but the I mean, they were bottlenose dolphins. But there's a dolphin fish. As I understand and there's it. there's a dolphin mammal, the porpoise, right? right. Dol dolphins have pointy noses and uh, porpoises have round noses. 
No, oh, that's wrong. That's what I know. Uh, is that okay? Yeah. I thought yeah. porpoises were only in freshwater and. Oh my great gosh, no, 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 now you're now you're ruining everything here. Dolphins Son apparently of. can recognize <laughs> each other from the taste of their urine. That's the gist of the story. But, but, but they mean. The the, the the flipper type, okay? Not, yes. not the fish that you eat, okay? The reason I bring this up is I want to play just a little what? bit of a key view. Just calm down. Okay. Of, instead of objecting to everything I say, let me just set <laughs> okay, this letter up and all we can right. move on I'm with the sorry, show. I'm sorry. Ooh. Okay. Um, we were we p- featured somebody from Kiwi Rogers. Mm-hmm. And we also got a nice story about Kiwi. Right. Uh, from Ms. Jess Hooker. Yeah. <laughs> who was uh, supervising a comedy show. And uh, uh, you can help me here, Christy. I believe uh, Kiwi allegedly came up to her uh, while she was on the phone and said to her, what? Um, how about I come up and rub on that ass? Something like that? that? That's very close. I, I, <laughs> how about I come up and rub on that ass, I believe was what I think that's what I said. <laughs> yeah. I think that's uh, yeah. That what you said. Yeah. I see. I see. But uh, this is uh, Kiwi. Uh, we're talking a little about, but you'll see the reference to Flipper here. And then, and then I will read you the letter that will be uh, that will explain why I'm, I'm going off on this. And here we go. Uh, let, me, let me ask you more about your dad. Now, someone told me that y- your dad was a singer. Is that true? No, he's not a singer. He was one of those guys. <laughs> I mean, not only being cheap, he was the kind of guy that sit in front of the TV oh. set and tried to sing everything on the tube. Oh, Lord. What's wrong with that? Everything. Yeah, but his whole thing was to jazz it up, whatever it was. Uh-huh. And so one day we're watching Flipper. Uh huh. Right, and you know how that flipper tune. They mm-hmm. call him flipper. No, the kids, we're just singing flipping faster than like my dad would just jazz it up. Come on, no one in the sea <laughs> is smarter than he, <laughs> and you know flipper lives in a world full of wonder, <laughs> flying here under on the sea, <laughs> talking about flipper. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. Right? You get the idea, though. Kind of a nice thing. But then that leads to this letter. Okay. Um, uh, this is from uh, uh, Thomas. He writes, I was listening to the last hour of your show yesterday when Flipper came up. Tell Josh that in Mad Magazine's spoof of Flipper, <laughs> in the end, Flipper <laughs> jumps up on the dock. Yeah. Unzips a suit and Lassie walks out of the flipper costume. Oh, okay. All this is what? because you suggested that uh, you said you weren't familiar with flipper, but wasn't it just Lassie? Of the sea, <laughs> of yeah. Of the sea. And the answer clearly is yes. <laughs> wow. well, thank you very much. Also, right. I looked it up on the internet. Dolphins kind of just wander in the sea, and porpoises have a have a, have a goal in oh, life. Oh, that, that makes oh, sense. They have, <laughs> they, they, have, they have a purpose, and they have... That's how I tell them apart. They're goal-oriented. They're I just tearing up. They're, the I see. Um, uh, well, uh, now I've got an answer to your question, Chick. What, uh, I, I'm not allowed to ask questions. Uh, Ron Dante is the oh, yeah, 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 right. man who uh, sings that song. And he he uh, had something to do with Barry Manilow, right? Yeah, he was like his producer. Or something, uh, but yeah, 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 in the in the summer of 2022, the Turtles will be headlined with the voice of the Archies, Ron Dante, Jr. <laughs> Turtles on stage. Ron Dante, boy. The voice <laughs> now, of now, Tom, are you picking me up for this concert, or am I going to pick you? Oh, I love these. I guys. love the Turtles. Have you ever seen them? They're great. Love them. And they did the flow and Eddie thing for a while, but now it's just Hard Mark pass. Bowman. I only know Happy Together. Do they have another? It's my hit? favorite. That's one of my favorite songs of all time. One of their early albums when I was a kid. Yes. Uh, yeah, no one's going to believe me, so I'll have to dig it up. One of their early album covers had uh, a lot of pubic hair in the front. Here's the thing. No kidding. Here's the thing. Ladies if, with. Uh, if we believe him right now, we it'll believe save you. us. It'll save us later. <laughs> like they were full frontal. Nudity? Yeah, like paint little paintings. Oh, yeah, okay. Was, was I got quite, you. Quite shocking. Um, by the way, the uh, that will also include members of Three Dog Night, Gary Puckett, and the Union Back Union Back Gap. Gap excuse Union me. Gap. <laughs> Oh, my gosh, the association, the yeah. Vogues, and the Cow Sills. I am there. What is this? We have to go see the association. This is uh, the uh, this year's lineup. I tell you what. For one of the uh, summer tours, the Happy Together Tour. I'll get you a limo. I'll get you a driver. If you and Josh get, uh, and I'll get you great seats if you stand in the crowd and yell, enter the young at the association. <laughs> enter the young, one until of the association's they, lesser hits. Until we'll, they we'll, play be ba- the song. we'll be back with that. Perhaps a little bit inappropriate these days. No. Um, right now, I want to talk about giving yourself a nice gift. How about that? You get home, you've had a rough day, you've had to deal with uh, contrary employees. Uh-huh. You can't get a word in edgewise, set up a, <laughs> set up a short little gag. To you've get talked for 
for 95% of this break. <laughs> uh, that's because I kept getting interrupted. <laughs> the point is, Bobby, you, how about a box of ride. awesome at your house when you get home? <laughs> Tell me more, Chick. Well, because box of awesome is there waiting for you. It's, it's a little... Uh, a little uh, slice of happiness. Yes, in your in your day yeah. after you put up with a boss who's just absolutely unreasonable and shoves Kiwi Rogers down your throat. How about this? Bespoke po Post partners with a small business and emerging brands to bring you the most unique goods. Goods, yeah, each and every month. And no matter what you have going on this season, Box of Awesome has you covered. What do you? What what kind of box you looking at this month, Josh? Let me tell you a little about the Hawker. What's the hawker? Using the traditional blacksmithing methods used in the Thai Burma War, this knife is forged, ground, stamped, and finished by hand. Exactly the way it would have been a hundred years ago. Is that right? Over a wow. hundred years ago. I just like to see that. Uh, how do you get started, Christy? <laughs> well, it's easy. You take a quiz at boxofawesome.com, chick. Mm. Those answers will help them pick just the right box of awesome for you. They release new boxes every month across a ton of different categories, like camping gear essentials, beach day must-haves. You get the idea. Plus, with each box of awesome, you're supporting a small business. 90% of everything that comes in your box of awesome is from a small up-and-coming brand. So get 20% off your first monthly box right now when you sign up at boxofawesome.com. Enter the code Bob and Tom at checkout. That's boxofawesome.com, code Bob and Tom, for 20% off your first box. Thank you very much. When we come back. Enter the young. <laughs> the association. And NBA playoff action. Uh... It's all coming up. Uh, this is the Bob and Tom Show. Hi, this is Dr. Will Miller, and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Which begs the question, why do you need Bob and Tom 24-7? Hey, rolling through a hump day with you today. Good morning. I'm Mark Allison. Yes, we've made it to Wednesday, May 25th. Jessica Alsman from the Bits and Pieces podcast will be joining us later this morning, as well as our comedian, relationship expert. That's right, sexy time. It's Allie Breen on the way on a Wednesday. Dear Allie. Again, coming up in the 9 o'clock hour, you can still get your letters into her. AllieBreen.com, A-L-L-I-B-R-E-E-N, and all social media, Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook. You know how to reach her and get the letters to her. They've been coming in, and she's been reading them on the air. So it's a lot of fun. We like to sit back, relax, and try to uh, help solve other people's issues and their relationships. We, of course, are not the people to be doing that, which is why it's so funny. Tune in later this morning right here on Bob and Tom 20. 4 7 it's Allie Breen and Sexy Time on the way. Hi, everybody. Christy Lee from the Bob and Tom Entertainment News Desk. Steven Tyler is in rehab after relapsing from sobriety due to pain medication from recent foot surgery. Tyler voluntarily entered treatment to concentrate on his recovery. However, that means Aerosmith has canceled their residency in Las Vegas for June and July. They plan to resume playing shows sometime in September. Actor Richard Gere has hosted a benefit concert for Ukraine at Carnegie Hall. The event raised $360,000 for Direct Relief, a humanitarian organization providing medical aid. Opera star Denise Graves and violinist Itzhak Perlman participated in the event on Monday night. Another year, another comedian, another complaint against Netflix for airing a comedy special featuring a comedian mocking the transgender community. Last year, you recall, it was Dave Chappelle. This year, it's Ricky Gervais. His new special, Supernature, made its debut yesterday. Almost immediately, it got criticism for what an LGBTQ advocacy group calls anti-trans rants disguised as jokes. While Gervais explains in the show his jokes target everyone and that any digs at transgender people aren't reflective of his personal views, critics blasted him and, of course, Netflix. And that's your news. I'm Christy Lee. More of the Bob and Tom Show coming up. We got some extra from the Bob and Tom Show. With us in the studio, comedian uh, John Garrett. You have a straight job? I mean, like a normal day-to-day -day thing? Yeah, I actually do. I'm actually a CPA, believe it or not. Oh, yeah, oh, and, um, that spells party. Yeah, it does. Most people find it think uh, CPAs are hysterical. Yeah. <laughs> no, of course not. Uh, we're dorks. Uh, big dorks. But... Uh, <laughs> 
Uh, and honestly, on behalf of all accounts out there, I'd like to say that we don't all do taxes. Some of us prefer to embezzle. <laughs> <laughs> it's much more lucrative. <laughs> I read recently uh, Willie Nelson wrote a song called Whatever Happened to Peace on Earth mm -hmm. as his little protest to the war in Iraq. Mm -hmm. And my immediate thought was, why does he care? It's not like it's his tax dollar being put to use. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I think the US, the U.S. government should write a song called Whatever Happened to Willie's 1040. <laughs> <laughs> that was a tax joke for the accountants. <laughs>Hey, Shooter, it's Kenny Tarmac. Hey, we just landed. I'm an ORD, just got in from TPA through ATL. And hey, guess what else just landed? The Bob and Tom app. I know, I know. Now, thanks to the Bob and Tom app, even if I have to go all the way from Foxtrot 20 down to Alpha 4, I can still listen live, see their videos, find an affiliate station, use the alarm, and even send a message. This is Kenny Tarmac signing off and reminding you, everything I touch turns to sold. You're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Yeah! The Essential Morning Radio. This is Bob and Tom 24-7. 24-7. 24-7. There's a new documentary out there entitled Sick. It's the winner of the Los Angeles Independent Film Festival Award. The film chronicles the life and times of super masochistic performance artist Bob Flanagan. In one scene, Flanagan is shown hammering a nail into, then removing uh, it from his most private part, which would be his penis. Wow. <laughs> Boy, what if he misses and, like, hits his thumb? <laughs> <laughs> well, then, that would hurt, Bob. <laughs> yeah, there's a bone in there. That's really going to hurt. That's going to hurt. <laughs> Hold sure. on a second. Morning, Bob and Tom Show. Bob and Tom? Yes. Yeah. Bob Vila. <laughs> Bob Vila, the uh, Hiya, Bob. famed famed home repair host. How is how's it going, Bob? Uh, pretty good. Good. What can we do for you? Hey, you know, you guys are talking about something. It's pretty common. Uh huh. <laughs> a lot of the home repair guys do it. I do it all the time. What's you, actually, that? you actually take a nail and pound it into your penis on purpose? Heck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, really? do, you, do you use a nail gun or do you use a regular traditional hammer and nail? I'm not a conservative guy. I just use a nail. Okay. Oh, okay. In fact, I was at the hardware store the other day picking up a nail just for that. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And uh, I uh, took it up to the counter. The guy goes, uh, "That'll be a dollar." I go, "Great." He goes, "That'll be a dollar four with tax." I go, "Tax? <laughs> Where I am? Kinky?" Uh -huh. <laughs> tax too. <laughs> they don't say we didn't warn you. Oh my God! There's laughter ahead. This is Bob and Tom, 24/7. Bob and Tom. They put the F in profession. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hello, Chick. Hi, there's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hey, Chick. Hi, Pat. There's Josh Arnold at the sidekick chair. Hey, Chick. Hey, there's Ace Cosby manning the track phone hotline. Hot phone. Howdy. It's hot. Uh, it's hot. <laughs> it's very, very hot. Uh, very, 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 he's a very handsome man. Very when, sexy. When, when you hot. say so, Christy. Very, very Ace. sexy. Would you like oh, to, yeah. Uh, as, as, Ace uh, has always been cool. Rogers once said, would you like to uh, rub out, rub out? No, I wouldn't, Sorry. but I'm I'm sure there are ladies out there who would. Many. Many women. Yeah. Yeah. There's Willie Griswold. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you, know, you for you upping know, the yeah factor. You have uh, an erection for Kiwi Rogers today? <laughs> if it, so help me God, if he calls and wants to be on the air, I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm Chick at the sports desk, and here's Tom. Uh, okay, uh, speaking of leaving. He probably doesn't have cell service. Pat Godwin is going to be leaving early to go to his son's graduation. Yay! Graduating hey, from what grade? Fifth. Fifth grade. Awesome. Congrats, awesome. Congrats, Jim. You made it. That'll uh -huh. be great. Uh, now, uh, so I, one. we want to get some music. Pardon me? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'd, I'd celebrate all of them. You know, I'd yeah. celebrate all of them a lot if I were you. I am going to. Christy goes I'm very proud. I have to leave early. Today's National Wine Day. Yeah. I'm going to dip dip into that area. Right? We got a lot early. going on. Got, lots, you know, we got a, a couple things to catch up with here. Um, first off, nice letter here. Uh, Josh and Willie were in uh, New York over the weekend. Illion, New York. All right, am I correct? Yeah, yeah that's uh, correct. Big, big, great show at uh, Catch a Tour. This comes to us, let's see, uh, uh, from there. I enjoyed Josh and Willie's show. At Catch a Tours, at one point uh, after Willie's set, Willie stood behind us and watching Josh's set. I felt like I was the meat 
in a pure comedy gold sandwich. <laughs> How about that? Oh. Thanks for the laugh. That's a nice letter. Very nice. You Thank you. Great job. Was that from a guy or a girl? Hmm? Well, it sounds a little weird if it was. Oh, from Tom's getting... We'll get to it later. Oh, my God. <laughs> It'd be nice to have a man meat sandwich. Man meat? Yeah, that's okay. a fun sandwich. All right. Okay. Uh, we, were, we had a, a weird, sandwich. That weird story yesterday <laughs> about correct. the hotel. I believe it was in Evansville, Indiana. The... The fugitives yep. that were caught, was it uh, the, the whites not related to each other? The prison yep. guard that escorted the... Vicky and Chris. Yeah, the... Oh, Vicky and Chris. A couple whites. Attempted murder. <laughs> yeah. Beaver, Beaver they, woman? They were, stay, they were yeah. staying in this hotel, and uh, people hotel. apparently are paying extra. There's a lot, like a huge line to... What is it, room 105 Rent or the room or something. Here we go on a different note. Oh. For approximately $1,000 a night, you can spend the night in room 272... At the Edgewater Hotel in Seattle, Pat Godwin. Do you know what that means? Uh, that means Led Zeppelin? Close. That that would have been my Is guess. That the shark story? Uh, the shark thing. No, it was apparently the Beatles stayed there during their 64 tour. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And this is the room where they showed the Beatles fishing out the window. Oh. 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 That. Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember that. It's a national holiday. Beatles fishing uh, out the window from a hotel. <laughs> you remember yeah. this? Did you bring 150 of Motel 41 yeah. if you're trying to make it. Okay. Now, and, then, and then yesterday we got on the topic. I forgot. I forgot. How did we get to this? Um, we were talking about, oh, the, you were continually playing. Playing the song Sugar Sugar. I don't know. <laughs> what are you talking Archie's. about? Uh, okay. Oh, honey, honey. Okay, right back at the pool. Oh. You are my sea girl. And uh, <laughs> we were wondering who actually sings that and did the Archies ever tour. Well, it turns out that's uh, that's uh, Mr. Ron Dante. <laughs> and he will be on the uh, the summer of twenty two tour with uh, with what is now the Turtles. And uh, it's, it's called the Happy Together Tour. Door. Wow. Honey. <laughs> oh, that's the current. Some of the uh, some of these guys are aging. Certainly, I know that Alice Cooper is now instead of singing "I'm 18," he's going "I'm 80." Oh, and I'm like, How you. many? Uh, I can't. How many you tickets? passed away seven years ago. <laughs> it's only me. So, how many so tickets? Are, uh, tickets are left for that? All of them? <laughs> no, this is a great. I've seen this Happy Together tour. It's great. Oh, okay. I have too. It's yeah. also going to feature um, some of the guys from Three Dog Night. Yep. Gary Puckett and the Union Gap. Remember their song? Oh, yeah. This one, uh, here we go. Oh, Younger, she's 75. <laughs> 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 and the, 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 Don't they do Will Power too? Will yes, yes, they do. They do. Um, the Vogues. Oh, another good band. The and Vogues. The, uh, Vogues. Yeah, they're, they're in all the time. Uh, and then, I have uh, no idea who the Vogues are. I'll What's play it? one of their songs for you in a minute. But, right. uh, the Cow Sills. Oh, yeah. And oh, then, of God. course, one of my favorites, The Association. Uh-oh. And um, I've always liked go. this song. There are many, many songs. All in of the... that to get to this. <laughs> Any? <there> are... <laughs> Did I mention the... Uh... I know, I know. Uh, so you, this is one of your favorite associations? Yes, it is. it is. This is just a little snippet of it. Enter the young man. <laughs> the chorus. Enter the young man. There's no... There's nothing I'm humming. There's no, there's no that's not even a melody. That is, that's there's a rare no, misstep. There's of the no association. melody. There's no. I mean, how, how did you? How are no. you even familiar with that song? That's on their album entitled Greatest Hits. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> yeah. How did you come across that? Uh, my brother had it, uh, and I would play it. I mean, it's got what is it? Windy. Yeah. Cherish. Uh, Cherish is a great song. I, yeah. I, I, wish, I genuinely song. love it. Me too. Um, yeah. What's the one? Every time I think that I'm the only one. Yes. Only someone calls on me. The, well, I like the, that one too. Impossible yeah. lyrics. I love that one's that great song. too. Um, no spanking. Along art. comes Mary. That's yeah, a great song. Oh, that was the song you were singing. Yeah, that's. I couldn't think of the yeah. title yet. Yeah. But Enter the Young. I think uh, perhaps. Uh, now what I, they mean is it out of they're essentially context. saying send send in the clowns. God, yeah. yes. And Christy, her- Taking things out of context <laughs> is how I built my house. <laughs> that, is, that is how you pay your mortgage. Right. Um, Enter the young. Is, did the Vogues do the song Turn Around, Look at Me? Turn Around. They did one. Five O'Clock World, right? Yeah. This one. This oh, is a great song. Beside. I love the Okay, I bet it's No, not. the instruments on this are really cool. Oh, I remember this song. Songs all the time. I do. Huh? You gotta goose them. Huh? Fellas, huh? we That's can it. practice the snap later. Huh? We're recording a song. Huh? 
<laughs> I love those songs where they have, uh, like, oh, God, who does that? They'll have a, a sort of a bunch of people talking like it's a party. It's, I love that, too. Yeah. Like I, Bar- Barbara Ann, the uh, Beach Boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then uh, Marvin Gaye has it a couple times. And a ton of um, Johnny Winters. I hate is that, those. Is it Johnny, no, no, Johnny no, no. Rivers? Johnny, Johnny, Johnny Rivers. Rivers. Yeah, thank That's you. That's yeah. fake. I yeah. love that. I hate songs where they talk before they sing. If you're going to yep. sing, just There's sing. If you're going to talk, just Me talk. Too. Like are the you Weezer kidding? and Weezer, the sweater song, they I do that. I love that song. What are you talking about? Like, oh, Johnny's going to go to the party later. Yeah. Sets a scene. Yeah. Sets a scene. Here we go. Yeah. We what, we could uh, do a whole show about songs that feature uh, a sort of variance on yodeling. Uh, we could. No, Is that you, right? no we, could we that. you could, but I'm going to drink wine. It's the most famous one. You know what? I am here for it because I want to see how it all ends. Oh, there's a bunch of them. Oh, I, I, the most famous one. What's the most famous? The most, the famous? the most famous one I would think would be that um, instrumental. Hocus Pocus. Hocus Pocus. Oh, right, yeah. yeah. That's, a Hocus, crap. That's absolutely Hocus the Hocus. most famous. Yeah, isn't it? And, of course, Slim Whitman. No, it's Slim not Kraftwerk. Whitman. It's Hocus Pocus by Focus. Or Focus by Hocus <laughs> Pocus. I, I can never remember <laughs> which one. Isn't there some uh, Hank Williams stuff where he's kind of yodeling on there? Sure. There are yeah. a lot of country songs where there's yodeling. So, uh, I, then Why isn't Hank Williams in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Yeah. I'd be kind of surprised if he wasn't. He Junior will probably is, make right? it. Um, yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Uh, so, in, in any event, uh, enter the young, uh, the association. But so, the, your question is answered, Chick. If you want to go see the Archies and Ron Dante, they'll be coming around this summer. <laughs> It uh, should be a should be a fun fun tour. Okay, it's, it's, we'll all buy uh, tickets and go together. That's what we're gonna do. A song <laughs> called Hocus Pocus by the group Focus. <laughs> See? Oh, oh. <laughs> what year do you think? Seventy one. Seventy three. No. Really? Later than that, I think. I like really? the end of this where they just lose their minds. Yeah. This. Ah! Yeah. This sponsored bad mushroom trips everywhere. You gotta admire these guys. I, I like it. So original. Yeah. That's for sure. Can you imagine the producer going, hey, fellas, can you start yodeling in this part? And they went, uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> Released yeah. July of 1971 in really? Europe, February God. 1973 in the United States. Took a couple of years. Make so Ace here. and I were both right. I, I'd be very good. I, would, I thought it was later than that, but yeah, that's a, that's a good one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, we got sidetracked there. I think that was right around the time that uh, Queen and Bohemian Rhapsody and all that. that yeah. was, uh, that's kind of a yodeling, uh, isn't it? No? Maybe? Uh, influenced uh, like... Uh, isn't Bohemian Rhapsody... Uh, yeah, that's a good one. Bohemian go. Rhapsody 75? <laughs> I said they paved the way. I, oh, yeah, I, didn't oh say, I didn't say they... Oh, really? That, all this, we don't even get happy together by the turtles? God. That you is, know, that, that we should play Happy Together because that says everything you need to know about Christy. It's one of her favorite songs. Yes, it And is. we'd be happy together. We would. You, you know, guys... everything's going yes. to be perfect. <laughs> everything's going to turn out exactly the way I think it Man. should. Watch this. Uh-huh. Do you... Um... Yeah, get her. Get her. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a uh, a song... You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, there's there's a great commercial right now that shows the couple dancing, and then he says, right. hey, Alexa, play our right. song. Right, And they play this really great commercial. We just had this conversation over the weekend. Hey, Tom, ask her about Ain't That a Kick in the Head. Ask her. Just, no. Stop. <laughs> Could I? I can't get anything out. My question is, do you and your new man have a song? Not yet, no. Okay. It's got to be, it's got to be organic. Yes. Yeah, you, just, because we were talking about this, because we don't have a song, and I'm like, but it's got to... <laughs> Come yeah, you up. You can't just and, say, hey, look, uh, yeah. I noticed that you keep playing Backdoor Man. Uh, <laughs> the door is Oh, my version. God. One, <laughs> one could make the argument that one might notice that if you've already said, we need a song, we have to have a song, the moment's ruined. And, no, no, uh, but she's saying it has no, to be inorganic. Uh, it has to well, be inorganic. Now, historically, well, I don't want to get into any particular... <laughs> Any particular individuals, uh-huh. yeah. but historically over the years, with the <laughs> not to, and I'm again not suggesting that you have like some merry-go-round of men you've slept. No, sure. no, 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 no. Over the years, has there been a, a specific song <laughs> you would say to someone, "This is our song"? Yeah, of course, okay. you've got that, don't you? Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, what am I thinking, uh, Rance Romance? What I, I should have known that. I, I don't think you would have. A, a no, I, I, I'd have to think. I don't think so. <laughs> have you ever had a song? I don't think so. How you about you? How about it doesn't you, come on the radio and you dance in the kitchen. Um, okay. Not really. I... There was talk of a um, of a song at a at a potential wedding. Yeah. 
Uh, when Ain't I was in my most kick- serious relationship. Really? Ain't Love but, a Kick in the Head is one of our songs. Wait, wait, hang on a second. Wait, wait, I didn't realize. This is all new territory for me. Josh, you were going to get married? Well, there was talk of it, yeah. I, what was the you song? Knew, I mean, you knew I was living with uh, somebody in something yeah. like that, so. you do that. Um, I just don't know what I can talk about with your personal life. It's always so off limits. Well, that's well, because you ruin everything. <laughs> you realize jo- that. Josh is the one whose personal life is off limits. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, that's because um, mine is too. So I'm sorry. So do you mind if I ask what the song was? Yeah, we liked uh, um, In Excess song. Um, oh, hell. Oh, oh hell? The that doesn't inside. sound good. Mm. Now, well, for whatever reason, it's eluding me. <laughs> oh, no, it's in, in Excess, Hanging and Swinging in the Closet. Oh, oh, it may have been that, yeah. Oh, 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 I think that's it, yeah. I love it. Hanging and Swinging. Oh, and we were swinging. Never tear us apart. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, very good, very good. What about uh, uh Turns out I, I tore us apart. <laughs> oh, no. oh, Josh. How about so let's, maybe we should shift the focus. Ace, did you ever, uh, in, the, in the course of your life, have uh, a... Get comfortable. This will be a while. <laughs> in a humorous way, yeah. Uh, a woman I was going out with, she actually called me on the air and requested a song, which was one of my favorites, but I never told her that. And... Oh, that's, so that's your song. Is it, can you say what it is, or is it... Uh... called Yeah, 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 by the band Kix, K-I-X. That should be in a short film. That's lovely. <laughs> she called in, and she requested a song, and it was one of your favorites, yeah. and you never told her? Mm-hmm. That's I want to cry. What about you? No, tell me, yeah, yeah, yeah. When she came over to your house, did you did you sort of serve her a bowl of Kix? See if she, she well, for kids, Tom. Oh, okay. I really, uh, I really enjoyed uh, PYT by Michael Jackson. You oh, really? That. Did you? Pretty, <laughs> pretty, pretty young thing, you know. So we're, we're, we're keeping with Possible our Possible misstep for Mike, <laughs> but, uh, okay. you know. Along with... Uh, okay, thank you very much. Uh, Get out of my life. Here you go, Josh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this is a good song. <laughs> <Boy>. <laughs> Does that hurt a little bit? <laughs> it takes a while. Oh, does that hurt a little bit, Pat wants to know? Wow. Boy, what what were you thinking? Okay, Josh? Sorry. Don't. Oh. That was your song. I didn't I didn't really want to oh. Poor guy. So you you just had then the one, Christy. Oh no. Oh, there, oh, there were others? Well, I was married three times, yeah. Okay. No, you didn't have a song like a wedding song where you danced at your wedding? Yeah. To a song? I, no. I, did, yeah. What did you what how, what were the other two? Ain't for love you? a kick in the head was you know, the third I'm one. sorry, but my favorite thing about you is that you're uh, the Teflon person. You act like you've never been yeah. married. You act yeah, like you've never done anything. You've never had sex. Meanwhile, we <laughs> could you're blow above the lid reproach. Off this. Never yeah. had kids. We could blow the lid <laughs> off this charade. <laughs> I, um, no, I, but I'm the, the the topic is did you have a specific song? Chick, yeah, did some you? Roy Orbison song was the second one, and I can't remember. Pretty woman? No, it wasn't Pretty Woman. It was a, it was more of a Christmas song. It was like a holiday <laughs> song that he oh, happy birthday. really liked. <laughs> Merry Christmas! Can you do the Roy Orbison growl? <laughs> that's oh, Chewbacca. that's good. How much? <laughs> to Chewbacca. That's to Chewbacca. <laughs> Yeah, that's definitely Chewbacca. Okay. And the first one was a Michael Jackson song, but it wasn't P.Y.T. Yeah, P.Y.T. It's a good it one. It wasn't yeah. that one. Was, uh, <laughs> okay, all right. I'd have to think that was a long time ago. Wow. There you go. No, I, you're, I, you're, no you're still? that was an well, Tom, Chewbacca will come in handy later today because it's the anniversary of the release of Star Wars. Oh, cool. Thanks, Ace. Uh, hey, uh, here's an email <laughs> from a lady named Robin. How can you all... Not enjoy Tom and his antics. <laughs> I think he is just the most jolliest, crazy person I've ever heard. That's sweet. I can't get enough of everybody, but I really love Tom. You're all so lucky to work with Tom. Who is well, this? Person? How about Robin? Thanks, Mom. Somebody named Mom. Uh, somebody named Robin in oh. uh, in Kentucky. Do you have a resume? Pretty paper was the Roy Orbison song. What was? Pretty paper. Oh. Oh, and I also have... Uh, pretty paper. Water. <laughs> he kind of got into a rut there where he... <laughs> I also have a, a new JFK Jr. joke. Do oh. you? Uh, <laughs> is this a new thing that I'm not aware of? Do you yeah. know uh, what JFK Jr. said to the to the butler? No, what? You feed the dogs, I'll feed the fish. Oh. 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 Hey, hey, oh. hey. Come on. <laughs> Is this a new thing? <laughs> are these? Uh, it's gonna be. I like the Chuck Norris <laughs> jokes more. Oh, I don't know. Well, those are, are lighter. Those sure. are played. Uh, I like those uh, Chick London jokes, man. He's Chick my favorite London. Guy. 
Not I'm sure. getting email for Chick London, by the way. Thanks. That's uh, Chick McGee's new uh, <laughs> new persona. Chick I can't London. help it. Chick London. The I world love it. loves Chick London. And uh, Josh, you want to read this uh, welcome mat that somebody sent in for me to use it at the compound? Oh, I like it. Yeah. It says uh, it looks like a, a, your standard welcome mat. Right? Very inviting, but it says there is no reason for you to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Ding dong. <laughs> There'll be no answer. I have a doorbell, you know. Hey, I want to get a sign. Can you like a no solicitor sign or whatever? People like going door to door to sell stuff. Sure, I, you can. I hate that. They're showing up. I do not want any more of those. I'm going to put a sign up. Is that very yeah. curmudgeon-y, though? No, you can get them at any hardware store. The weird thing is they sold those no soliciting signs door to door. Isn't that uh, <laughs> sort of life's great irony? irony. That's, that is funny. hilarious. <laughs> That's weird, right? Sort of a definitive irony. Yeah. <laughs> Can you give me the sports teaser, my friend? Well, the NBA uh, playoffs continue. Uh, the Mavericks have forced a uh, game five, and Mark Cuban was not happy last night, even uh -oh. though the team he owns won. The arena he owns did not uh, perform up to snuff. I'll tell you what happened. And uh, we had the NHL playoffs, and we have a weird, odd, strange world record and uh um, are there a couple tech guys at the uh, stadium right now going oh man no, cuban's gonna be so cuban's pissed. gonna <laughs> chew us a new bunghole oh no, that's morning. all coming up yes. uh, right now um uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, what this is it's the month of may which means a lot of great stuff indy 500 coming up of course also it's uh did you know this better sleep month and uh, no way to get better sleep. Yeah, I know a way. Oh. It's, uh, of course, uh, the sleep number bed. Christy Lee, what's your sleep number setting? 45, and it's back, baby. All right. I slept so good last night. Uh, Chick McGee, your sleep number setting? 100. I like that firm mattress, that's and good. it stays firm with the sleep number bed. Too. You know, this works. Either side of the bed has its own setting, and you can change it at the touch of a button. So you could be 100 and 100, or you could be 45 and 100, whatever you want. Proven quality sleep is the best, and sleep number is the best way to get it because uh, it's like having 40 different mattresses. Everybody's happy because they set the firmness of the mattress for themselves. Get all the details by visiting your Sleep Number store. Just go to sleepnumber.com slash BT show. And there's something special going on right now. It's the Sleep Number Memorial Day sale. Save a thousand bucks on the Sleep Number 360 Special Edition Smart Bed. We've been talking about this for a long time. This is the bed that uh, digitally and scientifically tells you what you can do to sleep even better. Queen Bed's now just $19.99. Limited time offer. All the details once again. Sleepnumber.com com slash BT show. I do love my sleep number bed. Coming up, we have um, some really interesting stuff, including a fascinating story about sunglasses and um, what people do when they're wearing them. This is the Bob and Tom show. <laughs> Want to share something? Send us an email. Bob and Tom at Bob and Tom .com. This is the Bob and Tom show. Things you hear on the Bob and Tom Show. Comedian Jeff Rothpan here in the studio with us. When I was a kid, all these other kids got to go to the Barnum and Bailey Circus. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember begging my dad, please, I want to go. All the other kids are going. He said, no, we just can't afford it. Tickets are expensive. He ended up taking us to this Bob Circus. It was actually <laughs> called, no, this is true. Bob, Bob Circus. 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 Yeah. And it was in a mall parking lot. <laughs> and what a difference. I remember the guy yelling, and now, huge midgets. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> oh, yeah, there was just one after another. The, the bearded man. <laughs> I think they actually had the talking mute. Hi! <laughs> Bad. What the hell is this? How does he do it? <laughs> uh, it's amazing. He's a mute, yet he speaks. <laughs>
Hi, this is comedian Rob Haney, and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Ah, uh, get another cup of coffee. It's time to wake up, everybody. It is Wednesday, May 25th. Jessica Alsman, Ali Breen on the way. And don't forget about this Friday, the Bob and Tom Show Carb Day broadcast. The tradition continues. Another Bob and Tom exclusive live from Speedway, Indiana. Special guests including Drew Powell, Al Unser Jr., two-time winner of the Indy 500, Duke Tomato and the Power Trio, the Brass to Mouth Power Trio Horn Section, and more, the Bob and Tom Carb Day broadcast right here coming up Friday morning. What do you have to do? Just tune in and listen right here on Bob and Tom 24-7. Good morning, I'm Mark Allison. With things you may have missed, Roman Abramovich's 19-year ownership of Chelsea ending after the British government approved the sale of the Premier League club by the sanctioned Russian oligarch to a consortium fronted by Los Angeles Dodgers part owner Todd Boley. The government had to be sure that Abramovich, who was sanctioned over his links to Russian President Vladimir Putin, did not profit from the enforced sale of the club that his investment turned into one of the most successful in European football. The reigning FIFA Club World Cup winners and 2021 European champions will be sold for $3.1 billion U.S., the highest price ever for a sports team once Premier League approval is granted. The University of California system has agreed to pay $375 million to more than 300 women who said they were sexually abused by a longtime UCLA gynecologist. The announcement Tuesday brings total payments by the university in lawsuits against Dr. James Heap to nearly $700 million. That's the largest amount paid by a public university in a wave of sexual misconduct scandals involving campus doctors. The private University of Southern California paid out more than $1 billion to settle thousands of cases against its longtime gynecologist. Heaps worked at UCLA for 35 years and has pleaded not guilty to 21 sexual abuse charges. That's a look at things you may have missed. More of the Bob and Tom Show coming up. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob and Tom. I talked about dads earlier, and I, I remember as a kid Uh-oh. building sandcastles with my dad until my mom took the urn away. Took the urn away. Oh. Joke of the day. So, Maybe we should do a different one. <laughs> let's, do, let's, do a, let's do a different one. Oh, the, cro- the, cro- the crop in his shirt. Well, I think we do need to do a second. Yeah, that, can uh, we do a second joke? Yeah. Ace? Sure. Here he is with his joke of the day. What's a cat's favorite button on a TV remote? Oh, what? what is it? Pause. <laughs> there you go. Bob and Tom in the morning and highlights all day long. The Bob and Tom Show, weekday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern on Bob and Tom 24-7. Bob and Tom 24-7. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, from the MES News Center in New York, I'm Tom Bochow. In Bogota, Colombia, Brian Naranjo, age 18, says being small has its advantages, one being having a better view of girls in miniskirts. Standing just 27.9 inches tall. (laughs) Wow. Rod Joe was named the smallest man in Latin America. (laughs) That's Guinness Book of Records. Uh, 27 inches tall. Besides holding the number one position, he fulfilled another dream by going to Disneyland where he called the It's a Small World exhibit disappointing. Stockholm, Sweden, Leif Borg, warning he would blow the courtroom into the air just 10 minutes earlier at his divorce trial, pulled dynamite from his briefcase and set it off, killing himself and seriously wounding his wife's lawyer, severing the lawyer's limbs. Wow. Witnesses said the explosion occurred during proceedings to determine how the couple's property would be split. For once, a lawyer got the charge that cost him an arm and a leg. And on a high one, not a boy. Good move. <laughs> call, call. <laughs> Throw away the script and get out. Bob and Tom, well meaning, but. Yeah, they're. They're all messed up. More than slightly confused. Yeah, but it turns out I'm, I don't I don't sleep well anyway. I've been grinding my teeth. Doesn't he? Mm-hmm. I didn't know I grind my teeth until mm. I woke up. My husband was pouring coffee beans into my mouth. <laughs> that, that was, what a weird way to save time in the no morning. No kidding, but it's fresh coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Sunshine. Bob and Tom 24-7. 24-7. Way, yeah. Hey, welcome.
Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee spread Hi. out on the news desk. Whoa. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hey, Chick. There's Josh Arnold at the sidekick chair. Hi, Chick. There's Ace Cosby hey. manning the track phone hotline hot phone. Got that Omaha steak joke of the day in his back pocket. There's Willie Griswold. Good morning, Chick. I'm Chick McGee at the sports desk. And here's, fresh from having eye drops in his eyes, here's Tom. Chris. Sorry, I got a... Um, Dry eye? What are you going No, for? I had a bug in my eye last night. I was going for a I know you had a bug in oh. your ass. I, I know that. <laughs> no, well, apparently you, uh, you absorbed what? it about it. What are you talking ago. about? Uh, uh, <clears throat> good morning. Welcome to the show. How's everybody doing? Good. Okay. Good. Yeah, doing very well. Uh, now, uh, before we get to sports... <sighs> Uh, I uh, wanted to. I, I mentioned something before we went into the break. Everyone got all upset. Um, about, I laughed really hard. I, I think. Well, it, it was about uh, sunglasses. Yeah. And uh, since you wear we're, your we're, sunglasses we're, we're, at we're, night, we're playing snippets of various songs. We would be remiss if we didn't include this classic song. <laughs> it is cool. I, I'm oh, I am right back in a club. I'm embarrassed club. to think I like that song. Why? It's great. It's oh. the same note over everything. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's a great song. You have a point, but it, yeah, it's still pretty no, cool. No, no, he doesn't have a point. Chick, I love that song. You convinced me totally. <laughs> Not a ton of range, but yeah. It's, uh... <laughs> See, this is the thing. This is the problem. Everyone yeah, is. It, 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 you you expect way too much range. Not everybody's Meryl Streep in the world of I acting. I didn't say that. It's okay if you're a one note actor. One of the better. Oh, but, well, he always has his. Well, he had what three or four albums that were amazing, right? Do you not hear that song and immediately you're in a place? Yeah, I, I love I, this song. I, I can see myself in a club. I it's a the sexy 80s, song. It was great. Yeah, great song. And, yeah. and it's, uh, we all know that if you wear sunglasses at night, you're a complete ass. That's not true, but researchers yeah. have found that wearing sunglasses makes people more inclined to... Uh, be suspicious of you. Ogle. Ogle. Oh, really? Now, oh. wait till you hear how they found this out. This is oh. a great experiment. Josh, you're going to love this. The study participants don sunglasses or clear glasses while viewing sexually provocative images. Porno. Researchers found that the people spontaneously looked more and for longer at the sexually provocative images, porno, when their eyes were camouflaged by sunglasses. What? The findings were published in the journal Cognition. Yeah, they had a uh, they have these machines that can see where you're looking. Yeah, but so, so no, you've seen these experiments where they can tell exactly where your eyes are going. Yeah. yeah. And they had observers watching them, and then in the in cases they would be wearing sunglasses, the participants would watch the porno for longer periods of time. Or huh. porn. Porn. Either way. Um, well, I think it's fascinating. That makes sense. Yeah, but I mean... You then, think you're camouflaged and nobody knows what you're doing? No, I think you're you're putting way too much into it. I think they, there were inter interesting images to these people and they just stared at them longer. That's no, but all. They're, they're, Their sunglasses a... had no part in it. No, no, you don't understand how experiments uh... work. They had some people with no yes, sunglasses. Yes, you, you have you have people that are not wearing sunglasses. They 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 give them clear glasses. If this, you will. I don't know. This isn't total like. This isn't a perfect experiment. Have you heard of the term junk science? Because <laughs> every every individual is different. So I guarantee they had some people who weren't wearing sunglasses that still looked at the porn a long time. Well, yeah, and they, vice versa. But they obviously did this. With, I forget how many the, I, the in the group. I believe it was twenty five thousand. You know what? I you think so. Oh, you <laughs> think they went ahead and got a? There's no way it was twenty five. You know what? I don't know what we're thinking. You're right, Tom. This is fascinating. <laughs> yeah, and I. I would love to hear a song. Well, from I, Pat Godwin. I would love to hear a song. <laughs> now, do you have a song about uh, about uh, sunglasses, Pat? No, oh, I have a song about Josh's porn days. Oh, going to the porn shop oh. called Spanky's way back in the day. Sure. All right. Mm -hmm. Let me take the temperature of the room. Okay, let's go. <laughs> back in '97, way before Josh could stream. Have to go to Spanky's for a penthouse magazine. Down at the porn shop, he'd have to drive. Oh yeah, to a nasty rundown building off I-65. Down 
Down at the porn shop. <laughs> the creepy clerky smile. Down at the porn shop. Who has the big booty aisle? Down at the porn shop. His mom has many concerns. Down at the porn shop. When she makes his return. <laughs> Down at the porn shop. <laughs> porn porn shop. shop. Yeah, looking around the place. Josh can't believe his eyes. Videos of butts and boobies, every color, <laughs> every size. Down at the porn shop, way back in his youth, yeah. Where he took his pants off in the video boom. <laughs> Down at the porn shop, it ain't so discreet. Down at the porn shop, your butcher's beating me. Down at the porn shop. <laughs> Now he won't leave the house. Down at the porn shop. Doesn't need a hooker spouse. <laughs> Down at the porn shop. Porn shop. shop. There you go. Classic. <laughs> Referencing one of my favorite stories, I I, I, I really admire Josh for this. Yeah. Uh, Josh, uh, back in the days when you would rent uh, videos and DVDs, uh, Josh, I believe you had to go to some event and you didn't want to pay the fines on the, uh, the overdue uh, porno DVDs and your mom returned them for That's you. That's right. My parents dropped them off. Yeah. How about that? Do you remember the titles of those pornos? I remember you? one title <laughs> what, what, because uh, my mom looked at it and then she <laughs> she goes, so what exactly is unnatural sex? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Fair question. Yeah. And Fair. it's not that unnatural, just anal. No, 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 no. <laughs> Did you say that to your mom? You told your you mom, told your mom No. Uh, oh, wow. okay. That's, I mean, uh, uh, that's amazing. That you would. Be... I think that's nice that he had that relationship yeah. with his mom. I, they, I mean, it wasn't one of my prouder moments, and they weren't thrilled about it. <laughs> but yeah. Did your dad go? Did they go into the porn shop together? I don't or? know. I don't know. He wasn't with them, or he would have returned the videos. Yeah. We can call your mom and ask her. She, I asked her about this. She doesn't remember it. Oh, really? Oh, well, yeah. we could talk, call your dad. To, uh, <laughs> oh. All day he's been doing that. That's what we're putting up with. He would. I'm, I guarantee he would have. Uh, really, well, he, yeah, I know he remembered it because, uh, yeah. He heard he us talking about, about it on the show. You're right. Okay, well. Um, My mom probably blocked it out. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I would. In any event, uh, this inter fascinating study about people wearing sunglasses uh, in this experiment. Fascinating. They, uh, <laughs> it says right here, they spontaneously looked more and longer at sexually provocative images. Did they tell them what they wanted to find out before no. they put the sunglasses on? No, the they didn't tell them that. Will you look at, you know, if you're on a beach and you're wearing sunglasses, will you all go a little longer than maybe you would? I don't know. I never really thought about oh, it. Okay. Those early corners. Walks. I was all alone. I'd just gone through a breakup. I had the sunglasses on. I was being a little pervert. I was oh, yeah. looking around. I was um, creeping. Oh, yeah. I think it, I think it's a natural thing. Spend a little more time on that ass, Just right? trying to get a yeah. scent of a woman. People don't know what Lonely. you're looking at. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, wearing sunglasses. What do you stare at first, Tom? Huh? Boobs, butt, butt. Oh, my gosh. The Brain. Scientifically or whatever, <laughs> isn't it smile? Don't people mostly look at uh, smile first? Yes. Or is it eyes? Eyes, probably. Well, it's a smile and his sense of humor. Yes. <laughs> yes. I that's stare right into their soul. Yeah. <laughs> these Boy, days, that's a days tougher to find. <laughs> well, Ooh. until they look at you and say, you know, you're just not funny anymore. Oh. Whoa. Oh, Wait a second. <laughs> welcome, wow. to, welcome to the truth. Whoa. <laughs> welcome to the little, truth. A <laughs> little, little, little early in the morning. Fun. Maybe we should get yeah, some. We've had too many truths this morning. Yeah. How about uh, how about this? I got it coming up. We're going to be lucky enough to hear the song Hot Dog Water, or the, the tribute to Hot Dog Water, one of my personal favorite uh and um the we hot dog have water's going away people don't boil their hot dogs no, that's wrong uh, when we come back all these important things in the world like hot dog water uh, this is the bob and tom show just got to get a hold of us call fax mail or email get all the contact information you need at bob and this is the bob and tom show
things you hear on the Bob and Tom Show. Comedian Jim Gaffigan joins us in the studio. A family man, a clean liver. Now, when you're on stage, Jim, you don't do a, a blue kind of show, do you? I'm very clean and kind of, uh, you know, I talk about cake for like an hour because, you know, cake's an <laughs> cake. important topic. Cake, Absolutely. tell me about cake. Well, mean? there's a lot of different... Cake's a powerful food. Cake can actually bring people together. You know, it's Bill's birthday. Yeah, I hate that guy. There's cake in the conference room. Well, I should say hello. <laughs> Who am I to pass judgment on him? It's his big day. There's so many types of cake. There's rum cake, which makes sense because we've all been eating cake and thought, you know, this needs booze. (laughs) Booze? Bottle of liquor. I don't have time to eat and drink. There's fruit cake. That's a bit of a disappointment. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You'd think that would be better. Fruit, good. Cake, great. Fruit cake, nasty crap. It's amazing. Have you tried fruit cake? I don't even think that's fruit in there. You're like, when is that a skittle? <laughs> Hi, this is Bob and Tom 24 7. My name is Jim Gaffigan. I have to go and, well, I just had a <laughs> So you know where I'm going. Thursday, May 26th through Sunday, May 29th, Donnie Baker will be at Comedy Off Broadway in Lexington, Kentucky. Visit DonnieBaker.com for tickets and information. Again, Comedy Off Broadway in Lexington, Donnie Baker right there in the heartland of Kentucky. It's going to be great. Hope you can see him live. Don't miss it if you get a chance. It's going to be a lot of fun as we head into the Memorial Day weekend at the Indianapolis 500. We'll be all over it here at the Bob and Tom Show, our special Carb Day broadcast coming up on Friday, the final day of practice, Friday afternoon before the 106th running of the Indianapolis 500 coming up on Sunday morning. And, of course, the Bob and Tom Race Day broadcast also will be available for all of our Bob and Tom 24-7 listeners. That's coming up this Sunday morning, 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. Set your alarm. Get up early. It's a lot of fun as we dial you in for the 106th running of the Indianapolis 500. It's going to be a great day. Highs in the mid-80s, sunshine. It looks like it's going to be a great day for a motor car race. And you can catch all the action coming up Indy 500 race day morning right here on Bob and Tom 24-7. Hi, everybody. Christy Lee from the Bob and Tom News Desk. The head of the Food and Drug Administration is preparing to tell lawmakers about events that led to a months-long gap before inspecting the plant at the center of a nationwide baby formula shortage. FDA Commissioner Robert Califf is scheduled to answer questions today from House lawmakers probing the formula shortage. According to prepared testimony, Califf will tell lawmakers a COVID-19 outbreak at Abbott's formula plant led regulators to delay their inspection from late December to January. It's one thing to study beers you sip out of a bottle or a glass, not a baby bottle. It's another thing to study one in a classroom or lab. Eastern Washington University and No Lee Brewhouse of Spokane are teaming up to put together the school's first professional certificate program for the craft beer industry. The 15 credit program begins in the fall. No Lee Brewhouse owners John and Cindy Bryant donated $10,000 to help launch the program. And after a series of adventures, a gold signet ring that is more than 3,000 years old has made its way back to Greece. The ring was stolen from an Aegean Sea island during World War II. After being pilfered, it crossed the Atlantic, where it was bought by a Nobel Prize winning Hungarian scientist and ended up in a Swedish museum before being transferred back to Greece. It's the latest in a series of coups by Greek authorities seeking the return of works of art plundered from the antiquities rich country. And that's your news. I'm Christy Lee. More of the Bob and Tom Show on the way. Hey, guy, it's Kid Tarmac. This is Bob and Tom 24-7. Kid Tarmac. Special guest, Randy Gandhi. He's a Randy Gandhi. He's we say Randy Gandhi. Randy Gandhi. Randy Gandhi. Randy Gandhi. The answer is... The answer is sputum samples. <laughs> sputum, sputum samples. samples. Exactly. Mm. The question... <laughs> What do you call someone who's a spitting image of Junior Samples? <laughs> <laughs> the answer is yes. Kenmore Weedwhacker. <laughs> <laughs> Kenmore Weedwhacker. Yes. Oh no. 
What did Barbie yell as she made love with Ken in the tool shed? <laughs> the answer is I, sir. I, sir. I, sir. I, sir. Yes. The question. <laughs> Tough envelope. What does the coat girl say to Sammy Davis right after she says hat, sir? <laughs> <laughs> The answer is Stevie Nicks. Stevie, Stevie Nicks. Stevie Nicks. Stevie Nicks. <laughs> what happens when Stevie Wonder tries to shave himself? <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is comedian Ron White, and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Bob and Tom. For your information, these are two of the worst kids I have ever encountered in my life, and I worked the state fair. We were stupid before stupid was cool. Red one. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hey. There's Josh Arnold in the sidekick chair. Hey, Chick. There's Ace Cosby manning the track phone hotline hot phone. Howdy. There's Willie Griswold. Hey, hey Chick. <laughs> Pat Godwin on assignment. I'm Chick McGee at the sports mm -hmm. desk, and here's Tom. Thank you very much. Uh, we um got completely sidetracked uh, to start the show, which is what we usually do. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a story coming up. We haven't even gotten to it yet. And uh, it's uh, interesting. It's about um, what uh, f what music fans pay the most to see their ticket, to, to see their favorite bands. Hmm. Um, but that got us talking about um, a bunch of music stuff. So we'll get to that story eventually. But right now we were talking about, it started with a discussion of the Archies, the fake band for the TV show. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But, um, you are my you are We're familiar with so you can start like Jack. Um, Jack. I like it, Jack. So, there's, uh, Ron Dante is the uh, artist who sings that song. Uh, what who, happened to Ron? Uh, we're all just going to believe that's a real name, Ron Dante. Dante. Yeah, I have a friend named Dante. And wasn't he Barry Manilow's producer or something? I don't know Ron's background, but I, I think he's a fine singer. And then, then obviously, the, the big hit. He's part of the Happy Together Tour which, among others, uh, has uh, one of the turtles, a uh, Mark Volman, and uh, it's got uh, some of the guys from Three Dog Night, Gary Puckett, what the association. To the other, the uh, the what, still with us? what happened to the other turtle? Uh, Howard uh. Kalen does not uh, tour anymore. I'm not sure how Howard is doing, uh, but uh, Mark Volman's still out there, Flo and Eddie. Now, um, Flo got this very nice letter. Uh, I certainly enjoyed your discussion about the uh, oldies bands from the 60s, I learned to ski to the song Five O'Clock World. Yeah. Wow. Water or snow. <laughs> so do you have like a pretentious radar it has that you to be know? Water, right? That you know when a snooty fax is or an email is coming snooty? in. Snooty, this comes Mary. I learned to ski to five o'clock world. Marianne, I, I apologize oh. for the jackasses that are surrounding me. Oh. Uh, Marianne's listening in Grand Rapids, Michigan this morning. Oh, uh, uh, hello, Michigan. Uh -huh. All right. Uh, it, but she, uh, it doesn't say snow or water. I'm guessing snow. No, how would she listen? Well, she'd had her headphones in probably, you know? Why not? Um, that song, there you couldn't. They didn't have a Walkman back then when that song came out. Maybe some speakers by the Bunny Hill. Maybe right. there was some sort of those party. She mountains. didn't say upon this song's release. Oh, I, yeah, okay. I, I think it, <laughs> maybe she had a Here's the thing. maybe she had a nice oldies collection in her disc, man. I don't <laughs> yeah. know. I have a. I think if Christy, I, this entire letter is <laughs> one and a half lines. I, if Marianne, I say, it could have been on a boat. Christy, if I say skiing. Snow skiing is understood. Oh, okay. Oh, yes, right. You gotcha. either are skiing or you're water skiing. Yes, water oh. skiing is for the hoi ploi. Oh, so <laughs> you have to specify. I learned to do both in skiing. Michigan. Thank you very much. Okay. Whoop de do. Okay. Can you slalom? Maybe she learned both. Hmm? Can you slalom yeah, ski sure. on one? Of course. Oh, well. Wow. Well, yeah. uh, of course. What? What do you mean, of course? You haven't slalom skied in like 20 years. 
Well, it doesn't mean I can't do it. It's like riding a bike. I'm sure I'd get out there and fall on my face for an hour. And then... You don't think with your bad wing, you don't think you'd have trouble? Well, uh, now we probably could. Yeah, do. I wouldn't be able to stay up long because my right arm isn't working for very well. But the point of this letter is, if I could continue, yes. once again, it's a one letter. Marianne, thanks for writing, and I'm sure she'll never write again. Mm -hmm. um, I hope not. Uh, she goes, I learned to uh, <laughs> ski to 5 o'clock, and I fell in love with my soon-to-be husband <sighs> to the song Happy Together. Oh. Oh. Chad and I were married on the vineyards. And you for me. <laughs> Maybe this will be my song. Too. I love this. Song. This guy sounds so Everything's bored. Everything's perfect. That was a great song. Can I call him up and say, hey, this is our song? <laughs> So yeah, say it just you, like yeah, that, too. You yeah. can. Wait a minute, I've got an idea. Oh, this is how did I not think of this? What if we got your oh man on God. the phone one of these mornings? Um, no, 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 no. And no. we gave him four hours. We'll sample various I'm songs. Not to pick to let your you song. Do this. No. no. Thank you, no. Chick. Hey, I'm out. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh boy, think of the inappropriate. If, if he picks oh, evil yeah. woman, I'm out. <laughs> yeah, evil woman, that would be bad. Yeah. Witchy woman, I'm out. <laughs> Walk on the wild with. side. Yeah. <laughs> Can we still play that on there? Here? Walk on the wild side. I heard it. I heard it on. Really? My uh, service. I own the CD, so I can play it whenever I want. Yeah. Oh, really? Because of uh, how Lou sends the ladies in, so yeah, to speak. Yeah, 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 that might not be. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. So, um, just in, any, in any event, uh, we do have a uh, really interesting story coming up about um, uh, ticket prices and who's willing to pay what to see their favorite band. Okay. And what genre of music. Crazy. So let me guess, uh, the more popular bands, people are willing to pay more money. Wouldn't that make sense? Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. <laughs> Sorry, could, uh, uh, is it time to go? Is it time to go to Dick Central? For am sports? I? Am I? What's the story? No, I want to hear this story. It's by genre, if it, you will. So, so jazz people are more in, inclined to spend more money. To a see study a from the company <sighs> Finance Buzz has shown Boy, that. I have two guesses, and I I just don't it, know. It has to be pop ahead. music. Right? One would be uh, classic rock because the people have more expendable money. Exactly. Yep. They have jobs, and they yep. have. And then the other would be parents. Parents who want yep. their kids to be able to go see JoJo Siwa. You're right. Yeah, I was just going to say Taylor Swift and Olivia yep. Rodrigo. Her Classic. numbers have to be high from my dad alone. Yeah. Classic rock <laughs> fans are willing to pay the highest prices to see their favorite bands. The study analyzed data from 800 of the top touring acts over the last five years found the average ticket price for a classic rock artist was nearly $120. The next highest ticket price was for pop concerts, so you were right, Josh, with an average of $100 per mm. ticket. Fans of rock and alternative paid an average 86 bucks, 64 for their concert tickets. And then the genres ranking at the bottom of the list were EDM, with an average ticket price of 55 and Christian music at an average of $39 per ticket. Gotcha. But yeah, I think it, it, it is kind of obvious yeah. because you've, the classic rock fans tend to skew older, if you will. And have money. And have more money. Yep. And they want to be 18 again. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a, definitely a... I just saw the Eagles. I can attest to all of those things. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's interesting. And I, I The most expensive average ticket price for any individual artist belong to? Anyone want to guess? Well, this is, this is not really fair. Uh, Peter McCartney of the Stones. Ed Sheeran? No, it's because it's... It's Springsteen, but that was because of Broadway. That's because he did the show on Broadway yeah. where it was like 500 bucks a seat. The classic rock legend far outweighed the most expensive pop star. Anyone? Olivia Rodrigo? No. Nope. Eilish? Nope. Uh, Bruno? No. Nope. Taylor Swift? Lady Gaga. Ah, Average really? ticket price, $337.43. Oh, cents. oh yeah. didn't she also do, she was a Vegas residency, though. So wouldn't that bump yeah, up Yeah, but as I well? saw her. It was not, it was expensive. Worth every dime, I might add. Doesn't she like it on a wire? Oh, she's fabulous. Dancers. Had two separate stages. We were, oh, it was great. Who's for her, man? Lady Gaga. Okay. Um, Metallica was the most expensive rock ticket with an average of just less than 230 while the Strokes were the pr uh, priciest alternative act. Really? Coming in at $126.70. One of the best shows I've ever seen. Huh. I'm telling when I, I would have to look it up. I've got it in my... Boy, I, mean, I probably still have the uh, stub from the when I saw the Strokes. I, I, I bet it was $13. Really? <laughs> yeah. It was at a place called Mississippi Nights in St. Louis. Oh, it's yeah, small... sure. We played there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We played there. And, I, know uh, what, uh, I had no idea they were still together. Hmm. 
What record were they promoting? Was it the first, first. one? Oh, my yeah. God. I wish I could have seen that. That was amazing. Uh, the, uh, the drunkest I've ever seen anyone on stage was the Stroke Show. Wow. Were you with me with that show? I was with you. Yeah. And then he lost the microphone. He couldn't find and the they, microphone. All the roadies were out there with flashlights trying to find <laughs> oh, the microphone. Oh, that's a bummer. And then a guy just walked out. He found it so easily and handed it to him. <laughs> and then he threw the mic stand at the drummer, and the drummer's locked into 4-4 four, four and just ducks. Doesn't go out of time. <laughs> he was trashed. Great show. <laughs> awesome. The band, the band was great. Anyway, it's interesting. I Obviously, the, the point of this exercise here is that the uh, classic rock fans are willing to pay more. This, I think, all these numbers would be a lot different if, if it hadn't if it had been done during a non-COVID. I think so too. Yeah, yeah, it's, fine. Too. yeah it's really nice. Now you know what all this music, great music, makes me think about is being on my deck. Oh yeah. Putting uh, my speaker out there, playing my favorite tunes while grilling up oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> in the spring. Oh, this weather is uh, incredible. I most like to, I like to play the cow sills. Yeah, sure. Play whatever you like. While eating steak. Cow sills? But every now and again, you got to turn that music down. You so know, you can the, uh, the, the lady cow sill, cow sillette or whatever, yes. one of the sis the sisters, she puts out some really good um, current stuff, actually. Well, good. Well, let's talk okay. about currently putting out some good meat. Tina, I think. Tina cow Meat. Ooh. Omaha Steaks makes it easy to stock up on all your grilling favorites. Visit omahasteaks.com, enter BTS into the search bar, order the spring grilling pack today. You'll save over 50%, plus you'll get four Omaha Steaks burgers and four boneless chicken breasts free with your order. This package has it all. Butcher cut filet mignons, boneless pork chops, delicious caramel apple tartlets, and please take heed, all right? No matter what's in the spring grilling pack, make sure you order extra jumbo Franks. These, uh, don't you Ooh. dare call them hot dogs. No. They are terrific. They plump up so wonderfully, and the flavor is, I mean, it's its closer to uh, filet than it is a hot dog, I say. <laughs> it's delicious. Omaha Steaks delivers perfection in every single bite, every single time. Visit omahasteaks.com, type keyword BTS into the search bar, order right now. There's a reason why Omaha Steaks has been the leader of gourmet steaks and food for over a century. Well, what is that reason? I'll tell you right now. No one comes close to matching the flavor, tenderness, and value huh. of Omaha Steaks. That's omahasteaks.com. Use keyword BTS. Order the spring grilling pack today. Don't forget, you're going to get four Omaha Steak burgers and four chicken breasts free. That's omahasteaks.com. Keyword BTS. Thank you very much. Uh, coming up, we'll, we'll touch a little bit more on this classic rock ticket thing. It's kind of it's kind of interesting. Also, we have monkey pox, and uh, we have hot dog news. Oh, Mon monkey pox. Mm. Won't you be home? My old good old monkey box. Uh, be right back. It's the Bob and Tom Show. You don't say we didn't warn you. There's laughter ahead. This is Bob and Tom 24-7. Don't forget about Bob and Tom tonight. Coming up tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific on Bob and Tom's YouTube channel. Check out our Facebook page as well. See BobandTom.com for all the details about our video webcast. Highlights from today's show tonight. We call it Bob and Tom Tonight. Again, the best of today's show. You might see some Allie Breen letters, maybe some Chick McGee sports in there. You never know what you're going to see. Perhaps an Ace Cosby joke of the day. Check it out. It's a lot of fun. Bob and Tom Tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific right there on Bob and Tom's YouTube channel. Click that red subscribe button free to join over 100,000 other Bob and Tom fans from around the world who tune in each and every night for Bob and Tom Tonight. You're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. I'm Chick McGee with your Bob and Tom sports update. Luca had 30 points, 14 rebounds. Mavericks avoided being swept. 119-109 win over Golden State in Dallas. In the NHL, Andrew Kopp had a goal, two assists. Frank Vetrano and Adam Fox each had a goal and an assist. Rangers beat the Hurricanes 4-1 to one in Game 4, evening the second-round series at two games apiece. And Ryan Nugent Hopkins scored his second goal of the game, 327 left regulation. The Oilers beat the Calgary Flames 5-3 to three to take a three-game-to-one lead in that second round playoff series major league baseball interleague action tampa bay beat miami toronto beat st louis and arizona over kansas city american league your winners minnesota the yankees houston boston the angels and oakland and in the national league cubs beat cincinnati colorado beat pittsburgh also winning the dodgers atlanta milwaukee and san francisco i'm chick mcgee and that's your bob and tom sports update we got some extra from the Bob and Tom Show. Are you a computer geek? No, no. I see. I didn't grow up with computers. Mm -hmm. That's why children have the advantage. They slip out of the womb. They're born with a password. 
Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you look yeah. at the ultrasound, you see the sex of the child whose internet provider is going to be. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you're, you're an email guy then. Oh, no, no. Well, I check my email. I never get real emails. They're all junk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got a junk box, and the junk box is like, look, we don't even have time to sort out this stuff. <laughs> and it's all that burn DVDs, lose weight, consolidate debt, and then be like young teen sluts, whores. <laughs> like, thousands of them. And then I got a weird one in the middle that says, do you need a birdhouse? <laughs> <laughs> and I, was, I actually got that. I'm like, who's the birdhouse guy? And then every day I get this email, Jim, do you want to enlarge your penis? Yep. Like, and uh, how did I get on the small Willie email list? That is the real thing. <laughs> Hello, this is comedian John Evans. Padoom, 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 and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24 7. Hi, and good morning, and welcome to the uh, Mr. Insinuation Show. The show, well, well, you know. Uh, let's go to the phones and uh, just go to the phones, huh? Good morning, you're on the program. Uh, hello, Mr. Uh, Mr. Insinuation. Mm hmm. Uh, yes, I have a. Uh... Got a. Got a... Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's with my <laughs> wife. Oh, okay. And, well, she, uh... She's not letting you... You know... Or she, or she's not giving you... Well, yeah. Uh -huh. and, uh, oh, boy. You know, I, I was wondering how she's, long that would... She's not doing the, uh... Yeah. And okay, I, okay, okay. Uh, have you tried... <laughs> Yeah, we did that. Okay, okay, but have, but have, here, have you tried this? Uh, no, we haven't. Okay. Mr. Now, I. have you followed, now if you tried that, follow it up with one of these. Okay. And then immediately after that, give it one of these. Okay. Don't forget that. All right, well, thank you for every, uh... That ought to get you. Uh, well, yeah, okay. You know, okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, I see by the, the, the way we have a short show today. And uh, thanks for calling uh, today. And uh, it's oh, been the Mr. Insinuation <laughs> Show. The show, you know. Yeah, you know. Right now. Sure. Fabulous program. Hi, this is Greg Warren, and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24 7. Comedian Steve Altman. Uh, it's the technology. What we can do today, we can put a man on the moon, we can send cameras out to Saturn, take pictures, send them back, computers. You know, we, we still can't make a coffee maker that doesn't go... <laughs> Hell, that wakes me up. I don't really need the coffee, that thing! I'm awake and irritable! <laughs> I got one of those cordless phones. Yeah. And yeah. those those are cool. Mm -hmm. You walk around the house, be outside. You can be in the bathroom now and be on the phone. This is great. <laughs> that noise? Oh, I'm making coffee right now. <laughs> the man in the studio with us is comedian Greg Hahn. Have you ever driven in a uh, Corvette? What do you I mean, doing? I'm a little bit tall for the vet. Are, are you, you really? A right. big car. Yeah. Put yeah. the seat back. That's an idea. <laughs> yeah. How tall are you? I'm 6'4". Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. I got, a big, I got a gigantic, I got a huge SUV. Oh, I just really? look at the rear view thinking, I got to get some friends. <laughs> rows and rows of seats, nobody in them. I just go from gas station to gas station. Hey, want to ride? Yeah. Tell them about your three-point plan for success, Greg. What is that? Where I, I bought the car is too expensive? Right. My house is too expensive? Right. Knock up a fat girl. How about it? <laughs> yes, sir. Mr. Check success, yeah. that's Greg Hahn. <laughs> Bob and Tom. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hi, Chick. Josh Arnold at the sidekick chair. Hi. There's Ace Cosby manning the track phone hotline hot phone. Hey. Willie Griswold is here. I'm Chick McGee at the sports desk. And here's Tom Griswold. Thank you very much. Or as Jim Brown, the greatest football player to ever live, called him Tom Griswold. <laughs> oh, Jim Brown, he's good. A couple quick things. Um, uh, we were talking about this interesting survey of uh, ticket prices and that um, classic rock fans appear to be willing to pay the most money, uh, which makes sense because they've got the most money. They tend to skew a little older. Uh, I was thinking about a couple aspects of this. Mm -hmm. The classic rock artists don't tend to be as showy. Um, uh, with it, when it comes to bling, etc., as the rap artists. That's a generalization. Well, you don't see the Eagles come out wearing 
dookie ropes and <laughs> what's that got to do with you don't, see, you don't see billy joel coming yeah. out with a with a diamond grill in his mouth yeah but he's got uh. a twenty thousand dollar piano and he's got a whole outfit on but what about a dookie rope willie yeah i guess you're right I, all I, these last, rappers are wearing the last dookie time ropes. i saw billy joel he went yo bitches want to take a trip to allentown <laughs> <laughs> that's fine <laughs> change things up a little bit <laughs> I will also this though classic rock fan. Uh, I would almost bet on this, Willie. Uh, classic rock fans are probably the most likely to leave three songs before the end oh, to sure. beat the traffic. Yeah. Oh yeah, guaranteed. Uh, yeah, you're, uh, fascinating stuff. Uh, we'll get back to that news story uh, coming up a little bit later. But oh, could you grab that, please? Hello, Bob and Tom show. Hey, Bob and Tom. It's Donnie Baker. Hey, hey Donnie, Donnie, how are you? I got a question. Hey, who, who's the guy that makes them um, orange barrels? Um, the Man, there's so much road construction oh. going on. That dude must be like a in-ground pool ridge. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I swear to God. There's a lot of those out there. Well, they're they're everywhere. Tom, it seems like everybody's getting rich out there except me. So I figured it's time I got in on the front end of some of this. That's why I was coming today on the Bob and Tom show. I'm pleased to introduce my new invention. It's called... Um, your pillar. Oh, okay. Really? Your pillar. It's sort of like the. It's like my pillar, except it's your pillar. <laughs> your pillar ain't just a regular pillar, Christy. It's small. Oh. That way, it fits in your glove box, like next to your tapes. <laughs> So you can sneak a quick nap when you're stuck in construction or step through a B-side of a tube of stink. It's made from um, space-age polyfibers and recycled from circa 1950s fiberglass. Oh. <laughs> Itchy. It, it's hyperallergenic and super comfy. You just don't get it near your eyes regular. <laughs> I'm currently seeking a hundred grand for two percent stake in Donnie Baker Enterprises LLC. If yeah, I see all of it. Oh, and before you say yes, chick, I already sold over four hundred of my, my pillars. Now I'm currently selling my pillars offline. Well, to be clear, off exit 27 on Highway 4. I thought they were your pillows. Well, and before you even ask, I've run out. Of, I've run a few numbers for you. Uh-huh. Um, my itty cousin Lonnie's good at math. Currently, I'm making the pillows from scratch, currently nine bucks a pillow, but I'm selling them for over $5. Well, then you're losing money. That's Right. Uh, well, okay, but Tom, with your $100,000 investment, dumbass, I'll be able to order <laughs> more of these pillows for your pillow. I'll get calls down around six feet. Basically, <laughs> I make my money off of profit. Yeah. I'll hang up and listen to your answer. Okay. You're the solo. I'm out for that reason. Uh, the, your, the your pillow. Your oh, pillow, okay. yes. Okay. I don't want anything to do with him, so uh, for that reason, I'm out. Uh, <laughs> fiberglass. The yeah. fiberglass insulation might be, I don't know. Yeah. Keep the pillow away from your eyes. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's a, Did you I do that? Did you have an angel hair on your uh, Christmas tree? Yes. Called It was called angel hair, and I'm, I'm certain it was fiberglass. It no was, kidding. Like that stuff this, was? Wispy white does, fiberglass. Does this mean I can cash in? I've seen those commercials. Uh, maybe. I don't know. Okay. Do you wheeze when you cough? <laughs> Uh, in our attic at our house, we had that, uh, you could see like the little glass sparkles in oh, it. Oh, sure. Yeah, the yeah. insulation there. Corning, yeah. uh, is that what it was? I don't know what it was. What it was, was it, it It was an early, uh, early. The Pink Panther stuff? <laughs> no, it was. Slices an... your lungs, you know. <laughs> also, why do they make it pink? Why does it look just like cotton candy? Because when you're a kid, you're like, oh, there's all this magical cotton candy in the roof. But we yeah. Can't this it. stuff was white and uh, I think it was like an early, early version before they knew what uh. they were doing. Um, now, uh, uh, we're, we have not touched our uh, toes into sports yet, have Not we? a word. Okay, well, feel not free. A, not Go a ahead. syllable. Uh, Luca had 30 points, 14 rebounds. The Mavericks avoided being swept. 119-109 win over the Dubs in Game 4 of the Western Conference Finals in Dallas. And uh, what is it there? American Airlines Arena or something? They had a hole in the roof, Tom, and it was raining outside. And then they oh. they had water on the court, and it was, halftime was held up. Like, oh, man. Water and, on the court. And you should have – they had a beautiful shot of Mark Cuban. He was not pleased <laughs> that his arena was leaking. He was mad at some, somebody's going to get fired today, if not. This is going to be somebody's job. Multiple somebody's. It is going to be somebody's <laughs> job. Uh, in the NHL, Andrew Kopp and, you know, uh, David uh, Copperfield 
and Andrew Hoppafiel <laughs> had a goal and two assists, and Frank Vetrano and Adam Fox each had a goal and assist. The Rangers beat the Canes 4-1 to in Game 4 Tuesday night. That series, two games apiece. And Ryan Nugent Hopkins scored his second goal of the game, 327 left. In regulation, the Oilers beat the Calgary Flames 5-3 to three to take a three-game-to-one lead. Nugent? In their second-round playoff series. Ryan Nugent Hopkins. All right. Nothing to do with Ted Nugent. I don't no. play a little Ted for him? No, no, thank you. Uh, Try a little Ted. And Mookie Betts homered twice, only because I like saying in ba- my favorite baseball name, Mookie. Uh-huh. Mookie! Do you leave the stove on? <laughs> he uh, homered twice. How uh, about a little bit of Ted for you? Recognize this. This was before he was Ted. This is when he was in some band. This is before he was Ted. No, this is Ted. He's a kid. He's a, this is one of my favorite guitar solos of all time. But he's in some band. It's not like Ted Nugent, just Ted Nugent. <sighs> the Amboy Dukes. There you go. That's it. I not guarantee just the you, Dukes, the Amboy Dukes. I guarantee you, Ted thought it was his band. I yep. can guarantee you Even that. Even at 17, well, this huh? is still a great uh, guitar solo. Yeah. It's got that sort of LSD. Yes. Hey, that sounds just like the last one. This is the same solo. Oh. I'm sorry, I was, I was so bored with hockey that I wanted to hear a little Ted. Back to you. You know, we're forced to listen to your favorite little songs from when you were a kid, but when yeah, we play so our stuff, it's only we're fair in trouble. that we get yeah. to listen to some of our favorites. Our love is alive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it begins. I'd like to see Ted get one of his arrows. That's right. Hit Susie Quattro. Right. And then right in the guitar. And then he eats her. <laughs> oh, oh. Love Susie for man. <laughs> If he doesn't, uh, he doesn't kill it. If he doesn't eat it. He doesn't kill it. Right? Wouldn't that be fun to take uh, to take artists that are completely different and put them together? Have Ted Nugent get up there and do some guitar work with Susie Quattro. I love his life. <laughs> what about Ted Nugent? The Archies. Little Ted would have improved this a little bit. You think? I think that yeah. song was written by Andy Kim, but very good. Yeah, Ron Dante. Sung by Ron Dante. Dante has to mean something, right? Like quickly or f- more flavor or <laughs> El Dante. Dante's right? El, El Dente it means hell, teeth. Doesn't it? Uh, right? El Dente means your teeth, right? Den- dente. The, the spaghetti's El Dente. Vagina that... Dente or something, right? Dentata, yeah. yeah Dentata, yeah. It's got teeth, Willie. Ugh, you don't want any part of that. Oh, maybe I do, though. Oh, ho, ho! <laughs> Chicago Bulls guard Zach Levine underwent <laughs> knee arthroscopic surgery on his left knee. No. His no. right knee? No. His weenie? Ah. No, it was his, le- it was his left knee. Oh, it was the left knee. Yeah, that's, what, holy, <laughs> that's the only reason I did that story. And it's time now to wrap up sports. Stupid world record. In a- Spanish, the meaning of Dante is lasting or enduring. Oh, Ron Dante. Yeah. He's lasted? He has lasted. He's part of the Happy Together Tour once again. Looking mm-hmm. forward to seeing it. That's, <laughs> and remember, that's your song with, uh, what's his name? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Potentially. <laughs> I'm not going to It's in the running. Because I'm not going to force that on him. Everything's perfect. <laughs> and you're happy together. Has your man, um, is he, have you taken him to a rock show or a concert yet? Yeah, we went to the Eagles together. There you go. Uh-huh. Like I said, in the Eagles, so those tickets are probably the most expensive out there right now. Did you yes, s- that was a gift. Did you sing to him? No. Did he sing to you? No, we were at a concert. Oh, they were singing. Sing to Why you? not? Why would Tom? Don't you sing to? Uh, your <laughs> Do you sing to Kelly? <laughs> no, when I when I go to concerts, I allow the bands to sing. I you don't sing behind people. We did drive to Florida together, and we sang in the car, like to oh. songs. Yeah. Mock. Yeah. Ing. Yeah. <laughs> now, at what point did he put on those? At what point did he put on those uh, those uh, headphones that the guys noise, that, land, that land airplanes? The noise canceling headphones. <laughs> yeah. That's really that's really fascinating, Chris. You just allow me to put that's these fun. on. That's fun. Do you remember one song you guys did sing together? No, I don't remember. Really? Okay. Josh, you're sort of a car singer. I didn't know that I until love, this weekend. I love drove. singing in the car. Josh will he'll car sing and he'll do little car dances. Like oh. sometimes he'll be waiting for like a big uh, sort of a big drop in a. Song. Yeah, and it'll kind of just fake 
smack the steering wheel like it's a rear end. Oh, it is a yeah. cool move. I'm oh, a, yeah, I do. I am a, a steering wheel spanker. I'm a, I'm a steering wheel guitar player. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And every now and then I'll, I'll hit the dashboard with a keyboard. Oh, yeah. Do you sing along? You sing oh, along. Oh, God, yeah, I yeah. sing along. I sing along. Do you sing along in the car? I no. sound great in the car. Yeah. Um, I suppose on occasion. Uh, sure. Why I, wouldn't you? I don't see I you don't doing see that. I don't see, oh, I hope you do. I don't see you Come singing in the car at all. Yeah? You give those pipes a, a, a cleaning when you... <laughs> I actually listen mostly to talk radio in oh. cars. Oh. Oh. Hmm. Well, that brought it all to <laughs> See, Ace shows like Ace, this. Ace, the, go, Ace. Ace, the topic, you see, was, yeah, was singing, music. Guy. Singing in the car. <laughs> Do you <laughs> speak along with the talk radio? Hey. <laughs> 24 to nothing. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> sorry. Is that sports? No, I'm sorry. What was the world record? I didn't even hear. Well, they've done that yet. A no. British man has broken the Guinness World Record for the longest rap marathon individual. Wow. Daniel Alcon, who works as a school teacher in Spain, earned the record title after rapping for 39 hours, 37 minutes, and 54 seconds. Oh. He's 35 years old. His successful attempt beats the previous record. 33 hours, 33 minutes, 16 seconds, huh. set by U.S. rapper Watsky. Oh, yeah. He's like one of those nerd rapper guys. It's all like lyric stuff. It's uh, cool. It's not for me, but it's So cool. when you rap like that, do you, does it have to be different? Like you Does can't... it have to rhyme? I mean, how many rhymes are there with bitches and hoes? Oh. Jake, do you have that answer? I don't. And uh, <laughs> this this just did. I, I have a... We, do you have a, the sound of this guy? No. no. Do you? Yeah, I do. Oh, I thank do. Christ. Here we go. That's right. This record. I like it so much. You won't believe. I like it so much. Oh, it's gosh. so nice. It's so damn nice. I've only done it twice. Wow. Uh, he did that for 39 hours? Who had to listen to that, who had to listen to that for 39 so hours? How many, how many suicides oh, were there among the judges? God. Boy. Oh. That actually sounds a lot like me singing in the car. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's, let's see if there's another rhyme. Yeah. This is the second time. So I'm going to keep going with the rhymes. Uh -huh. I don't want to quit everything I say and I spit. I try to do it le uh -huh. legit. That's me yeah. and my friends in high school. We had better rhymes while you were just smoking pot in the backyard. <laughs> is, I mean, yeah, but for all we know, that's hour 38. Yeah, mm -hmm. we don't know. Oh, yeah, it could be tired. You're right. No, it's not, Dean. <laughs> Wow. Are you allowed to repeat rhymes? I mean, he kind of did in that. Yeah. He said, I'm doing it twice. And he's like, that's right. I did it twice, uh, which I like. I could do that kind of rapping. Uh, and you notice he was doing it slow. Yeah. like. So does it have to rhyme, I guess? I, I don't know. It must, right? I don't... Well, that's not that tough. He's got a rhyming dictionary. They're very easy to find online. <laughs> Yikes, that stinks. Um, <clears throat> oh, I hope he had fun doing it. Yeah, it's cool. He did it for so long. Congratulations. He has a new he's plaque a, he's, for his what's his, I'm sorry, what's, what's his rap? Does he have a rap name? Does mm, he call does, it? Does, does not say. Lil Adderall, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> Lil Cocaine? Something. Um, <laughs> sorry. And this from the NFL, the uh, National Football League Scouting Combine will continue to stay in the city of Indianapolis. Really? At That's least right. the next two years. Awesome. It's a big win for the city of a far off place called Indianapolis the 2022 NFL combine brought in uh just about 10 million dollars in economic impact the city continues to recover from uh, covid of course uh as we look at the early position of 2023 will be fully recovered leading the nation at this point into the future of terms of recovery said Chris Gall the senior vice uh, president of Viz, Viz. Boy, he's got a lot of nerve, doesn't he? Uh, he's a nice guy. He's a uh, really nice guy. Oh, Stop it. Uh, now, um, <laughs> we were, real quick, uh, on a different note, we were talking about um, the uh, the survey about who's paying what for tickets, et cetera, et cetera. And, Christy, you mentioned that you'd gone to Vegas and seen Lady Gaga. Um, it was just announced, I believe, yesterday, Aerosmith yeah, has uh, post Owned their yeah. um, Vegas residency because Steven Tyler uh, had a, he I think he had some kind of injury or surgery. Yeah, he had a recent foot yeah. surgery and he relapsed in his sobriety due to the pain medication. So oh, he's um, voluntarily entered a treatment program to concentrate on his recovery. So the Vegas residency for June and July hopes to resume in September. Yeah, so they were very apologetic to the fans that had already even yeah. purchased uh, trips, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, Stephen has been very vocal about his sobriety in a good way. So um, we certainly wish him the best. Uh, friend of the show. We've had him on the show before. So, um, Stephen, start feeling better out there. 
Now, uh, we'll get um, uh, back to uh, lots of things in the world because I believe that is the... Uh, is that the end of sports? Wrap it up, Daddy. Okay, okay here we go. Uh, Finn, if you would. Um, the Fresh from Field Day. Hey, Rocky, <laughs> this is what you farm for. <laughs> whatever you go, whatever you do, always be a good sport. Christy. Ah, uh, where do we want to go? Two men in Louisiana have been arrested for trying to illegally move a house. Really? According to the Iberia <laughs> Parish Sheriff's Office, huh. the men were attempting to move the house down a residential street in La Reville when it got stuck. The Acadian Advocate reports the house mangled power lines, hit telephone poles, <laughs> damaged trees, <laughs> wrecked mailboxes, oh, leaving nearly 700 residents without power for several hours. It's a song about it. Power lines down, our house. Boy, I had no idea you were going to go here. What about uh, Crosby, Stills, Nash? Or our house. Well, that's a, that's a, yeah, but see, the, the joke, see, is that our house uh -huh. in the middle of the no, street. No, the joke is it has the word house in it. That's the joke it. Has no, it's, it's, that's it. It. Is, it is a perfect fit, you that's, jackass. That's it, our house. The, line, know, is, the line is our house in the middle of your street. What is, what's happening well, in the news story, Christy? Well, you didn't let me Christy? finish. The men then abandoned the home as well as the truck and trailer in the middle of the street. Oh, well, oh, now okay. it makes sense. Both men were arrested and charged with violating parish ordinances. I, I this happened in, in my neighborhood. Oh, really? I looked out and it was just a parade. Like there was first one house was going down, and then another house, yeah. and a third house. Yeah. I go well. There goes the neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> you say that often, don't you, John? Oh, oh boy. <laughs> what do you think, John? I love that. I love Good. that. Right. You ever seen him move in a house? I have. Yeah, sure, sure, yeah, sure. Not on the highway, though, not down the... Yeah, but they have to come in and they have to take down the power lines. And yeah, they have to lift it up and put it on a... Man, flatbed. Flatbed yeah. and roll it out of there, yeah. <laughs> I, I never assume that that thing, that the structural integrity is ever the same after they move well, a house. Well, I usually, guess it is. They're usually doing it to older houses that have, as they say, good bones. Ah. Or historic value. Yeah, a lot of There's the one up the street here, and I never understood why they moved it. Because it's just sitting there. They haven't done anything with it. And it's a great old house. So Let's why even bother? Let's buy it and flip it. Yeah. I mean, like, flip yeah. it over. You yeah. know what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if you're moving a house and you flip it, that can be really bad. That no, one has the really bad The housing bubble is, like, peaked. We got to, uh, it's about yeah. to burst. We gotta I know, <laughs> it is. It's a big spatula. So, uh, can we flip it, Tom? Can we flip it? Flip yeah, that's really easy on those, on those TV shows. That really works out all the time. You ever notice on some of those shows, they never, they, we bought the house for this, and we sold it for this, and our lumber costs were this. They never say, labor <laughs> the 40 guys that did all the work you had to pay them right there's yeah. one that does that says all of it they'll even say closing costs and all that i love that that's my favorite yeah, one will they yeah. actually get the, the reality yes mm -hmm. okay well um if you're gonna move a house yeah get the you know not all of us have a uh, construction contractor on our payroll <laughs> <laughs> you know what i if i have one more person come up to me and go when is Tom's house going to be I done? Know. Don't I don't have to mind I'm, their friggin' business. Yeah. <laughs> you want it done sick, fast? You want it done right? Sick to death of it. It's like a neighborhood eyesore. They want you to get it done. Well, they can go cram it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you're making quite the impression on <laughs> yeah. your new neighbors. You know that, right? All I'm doing is raising the value of their property. Please is put a banner right? on is it. Is that right? Put a banner on it that says cram it. Please. <laughs> right, when you move I'd be so tempted to. Put a banner up? when you move in say, now open. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't they put, why don't that, uh, what's the name of the place, uh, the company that makes, they wrap your house? <coughs> we wrap houses? In Tyvek or something? <laughs> yeah, no. that's it. It's uh, some sort of a, a company. Just put Kramit on there. Instead. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be all right. We're going as fast as we can. Because okay? you're going to cover it up eventually. But, yeah. You think right. they don't want it done? That's the thing. I know. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll get to that later. But we're not moving it. We can't pick it up and move it. No. No, no, you shouldn't. I bet he doesn't. Part of him doesn't want it to get finished because then he won't have anything to work on. Uh. Oh, okay. Well, we'll discuss all of these things when we return. <laughs> uh, coming up, we have um, Monkey Pox update. Uh, uh, great hot dog news. Oh, wait mm. a minute. Not great hot dog news coming up. And um, Wizard of Oz update believe it or not, up next. Uh, this is the Bob and Tom Show. Text us at 888-262-8661. More Bob and Tom next. State law.
morning laughter <laughs> just might be the best medicine. I can hear you, oh no. You're talking out your ass again. Bob and Tom, 24-7. Her name is Allie Breen. She'll be joining us in the 9 o'clock hour. Her segment, Dear Allie, Tom's taken to calling it sexy time. That's right. Also, Jessica Alsman from the Bits and Pieces podcast will be joining us, and you can download her podcast for free at bobandtom.com slash podcast. The Bits and Pieces podcast, Willie Griswold, Jason Hoffsets, Jess Hooker, and of course, Jessica Alsman. A dive into the Bob and Tom archives and discussions of some of our favorite bits and pieces from the show. One of their latest guests, Josh Arnold. That's right, a fan of the show before he became a sidekick. And there you have it, the Bits and Pieces podcast, free to download and listen to at bobandtom.com slash podcast. Hi, everybody. Christy Lee from the Bob and Tom Entertainment News Desk. Steven Tyler is in rehab after relapsing from sobriety due to pain medication from recent foot surgery. Tyler voluntarily entered treatment to concentrate on his recovery. However, that means... Aerosmith has canceled their residency in Las Vegas for June and July. They plan to resume playing shows sometime in September. Actor Richard Gere has hosted a benefit concert for Ukraine at Carnegie Hall. The event raised $360,000 for Direct Relief, a humanitarian organization providing medical aid. Opera star Denise Graves and violinist Itzhak Perlman participated in the event on Monday night. Another year, another comedian, another complaint against Netflix for airing a comedy special featuring a comedian mocking the transgender community. Last year, you recall, it was Dave Chappelle. This year, it's Ricky Gervais. His new special, Supernature, made its debut yesterday. Almost immediately, it got criticism for what an LGBTQ advocacy group calls anti-trans rants disguised as jokes. While Gervais explains in the show his jokes target everyone and that any digs at transgender people aren't reflective of his personal views, critics blasted him and, of course, Netflix. And that's your news. I'm Christy Lee. More of the Bob and Tom show coming up. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob and Tom. My nephew and his fiance just dated a room that Marilyn Monroe lived in. I finally, wow. got, finally got the smell out. Huh? I absolutely knew that's what you were going <laughs> to no? say. Okay. She was famous for. Uh, she was famous for not a, bathing. A lack, a lack of hygiene. That's I what, don't how know. How do you know how is, this? She didn't I, even Actually, know I know she was famous for other things, not for that. Why do you think she was standing over that grate? Finally, we have some air it out. Out. Yeah. <laughs> Boy. Uh, hey. Bob and Tom in the morning and highlights all day long. The Bob and Tom Show, weekday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern on Bob and Tom 24-7. Hey, don't say we didn't warn you. I'm warning you, don't do that. There's laughter ahead. I should be having a better time <laughs> if this is a part. This is Bob and Tom 24-7. We have uh, a guy that is, uh, I mentioned earlier, internationally famous for a little something. It's the only talk show devoted to the artistry of uh, the bass guitar. It's a little thing we like to call Bass, bass Talk. Talk. Wow. wow. It's the Bass Talk Show with Mark Christopher Roman on the bass. Uh, yes. Marcus, how are you, sir? I'm great. How are you? Good. Well, this bass player, he was having trouble finding a gig. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What a so, surprise. Yeah. <laughs> so he decides to take a part-time job in a funeral home. Uh-oh. Oh, okay. So he's working with a funeral director, and they're late one night, and uh, a local guy named Stanley Smith had just died. Mm. And he's there on the table in front of him, and they're just amazed at this guy's certain body part. Oh. It's incredible. It's astounding, actually. Mm -hmm. It's bigger than any porno stars you've ever seen. Wow. So between the two of them, they decide this has to be saved for posterity. Mm -hmm. So they remove the body part. Mm -hmm. And they, well, who would know, right? right. right. So they remove yeah. it and they stick it in this great big glass jar mm -hmm. with formaldehyde. Mm -hmm. Well, the bass player decides he's going to take it home and show his wife. Mm -hmm. So he takes it home and he sets it on the table. <laughs> he says, honey, come in here. you got to see this thing that I just brought back from the funeral home. Yeah. So oh, she comes no. in and she takes one look at the jar and she goes, oh, my God. Gosh, Stanley Smith is dead? <laughs> there you go, ladies and gentlemen. You can see why people flock to the airwaves to hear the fabulous show. <laughs> Hi, this is comedian Tim Cavanaugh, and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Bob and Tom 24-7. You can bet on the race. Hey, 
Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee astride the news desk. Hey. Pat, God Pat Godwin is uh, on assignment. Josh Arnold haunched over the sidekick chair. Oh, oh he sit up. Hi. There's Ace Cosby manning the track phone hotline hot phone. Hey. Willie Griswold. Good morning. There he is. I'm Chick McGee. And here's Tom with a letter. Got a stack of letters here. Stack of letters. Got a lot going on today. We just had an interesting story about a couple guys in Louisiana who have been arrested uh, because they were um, moving moving a house. Do you have the story? Were Christy? they were they trying to steal it? No, they were just moving it, but they, they didn't were have moving any of the it, permits. but they did it illegally. Apparently, they were going down a residential street in LaRueville, Louisiana. When it got stuck, the house mangled power lines, hit telephone poles, <laughs> damaged trees, and wrecked mailboxes, leaving nearly 700 residents without power for several oh. hours. Here's the best part. The men then abandoned the home as well as the truck and trailer in the middle of the street. They just left it there. Yeah. <laughs> right in the middle of the street? Uh-huh. Well, Bill... Let's ditch it. Um, but, uh, and of course, that gave us an occasion to play this song, which uh, is, of course, and Chick? Uh, Madness. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Got this great letter. Oh, I just love people out there. This is so nice. <laughs> Thank you. This is just so great. Listen to this. It's got everything I love in it. I'll read it. Speaking what? of moving houses, my grandfather used to move houses. <laughs> wow. In the late 50s, he had to move a house from one side of, I'm not sure how you pronounce this, Mill Locks Lake uh -huh. in Minnesota. They had to move it to the other side of the lake. They checked the route oh, yeah. to drive around the lake and decided it would be easier to wait until the lake froze. <laughs> they successfully moved the house across the frozen lake. Boy, that's a roll of the dice, isn't it? Yeah, My it grandpa is. would always say, hearing that ice crack in the middle of oh. the lake... Uh. was more than a little terrible. <laughs> what engineer could determine the thickness of the ice uh. and what it would hold? I, I suppose there's some kind of a formula. If, the, if the ice is this thick, it'll hold Their so Their formula many. may have just been prayers. Uh -huh. Yeah, and it, was the, it was the 1950s. These, these guys fought in World <laughs> War II. They're probably going, F this, we're doing it anyway. <laughs> what if it had fallen in? Would that be That'd cool? Be, what a heck of a story that have would be. You I, I would watched? hope that the people would, I assume that they did it with a long chain so they weren't near it in case it fell in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I wouldn't want to be the guy driving from the dining room. <laughs> hey, I'm here, for Christ's sake, don't let it go in. Have you ever watched Ice Road Truckers? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah that they have a, a road made if that's not there except during the season <laughs> and they basically they're going over lakes frozen lakes sure. and sometimes the trucks fall through <laughs> this is so it's crazy. crazy hey uh, this is from andrew andrew if you have any pictures of this will you send them to me um that sounds really cool that's a hey, yeah that's uh, amazing and uh, were they using some sort of vehicle or were they pulling it i would assume they had some kind of a Tractor and like I said, I would assume a long chain so that if the if the well, thing went in, it wouldn't right. take anybody with them. Come on, it was it sounds like an episode of Lake Wobegon. Yeah, <laughs> it was Minnesota. It was sled dogs. Come on, frost <laughs> dogs. Huh? You, you sled dogs. Yeah. Yeah. Frosty winter here. <laughs> <laughs> could, a lot of dogs. Could you join us here on Earth, Miss <laughs> Miss <Fabersham. laughs> What a great story. Cloth I'd love story. to hear. Oh, um, <laughs> Dear Bob and Tom Show. May I smack your ass? <laughs> I understand. I understand that Pat Godwin had to leave early today. I was wondering if he coughed and assumed that he had the plague. Please advise. <laughs> um, One of the rare instances where Pat is not ill. No. no. Yeah, he went to see his uh, son graduate from fifth grade. Awesome. Boy, Congratulations, that Jimmy. Yeah. Uh, this comes that, to us my from. My kid uh, did that. Hmm. Yeah. But you didn't have a fifth grade like ceremony at the end of it. No, it depends. Really? It's, it, it's on your school too. See, it depends because some schools they have middle six. school is six, seven, eight. Uh, it just, oh, I see. Yeah. It's an elementary school. Yeah. yeah, my my elementary school went to sixth grade. So he's not going to have a graduation ceremony at the end of sixth grade, too, right? And no, it'll be eighth grade, okay. eighth grade and then okay. high school. Hey, any time for kids, it's great for them. Well, especially in this case. Yeah. Sometimes it <laughs> would you could fosters I, could, entitlement. Could, could, you could, you could, might want to. Would yeah. you call the orchid man and get you the bug wanna, out of his ass? Attend all the graduations <laughs> you can. Okay. What I'm saying. Very helpful. <laughs> this is all helping. P.S. Oh. P.S. He writes. Oh. Chick London, you are a genius. I, I, I Somebody sent me a, a picture of a, of, of <laughs> private investigator novel that I'm going to write. 
Once again, Chick London is Chick's new persona. And the name of the book is called Death Came Knocking. <laughs> yeah! A Chick now, is it comedic? Is it sort of Donald E. Westlake, or is it more... Uh... A Chick London novel. No, it's kind of serious. It's okay. It's uh, like a Mickey Spillane. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> Mike Hammer. You know, with, Velda's my I, secretary. With your love of all you things go. like this, maybe you should write a uh, write Look at a that. Book. Oh, that's nice. A guy in a war. If you check out if you check out the Bob and Tom social media, you will see the poster of our special event Friday, and right. perhaps we can get that up as well. We were also talking about uh, the great song "Enter the Young" <laughs> by the Association and um, other delights, including the Archies. And that particular tour we mentioned, among other things, look at this. I uh, got this from Diane. They're playing the Nebraska State Fair August 29th. <laughs> All right, there we go. Have right. fun, enjoy. All it. the state fairs. Check They're in. everywhere. They're yeah. great. Uh, uh, no. Dear Chick, Ron Dante produced Barry Manilow's albums from 1973 to 1981. <laughs> 18 of those went platinum. Wow. And you wow. knew that. And he's the guy from the Archies. Okay, he's the very singer. Yeah. Uh, sugar, sugar. Uh, and then we've had occasion to play some great stuff today. Just just one more little taste of this one for, for me. Uh, Dawn. And that's yeah. because we had an interesting story about sunglasses in an experiment. People wearing sunglasses watched porn for longer periods of time. They'll all go longer, yes. Uh, the, 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 uh, 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 <laughs> st thousands of people in this study, right? See, you'd Christine? be that guy. You would never admit you'd look at something sexually provocative no, unless never. you were wearing sunglasses and nobody could tell. I never wore sunglasses. Sunglasses inside. Oh, for God's sake. That's not my point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What is your point? What do I'm you just, mean? My point is you would be that guy. You would never admit to looking at something like that, but if I've, you were wearing... I've, I have watched my share of uh, pornographic movies. What Christy's whoa, saying is really? if you see a sexy billboard and you're wearing sunglasses, will you stare at it longer than if you weren't wearing sunglasses? Well, it depends because I can't get my pants up if I'm uh, taking my sunglasses. You're right, Christy. He will, he will not. Have you ever <laughs> have you ever flirted with the girl with the ultimate move where you got the sunglasses on and you pulled them, pulled them down to oh. look over look over your sunglasses oh. at her? You ever do if, that? Whenever I'm outside for talk, talk to people, I always try to take my sunglasses off. I'm not the guy that sits at the outdoor restaurant with my shades on unless the sun's right there. I can't Why stand. Not? Why? It's just rude. It is. Uh, it, yeah, and, and wearing sunglasses inside unless you're Ray Charles. Don't do it. I know the sun never sets in the cool, but... Why do you think Ray wears those? Because he's got that crazy eye. One of them, like, goes everywhere at once or something. Probably is really distracting. <laughs> Ron, I remember the old joke about Ronnie Millsap used to have... Yeah. Those, remember the, the fad, Christy? Everybody had their initials oh, yes. on the bottom sure. of their sunglasses? Sure. And the bottom of the regular glasses. The regular glass glasses and initials. rhinestones, yeah. yeah. Well, someone said, why didn't Ronnie Millsap just have him cover the whole glass? R on one and the other. <laughs> that would have so cool. That's a mean joke for a blind guy. It was almost like a song. That's right, Ronnie. Christy, I told not. you about the blind, the blind prostitute I used to see, right? I know. Oh, you've really got to hand it to her. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of dust. No! One of the one of the old time classics. Yeah. Uh -huh. when, when we come back, we got a monkey box update. Are you kidding me? Sure. We got a python in the potty and big hot dog news. This is the Bob and Tom Show. You can find us on Twitter at Bob and Tom, or you can email us at Bob and Tom at BobandTom.com. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Things you hear on the Bob and Tom Show. And I'm not stupid. I know there's more to life than just sex. It's just none of those other things feel as good as sex. I mean, I love cookies. Oh, yeah. But if I do not have access to cookies, I will not rent a movie and watch two other people eat cookies. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect stranger. Uh -huh. <laughs> eating cookies. No. Nothing. No. Uh -huh. How do you not think about sex? Everything on TV, sex, you know, all the commercials, very beautiful women in all the commercials now. doesn't even matter what the product is. It's just very sexual. Mm -hmm. And then you finally have sex, and it's, it's kind of disappointing. Mm -hmm. 
Where's my Sprite? My new car. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I think women should have shelves next to their bed filled with prizes, depending oh. on how well you did. You know mm -hmm. what I That's mean? That's a good idea. Like they do at the carnival. Uh -huh. Sure. That's they great. have something to shoot for, you know. Are you going to take anything on that? Right. I'm going to go for the Van Halen mirror tonight. <laughs> Bob and Tom. If you irradiate poop, it will be sterile, but it's still... Poop. You can pick your morning radio show, but you can't wipe Bob and Tom on the couch. Jessica Alsman, Allie Breen on the way on a Wednesday. It's May 25th. Good morning. My name is Mark Allison. Don't forget about the Bob and Tom store at BobandTomStore.com. Yes, it's just sitting there waiting for you, loaded down with Bob and Tom Show merchandise, our hoodies, hooded zips, collared work shirts, the Bob and Tom Show hat, new for 2022. If you've gotten a hat in the past, maybe it's time to upgrade to the newest Bob and Tom show hat. It's adjustable, fits any size head. Our clothing size is small all the way up to 4XL, even 5XL. If we don't have your size and your clothing, just check back. We're always upgrading and resizing, restocking, if you will, at BobandTomStore.com. Don't get me started on how hot the employees are there. I've been told by HR to Lay off that part. It's not in my script. I should not be talking about it. I don't know why I am. Let's move on. BobandTomStore.com. You're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Good morning. I'm Mark Allison with things you may have missed. Roman Abramovich's 19-year ownership of Chelsea ending after the British government approved the sale of the Premier League club by the sanctioned Russian oligarch to a consortium fronted by Los Angeles Dodgers part owner Todd Boley. The government had to be sure that Abramovich, who was sanctioned over his links to Russian President Vladimir Putin, did not profit from the enforced sale of the club, that his investment turned into one of the most successful in European football. The reigning FIFA Club World Cup winners and 2021 European champions will be sold for $3.1 billion U.S., the highest price ever for a sports team once Premier League approval is granted. The University of California system has agreed to pay $375 million to more than 300 women who said they were sexually abused by a longtime UCLA gynecologist. The announcement Tuesday brings total payments by the university in lawsuits against Dr. James Heap to nearly $700 million. That's the largest amount paid by a public university in a wave of sexual misconduct scandals involving campus doctors. The private University of Southern California paid out more than $1 billion to settle thousands of cases against its longtime gynecologist. Heaps worked at UCLA for 35 years and has pleaded not guilty to 21 sexual abuse charges. That's a look at things you may have missed. More of the Bob and Tom Show coming up. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob and Tom. When it comes to loving women, Josh says he is. But he says, I get the job done. His junk is plucked, his ass is shaved, his sack is waxed. <laughs> <laughs> He's adventurous. <laughs> he said they didn't laugh. Oh, they didn't laugh. <laughs> In Toledo one night. Yep. You'll get over it. One time. One time, right? <laughs> Mr. Josh Arnold. Oh, you're funny, all right. Oh, thank you, Pat. Bob and Tom in the morning and highlights all day long. The Bob and Tom Show, weekday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern on Bob and Tom 24-7. You're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Don't, 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 don't. The essential morning radio. Don't. This is Bob and Tom 24-7. 24-7. 20 morning, Bob and Tom Show. Good morning. How are you guys? Fine. Guy's down in Florida, he's reading the classified ads, and he sees an ad that says, Talking Dog, $20. So he goes over the address, listens to the paper, knocks on the door. Guy answers the door. Guy says, I understand you got a talking dog for $20. And he goes, yep. He goes, can I see him? He goes, yep, he's in the bedroom. So he walks in the bedroom, dog's laying on the bed, remote hand watching TV. <laughs> Walks in the room, the dog goes, hey, how you doing? <laughs> yeah. I can't believe this. You're, you're a talking dog. Uh. What, what are you doing down here in Florida? He goes, well, I started out in New York. I used to teach other dogs how to lead the blind. And then, well, the Gulf War broke out. and So I went over there, and I brought medicine to uh, injured soldiers and rescued soldiers. And that was over. I 
came back to New York, and I was on Broadway for a while. I was in Riverdance. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you had the, the tragedy with the Twin Towers, so I helped out there and started sniffing for bombs and things like that. And finally, I decided I'd, just, I'd had enough, and I was going to come down here to Florida to retire. Mm -hmm. The guy can't believe it. He walks back in the other room to the other guys. He goes, what's the deal? Why are you selling that talking dog for $20? The guy goes, because he's a big liar. <laughs> Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. This morning. All morning. Christy Lee sound asleep at the news yep. desk. Hey, Alzi, can you hit him in the face with something? Uh, Ow, oh, not me. Josh oh. Arnold at the uh, sidekick chair. Hi. As Tom said, Jessica Alzman joins us. Hello. There's uh, Ace Cosby. Howdy. Manning the track phone hotline hot phone. With that Omaha steak joke of the day in his breast pocket. I feel it coming. There's <laughs> Willie Griswold. Hey, man. I'm Chick McGee, and here's... I bet you do. Here's Tom. <laughs> yeah, I would hope so. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah, why even bother? Well, yeah, what's the point, right? Yeah. 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 Well, procreation. If I felt it coming, I wouldn't hit you with it. <laughs> what did I say? What did I say? I said safety goggles. <laughs> the old hoagie slap. Uh, okay, oh, where were we? Oh, boy. Uh, it's been one of those days. I don't yeah. know what happened. Yeah, I don't know who's been causing it. We have a lot to get to here. <laughs> I've got a, some great letters here about uh, moving houses. Houses. <laughs> no kidding. Did you no see one? the video of that? It is hysterical. It's ridiculous. Um, we'll we'll get to all of these things. What is it? The Larry is it the Larry Cable the guy joke where he flashes the porch light or something? Or who who did that? Or what he, happens when he flashes the porch light? Uh, no, he was driving uh, while intoxicated, but he was in his RV and. The uh, cop said, where are you headed home? He goes, I'm already home or something. Because he's in his, <laughs> RV, in his RV. And so it doesn't really. <laughs> There's a germ of a joke there. Yeah, there's something there somewhere. Yeah. Something Let me ask, somewhere. When you, let's say, let's yeah, say yeah. You, were, you were asked to do something like carve a pumpkin. Uh -huh. You get the pumpkin, set it in front of you, and then just smash it with a hammer. <laughs> Maybe. That, that's yeah. what that sort of. So you look at telling a Could joke you, as yeah. a craft. Yeah. Is that Could what you? you no, don't you have a Don't you have a new series in which you uh, you examine what were you thinking? Is this where you tell me to do the show and suck all the life out yes. of it? Yes. No. No. I want you to examine yourself. Uh, Hi, uh, Chick McGee's the uh, guest on the Chick McGee. What were you thinking show this week? So what were you thinking? Well, uh, what I was thinking was that I would uh, <laughs> interject. I would, I would invite everyone into the thought that I was having in my head about a fun little. Joke that I and what was the joke again? And I something about an RV and being pulled over for drunk while operating a uh, and they the cop told him to go home and he said I'm already home and he sees his, his RV. No. Then what happens? If somebody's going to send us the whole joke and it's oh. going to be and you're going to laugh. It's going to be great. Check those good effort, man. Coming up, we have house moving uh, stories, fascinating stuff. Here. Uh, but uh, first, we have a kind of a serious thing in the news. Uh, Christy Lee. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we have monkeypox, of course, in the news. A lot of people talking about it. And um, what they're not telling you is apparently you've had the smallpox vaccine. You're pretty much covered. You don't have to worry. But there are some cases around the world. And um, monkeypox might have started at a sex rave in Europe. So... <laughs> Figures. Yeah. <laughs> Euro trash. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> they, they, they got that name for a reason. Yeah. A, it was at a rave, right? Yeah, 90 cases of monkeypox so far in a dozen countries. Isn't I the guess terrible, California isn't the, is the latest. Isn't the terrible music uh, enough of a penalty? <laughs> now we got to get uh, monkeypox and yeah. pustules. All. Have you seen the pictures of this? Yeah, no, no. Yeah, you get disgusting. nasty are there, lesions. Are there pustules? Oh, it's awful. Yeah, yeah. they is it deadly? start on your hands and then into can your be. genitals. It can be. But apparently it's from uh, originated from a kind of a sexual congress with a monkey monkey is there a cure or only a treatment yeah they got a cure is that, there's a vaccine for is it. that actually part of the story or is that something no. you heard in yeah. your brain no that's what they say right here it, it, yeah, monkey, monkey box can spread when there is close contact with the lesions of someone who is infected yeah not it, a monkey it no, looks like sexual no, contact it, has now amplified started that with sexual with, I'm serious. so there was a monkey at the rave is that was your contention not at this rave but in all of history you know someone that's back, where it started someone, someone had a little thing with a monkey where they got on the plane <laughs> and flew to the rave in europe that's all i'm saying okay. i don't well, Okay. All right. Could you grab that? Hello, Bob and Tom show. Hey! Oh. Ahoy, you land loving radio pussies. <laughs> it's your old skipper, Captain Dave, calling from the mighty Chum Dumps. Uh, Thank you, Captain sure Dave. Is. 
How is everybody? Good, good, good. Good. Well, let me just say something. I'm calling because, well, on behalf of me and the crew, the Chum Dumpster, we're sorry for any part we may or may not have had in the spread of this new plague oh. called monkeypox. Uh-oh. Let's talk about that. Uh, but in our defense, let me just say something. We spend a lot of time at sea, and that does things to a man. Oh, sure, mistakes were made, but let's not be quick to point <laughs> fingers, eh? Sometimes we're out to sea, and all alone for three, maybe even four hours. <laughs> so it's only natural the men organize a monkey kissing booth. <laughs> Well, you do the same damn thing, Josh, for God's sake. You plunks down your dollar for a monkey smooch yeah. or two bucks if you want tongue. Oh. Five and tens only, no change. And for those few minutes, it's like it's prom night again. Oh. And you're making out with the homecoming queen. This monkey is a cute thing. It's a lot less hairy than the whores down at the wharf. Oh, boy. Oh, those winches mostly resemble Chewbacca. <laughs> with hairy boobs. <laughs> of course, that doesn't stop us from taking a ride when we're back on shore, if you uh -huh. know what I'm saying. Sure. So between them winches and the monkey kissing, mm -hmm. we've managed to get the monkey pox spread around pretty good. No. We're sorry. And as our way of making it up to you, we're offering a 10% <laughs> discount. Or 150 bucks, whichever is greater, on your next cruise in the Chum Dumpster. Very generous. <laughs> Hundreds only, no change. So come on out and have a great time at bargain prices. Just don't try to be smooching our monkeys. These are spoken for. <laughs> this is Captain Dave. <laughs> Shove off. Goodbye, pussy. Thank you, Captain Dave. <laughs> Now, we have uh, more letters about the housing development. You guys ready for an obscure joke? Yep. Yeah. Tom, you know, my grandmother slept with a, a gorilla once. Really? Oh, wow. She said she thought it was Ernie Kovacs. Thought it was. Uh-oh. <laughs> you still have the music? <laughs> no. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> See, Ernie Kovacs did the famous uh, Nairobi trio, I think. I don't know anything about this. What? He would dress up in a gorilla suit. Yeah. And a couple of buddies. Told you guys uh, it was obscure. Yeah, very obscure. Yeah, no, no. At least he's, well, he told the entire joke, unlike me, only had uh, maybe <laughs> pieces of it. 17% of it. Yeah. yeah. It's like, you do love, it's like a joke puzzle. That's right. Pieces, but it was I good. Leave it to, I leave it to the listener. Yeah. To put uh, it uh, now, once again, we're talking about this uh, interesting story about these uh, two guys in Louisiana started to move a house. Yep. Put sure the house did. up on wheels and uh, abandoned it in the middle of the street uh, and have been arrested. Uh, then we had this great letter uh, about this uh, guy whose uh, grandfather uh, moved a house across a lake. They waited for the lake to freeze back in the 50s and took the house across. Got this one, and I just checked this out, and it's true. Comes to us from Kate. Heard you talking about moving a house across a frozen lake. A similar situation happened in 1895. People tried to move a house across Lake Gardner in Salem, only to have it fall through the ice. The top portion of the house stuck up out of the water. When the water froze inside the house, people would go ice skating through the attic. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. And I just double-checked this. You can go to the Norwich Bulletin. Dot com archives and read all about it. Is this it. in Salem, Massachusetts? I guess, yeah. Salem, Oregon? Salem. I can't, I'm trying to figure out which Salem it is looking at the thing. But I was uh, like, you got half the stuff huh. in there. You know, Chick, uh, my aunt slept with the monkey once. <laughs> oh, is that, is that right? Yeah, yeah, she thought it was Roddy McDowell. <laughs> Ah, yeah. Yeah. Planet of the Apes joke. I got yeah, that. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh -huh. it's drag too. Did anybody else think? Did anybody else think Kim Hunter was better looking in the monkey uh, yes. makeup? I, I couldn't agree more. Yeah, right? I did not. No kidding. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure she was. Okay. Yeah, we could get a twitch in there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, if, if, uh, if monkey you, woman, we, we need to uh, move forward here. Uh, coming up, we do have the beautiful Ace Cosby joke of the day on the way. Oh, it's I, beautiful. I feel it's going to be good it's today. Gorgeous, lovely. We also have a big hot dog news. Uh, uh, now, is it coming. big important news or is it about larger hot dogs? Yeah, really uh, neither. <laughs> neither. <laughs> 
Jesse. We'll be ju- the judge of that. Do I have to explain how oh, the is this, teaser is this my works? fault because she did <laughs> No, I'm asking you to... Uh, You're looking at me be... like I have influenced her to, to be that way. Well, okay, uh, coming up we have... Uh, way to go, Christy. Bees, um, hot dogs, not on, the same, not on the same story. Right now I want to talk Tigers. about saving yourself a ton of money at the, uh, at the pharmacy. This is a free app called GoodRx. You'll save serious bucks. I have a stack of letters from fans of the show about GoodRx. Mm-hmm. Here we go. This is from Chris. He goes, love your show. I enjoy every second of it. Ooh. Oh. Well, he must be on some very serious. He yeah. must be on good drugs. Yeah, he goes, uh, <laughs> uh, I want to tell you my medication's over 600 bucks a month. With insurance, it dropped to 300 with GoodRx. I found it for 74 bucks. GoodRx is a lifesaver. Thank you, Chris. Uh, now, Christy, tell me more about yeah, this. Yeah, because GoodRx instantly compares prescription prices at pharmacies in your neighborhood. And like Chris, you could find discounts that could save you up to 80%. Here's the best part. It's free, easy to use, and it works whether you do or do not have insurance. Even if you have insurance, GoodRx might actually beat your copay price. So get to GoodRx.com slash Tom right now. Sign up. You'll find prescription savings at over 70,000 pharmacies nationwide like CBS, Rite Aid, Vons, Walmart, Walgreens. You get the idea. Simple, smart savings just a click away on your prescriptions at GoodRx.com slash Tom. That's GoodRx.com slash Tom. GoodRx is not insurance, but can be used in place of insurance, Medicare, and Medicaid. In 2021, GoodRx users saved an average of 81% on retail prescription prices. You know, Christy, my older brother once slept with a, a monkey. Oh, oh really? She, she yeah, thought it was uh, <laughs> Davy Jones. <laughs> <laughs> That, that actually that, worked. That no, <laughs> no, because he said my older brother slept with a monkey. So? But she thought it was David. Oh, I meant to say sister. Sorry. Ace, is that strike three? Wow. Okay. You're out. Uh, when we come back, uh, we'll, uh, we'll, him, we'll try to get a hit with Ace Cosby's joke of the day. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Hi, this is Nick Griffin, and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Hey, hey. What are you doing on Friday morning? You want to get together? Yes. Yes, please. Let's get together Friday morning. It's going to be the Bob and Tom Carb Day broadcast. What's a carb day? What the heck are you talking about? Well, it's the final practice day at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. The drivers get to go out for a couple of practice laps to get things dialed in for the 106th running of the Indianapolis 500, which is coming up on Sunday morning. The Bob and Tom Show race day broadcast will be on Sunday morning as well, 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. race day morning, right here on Bob and Tom 24-7. Don't miss it. Hi, everybody. Christy Lee from the Bob and Tom News Desk. The head of the Food and Drug Administration is preparing to tell lawmakers about events that led to a months-long gap before inspecting the plant at the center of a nationwide baby formula shortage. FDA Commissioner Robert Califf is scheduled to answer questions today from House lawmakers probing the formula shortage. According to prepared testimony, Califf will tell lawmakers a COVID-19 outbreak at Abbott's formula plant led regulators to delay their inspection from late December to January. It's one thing to study beers you sip out of a bottle or a glass, not a baby bottle. It's another thing to study one in a classroom or lab. Eastern Washington University and No Lee Brewhouse of Spokane are teaming up to put together the school's first professional certificate program for the craft beer industry. The 15-credit program begins in the fall. No Lee Brewhouse owners John and Cindy Bryant donated $10,000 to help launch the program. And after a series of adventures, a gold signet ring that is more than 3,000 years old has made its way back to Greece. The ring was stolen from an Aegean Sea island during World War II. After being pilfered, it crossed the Atlantic, where it was bought by a Nobel Prize winning Hungarian scientist and ended up in a Swedish museum before being transferred back to Greece. It's the latest in a series of coups by Greek authorities seeking the return of works of art plundered from the antiquities rich country. And that's your news. I'm Christy Lee. More of the Bob and Tom Show on the way. Things you hear on the Bob and Tom Show. So, Nick, let's start with the basics. Are you a married guy? No, I got just uh, got divorced. Sorry to hear about that. It's okay. Lots of people get divorced. Um, Einstein got divorced. He did? Hey. Yeah, did you know that? Albert Einstein, arguably the most intelligent man who ever lived, got divorced. They should tell you that before you get married. <laughs> It shouldn't be, do you love her? Do you want to spend the rest of your life with her? It should be, do you think you're smarter than Einstein? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you're dating then? Uh, I guess. You know what I don't want to do? 
I don't want to say I love you anymore. I hate that first <laughs> I love you. That's the worst. The first time you ever tell a woman you love her. If they like you, they want to hear it. And when they hear it that first time, something comes over them. You know, their eyes get all wide and get that diabolical grin on their face. You, you can almost feel them saying, Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Essential Morning Radio. All day and all night. This is Bob and Tom 24-7. 24-7. 24 it's the most outrageous video ever because it features real girls. And not just any real girls, but real girls on video going... Woo! Oh, yeah. <laughs> just the way you love them. Real girls on video going... Woo! All kinds of real girls on video going... Woo! All across America, real girls on video going features real girls. And each copy of real girls on video going features a group of loser drunk guys going. That's right. You get real girls on video going and loser drunk guys going. And hey, act now and you'll receive at half price real girls on video going. That's Real Girls on Video going. Whee! And the bonus tape. Real Girls on Video going. Whee! And the Drunk Loser Guys going. Whee! But wait. Order now and Frick of All Video will throw in Real Girls on Video going. Whee! And... Whee! That's Real Girls on Video going. Whee! Real Girls on Video going. Whee! And Real Girls on Video going. And, and all complete with loser drunk guys going yeah. harder now. <laughs> <laughs> Sunshine. Bob and Tom, 24-7, 24, 7, 24, 7, 24 Joining 7. us in the studio, comedian Mark Eubanks. Did Oops. you go to college down in... Uh... I went to college in uh, University of West Virginia, Morgantown, West Virginia. Oh, really? I was a mountaineer. Hmm. Well, why would someone from Florida go to college in West Virginia? Uh, because you didn't have to be real smart to get into school there. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, showing up got you that piece of paper. Yeah. Oh. Valedictorian was a 2.0. <laughs> <laughs> On the breathalyzer. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, it's Donnie Baker. Hey, Donnie. Hey, I heard you guys talking about that man with 13 inches of pork. Yeah, yeah. 13 and a half. It's crazy. You guys know Jamie Vickers? You know drummer for Velvet Donger? No. no. <laughs> he was uncut, too, and he could hide just about anything. Really? Did that affect the taste, Donnie? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Hey, this is Henry Phillips, and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Well, what else would you be? Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hello. Lord, I'm up. There's Josh Arnold at the Lord, you're up. Yes, instead chair. of Lord, I'm down, this is a morning blues. Jessica Alsman is here. Howdy. There's Ace Cosby manning the track okay. phone hotline hot phone. There's Willie Griswold. Good morning. I'm Chick McGee, on, Willie. and here's, here's Tom. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now, uh, so we do a little palate cleanser here. Um, having witnessed, uh, I think we could uh, uh, politely call three whiffs. It's time now for a potential home run, if not a grand Is slam. Is that right? Ladies and gentlemen. Bruce that sexy man with a deep voice. Ace Cosby. Joke of the day. We've all seen those decorative wreaths people put on their door. Sure. <laughs> what do you call a wreath made of $100 bills? I don't know what. Aretha Franklin's. <laughs> that was a tough piece of How about that joke? I, I could have sat around all day and I wouldn't have come up with it. Really? No. Okay. I would not have. That's a nice one. Well, thank you, Ace. Omaha Steaks. Spring is here. Grilling season has arrived. Visit omahasteaks.com today. Type BTS in the search bar. Order the Omaha Steaks Spring Grilling Pack right now. Oh, that sounds good. Yum, 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 yum. Speaking of grilling. Yes. Christy, um, we have a hot dog story in the news. A semi-tractor trailer crashed last week outside Pittsburgh, spilling seven tons of 
hot dog filler and caused a traffic oh, backup on I-70. I bet that was slicker than a cat's ass stretched <laughs> across a brass doorknob. <laughs> Holy <laughs> hell. Folksy. Yeah. <laughs> One of those axioms you've heard, wow. Tom. Police report the semi was traveling at a high rate of speed. The driver lost control, went onto the shoulder it hit several trees, spilled about 15,000 pounds of hot dog filler. No serious injuries reported. Man. What, what is hot dog filler? <laughs> Mostly anuses. <laughs> no, there couldn't have been no. any serious injuries. Everybody was too busy laughing. <laughs> <laughs> buns. Get your buns here. Buns. Oh. I got to say, Tom, ever since Christy mentioned it, air fryer. You used your hot dogs in the air fryer. Oh, amazing. Air, perfectly cooked, crisp. Mm. Good. Yeah, I love hot dogs. I um, I think hot dog filler is one of those things you don't want to know. You don't want to know, right? I prefer just enjoying them without having the. Uh, what is it? What is the phrase they always use? Uh, you don't want to know how the sausage is made. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, you don't want to know how the hot dog filler is made. No. I mean, I'm sure there's someone out there that uh, knows exactly what's in it, but I'm mm -hmm. assuming it's. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. Some of the lesser. <laughs> it might be some of the. <laughs> I think there's a, I think there's a broom involved. <laughs> right, right. Oh, come on. It helps us out. Uh, whenever a, I eat a hot dog. Some sort of sluice trap. Uh, yeah, there's a. Oh, I'm not, I'm not going to have it stop me. Don't get me a wrong. A limit of hairs per ton, that sort of thing. No, it's good. We're using the whole animal, man. That's right. Whenever right. I eat the hot dog, it's just because I'm trying to save the world. That's right. Okay, well, Eyelashes. Uh, you ever drive by those trucks with the pigs on them and you're going. Oh, you feel bad? Yeah. yeah. I do feel bad. I know where they're going. They're very smart. They know where they're going. They're sticking the nose out of the little holes like, save me. <laughs> hey, We're going to come hey, in tomorrow. Hey, Chris, pigs will eat you as soon as think about you. You don't they, think they, a pig would break into your house and kill you and your family? <laughs> Are you damn I'd right? What's the, what's the movie where they take the guy's teeth out so the pigs will eat him? What is that? Snatch. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Piggies. That's the, right. The piggies eat you all up. Mm -hmm. you know, Christy, you, should, you have an empty nest now. You should get a pet pig. <gasps> a you can bring pig. him into yes. work. No. Yes. Yes. You had a Even you, I wouldn't have. You had a, and I would you I love, love weird all weird animals. You love weird pets. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't like need a, a pig. What, did you have a chimichanga? What was I it? I had a chinchilla. Chinchilla. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Although uh, chinchillas make delicious chimichangas and a pair of gloves. Isn't that nice? Delicious. We have got a lot of pig stories there. But I don't really want to know what hot dog filler is. I just thought the. No. Just that vision of seven tons of hot dog filler on the road, so much so that it shut down the highway. Is it a liquid? Like, I you know what I mean? I assume like, it's a paste, I'm guessing. Uh, kind I don't of want a to viscous. Know. No. <laughs> Again, I. What are those photos of it? I, 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 oh, as yeah. I said, it's a paste, and it's slicker than a can't. Oh. <laughs> but that gives us uh, the opportunity to feature this. Uh, oh. Certainly one of the classics. Um, and Christy had pointed out that uh, hot dog water. Is kind of a thing of the past. Yeah, you youngsters out there don't realize, but back when we were growing up, we had to boil our hot dogs in water on the stove. That's we how we to, cooked I, them. I can't dogs. remember the last time I boiled a hot dog. I can't on the either. Stove. I do it all the time. Really? <laughs> don't you do the thing where you, you, you do it now? Yeah, sure. You, you take. I, I have a follow-up. Do you ever do the thing where you boil them? Are you them in, insane? No, you, you boil them in a little beer, then you put them on the grill. Well, those that's yeah, different. Yeah, come on, but you're those, still grilling. You're not eating them. Those are them. brats. Those aren't hot dogs. That's a to that's a whole different ballgame. <laughs> yeah. A broad is it's not a, a, a broad's like a hot dog with a PhD. No, it's broad's like a sausage. Help me, here, help me here, Josh. Yeah, that, that's a broad. Trying to broad. raise, try to raise the sausage. level of conversation here. A broad's a broad. Broad's a, a sausage. Dog's a, hot dog. a hot dog is just an American version of the sausage. Right? Just play hot dog water, will you? Someone, someone crawled up his ass. <laughs> for years, we Europeans have had a special taste for bottled waters. The benefits of drinking bottled waters He's have back. not been lost on you intelligent Americans. More and more of you are drinking exotic, healthy, and expensive imported bottled water. First, it was Perrier, the sparkling, crystal clear water from France. Then came Evian, crisp, refreshing, pure spring water from the Alps. And now, the latest bottle water to cross the ocean, imported exclusively by Gullible Yank Imports. It's hot dog water. <laughs> Listen to what your fellow Americans said about imported hot dog water when we secretly served it to them in a very chic New York City bistro. Oh, God. Well, it's kind of cloudy. You know? <laughs> 
Tangy, and it sort of has an aftertaste. It's important. <laughs> well, it's, uh... it's chic and very exclusive. Well, it's... Let me be frank. Princess Diana drinks it, and it's very expensive. I love it. What's it called? It's called hot dog water. <laughs> <laughs> hot dog water? Hot dog <laughs> And what do you think, sir? It's, um, it's imported. Oh, it's kind of cloudy. It's very <laughs> nutritious. <clears throat> sort of sort of tastes like hot dog water. It is hot dog water. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes. The unmistakable taste of hot dog water bottled in Wienerwasser, Austria. You'll find a bottling plant just a yodel away from the Wienerwasser sausage factory just south of the Danube River sewage treatment facility. This is mm, delightful. Should I add a lemon or a lime slice when I serve hot dog water to my guests? No, no, no. You should add mustard or ketchup. <laughs> oh, of course. And hot dog water. Remember our motto. It takes a lot of guts to make this stuff. Oh. Not to mention hooves, thumbs, <laughs> and snouts. Hey, this is tasty. How much is a bottle of hot dog water? About 30 francs. Or in America, $10. Wow, what a bargain. And coming soon from the hot dog water people. The first drinking water that is also a cologne. New HD Eau de Toilette. Is that toilet water? Exactly. <laughs> toilet water. You mean like from a real French toilet? Oui, oui. 10,000 French poodles can't be wrong. Oh. Hot dog water. <laughs> uh, what accent is that exactly? I'm not sure. I have no idea. Uh, but... A tribute to hot dogs once again because of the uh, crash. Where was it? Wienerwasser? Wienerwasser. Uh, <laughs> we looked that up during the song. You don't want to see that. Oh, it, it was again. I got a, a semi a tractor trailer full of um, what they determined, yeah. uh, what they described, I'm sorry, as hot dog filler. Seven tons of it. It's yeah. really something. Yeah, I mean, I usually tweet the stories we're talking about. Not this one. Ooh. Is it like a pinkish, brownish it's pink. sludge? Pink. Oh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> it looks like alien guts. Yeah. It is really it's something. so yeah. gross. Well, you know. Must have smelled. Must have smelled. Had to well, smell. yeah, okay. Well, uh, enough of that. I'm sorry. I, I bet it. Uh, I bet it tastes good though in a cracker, probably. Oh, come Maybe. on. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe like a ham salad. Yeah. Oh, chi hot chi dog chicken, raw? chicken and I are the only ones that love goose liver. Oh. No, no. I'm right there with oh, you. you. Yes. I love I like, all liver. I like chicken liver. I don't know about goose. Oh, liver. Oh well, goose liver is. What's it's, the difference? It's a pate. Yeah. What's a confit? I've, I've never had oh. a pate. A, a confit. Pom I don't care what you call it. I'm not gonna have fun when I have it. <laughs> what is it? Is that little like, dirty bird? I don't know what confit is. You know, I don't confit? know. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, you see it on I've the seen menu? it on the menu. I had it for dinner last night, a duck confit. But you it ate it and so you still good. don't know what it is? Yeah, it was so good. Oh, you, eat, uh, you eat something, you don't know what it is? I know, right? You keep your eyes shut? <laughs> <laughs> now, a feet cone is something that Jeffrey Dahmer had in his no, freezer. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Could we get back to whether uh, we had this great story about... Um, these two clowns that uh, tried to move a house in Louisiana and didn't have the permits ended up uh, knocking over the poles, <laughs> putting sure 700 did. people out of power. Yeah, they did. So we've been getting letters from people that have moved houses, which is really kind of cool. Uh, this one comes to us from uh, Chicago. John writes, I may have the topper regarding moving houses. My grandparents moved their house uh, from a town out to some farmland. Their 40 acres was, at the time, 10 miles out of town. This was back in the 1920s. 40 acres, huh? They moved... <laughs> Distraction, inappropriate. <laughs> uh, this was back in the 1920s. They achieved this by rolling the house on logs, pulling it with horses. Man. They were some tough Swedes, to wow. say the least. Wow, yeah. that's right. That's pretty cool. Okay, well... Um, so much for our moving house hunk. And uh, it is time now to return to the news desk with Miss Christy Lee. Christy? A man had his finger bitten off by a lion at the oh. Jamaica Zoo. You know what? That's off. lucky. <laughs> off? If you're going to be bitten by a lion. You off. Want, yeah, you just want to lose a digit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> In a viral video, the man can be seen poking his hand through the chain link fence oh. of the lion enclosure. i got to see it. Hey, yeah. lion. The hey, lion. The hey. lion within. Hey, what you doing? Can be heard <laughs> Snarling and growling no. while the man continues to tease the animal. That wasn't enough of a warning to the man. Which hey, eventually well, chomps down on his yeah, finger. Yeah. yeah. Way to go, lion. Go, lion. One yes. lion, one man, uh, Once again, nine. Read the <laughs> 
<laughs> man tries to wrestle his hand away and even pushes against the fence with both his feet to gain leverage before his hand is freed and he falls backwards onto the ground. I'd like to think the lion spit the nail out, though. Uh, <laughs> a probably, witness told the, Jam- spit the, whole thing out, I would think. the Jamaica Observer that the man in question was a zoo attendant who apparently wanted to impress visitors by trying to pet the lion. After losing his ring finger, the witness said the attendant left the facility and it acted though uh, the pain never kicked ah. in. Oh! Do you, is there oh, video no. Of this? You watching it? Uh, yeah, here's the thing. The lion doesn't so much as... All right. I'm not going to say the lion bites the finger off. What really happens here is the lion bites the finger and the man pulls so hard, uh. he essentially pulls himself away from the finger. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, this, this is in Jamaica, it's, Jamaica. Yeah, Jamaica okay. Zoo. Idiot. So um, here's the rule you've learned here. Hold off on the ganja till you're off duty. Oh, man. Yikes. He's taunting yep. the lion. This yeah, lion is really. giving him every indication. Hey, pal, why don't you knock this off? This is, <laughs> th- you know what this is? This is like the Mike Tyson on the plane thing. Yeah. Yeah. The lion, right? don't bother me. No, 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 don't bother oh. me. And then he bothers him and he, okay, I'm biting off your finger. Yeah. What an idiot. Gosh. Um, Ugh. I told you, don't don't bother me. <laughs> oh. oh God! Oh. <laughs> 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 it's it's it's, a tr- it's the best picture of the year so far. <laughs> is that, is that can we put that you... on Twitter? Do you think yeah. I can post There's that? No tell, right. Would you tell people that at a cocktail party, or would you like to just keep it to yourself? I would think. What that you had your yeah. finger oh, bitten off oh, by I'm a sure lion? This idiot's going. Hey, you want my digits, baby? Guess what happened? <laughs> you know who got this one? <laughs> That's the worst Jamaican accent I've ever heard. Yeah, I don't know what that, that was. <laughs> How did you make it? They, they talk like, uh, what's his name? Uh, Jar Jar Banks? Jar Jar Banks. My, my favorite creature, creature from Star Wars. And what'd you say, Ace? Today's the anniversary of one of the Star Wars movies? The first one. Oh, Episode wait. 4, A New Hope. Huh? A Episode four, a new hope. Mm-hmm. A new hope. I, I can never keep track. Uh, the that very was the first, first Star Wars. The one from oh, seventy-seven. Got a subtitle. <laughs> okay. Um, why don't we shake things up and do? We never do today in history early. Oh. Why don't we do it right now? There's not. There, I'm sorry. It's scheduled when it's scheduled. Whoa! <laughs> Time now for an early edition of today. In history, here's Tom. I gotta find out what day is today. Twenty oh, fifth, May. Gosh. Okay, twenty twenty two. May. Here it is. Okay. Um. Now you said I'm trying to find the Star Wars thing for you. Oh, here we go. Oh, 1977. Yeah. Star Wars is released. And what's that one called technically now? Episode four. Even though a new hope. Okay. Back then it was just Star, Star Wars. Wars. Of course. Okay. Um, I'm sorry I brought it up. How <laughs> dare <laughs> well, well, well. I believe the when Ace thing... accuses you of needing subtitles, <laughs> dear right, you are. I think in the trouble. first thing on the screen is a new hope. The Rebel Alliance. <laughs> right. Or something. Yeah. Right. Okay. With the uh, printing. That was six. Oh, shut up. Uh, <laughs> God, you're not helping. Okay. Now could I? Uh, <sighs> I want to see if. I, <laughs> this is an unusual request. Uh, I'll, I'll ask you, Walsey. I want you to do a request of um, something um, scientific. Ready? Okay. 1843, <laughs> a scientist named Christian Doppler made a presentation to the Royal Bohemian Society, which, by the way, sounds like it's right out. Doesn't the, the Royal Bohemian Boy. Society sound like it's something right out of a uh, right out of one of those classic movies like Indiana Jones? Yes, I was addressing the Royal Bohemian Society. <laughs> they were pains in the ass. Oh, yes, after lunch, we had a buggery session. Not a shaven uh, armpit in the place. Uh, yes, uh, uh, <laughs> now, do you know what um, it became known as the Doppler effect? Yeah, that noise like an ambulance will make, right? Like the... Exactly. That that thing. Thanks to the Big Bang Theory, I think we all learned that, right? Okay, uh, that's right. I Fantastic learned it in school, show. but uh... <laughs> we never talked about it in school. You didn't? No. 1922, Babe Ruth was suspended for a day for throwing dirt on an umpire, and fined at the time two thousand a two two hundred dollars rather, which was would be thousands today. Mm-hmm. Uh, here's a uh, on 1927, Henry Ford announced the end of the production of the uh, Model T. Mm. 
Mm. And when he did that, he goes, I pity the fool. <laughs> has not purchased a Model T. Yet. <laughs> Why can't it be on uh, Mr. T's Model T's? That would be cool. <laughs> Mr. Right? T's Model T's. Maybe Tesla should hire Mr. T. And, and okay, never mind. Here's, uh, here's a Doppler effect. Ready? Yeah. I don't care if anybody gets it. I'm going as the Doppler effect. No, it's not. If bad. I have to, I can demonstrate. <laughs> Man, oh man, is Whoa, that funny. Not funny. Oh, that's Come on. Education, wonderful. Love that show. Oh, wait a minute, there's more. <laughs> that's what we're doing. There is Rick switches frequency. Hey, United Kingdom, get a real ambulance now, <laughs> will you? I think France uses that, too. That's scary. I was, it's, it's usually the... I'm sorry, uh, in 1983, Return of the Jedi is released. Oh, is that oh. the big uh, Star Wars day across the board? Stop wow. Star Wars 2. That's, Wars one, two. I, that's one of the first movies I remember seeing in the theater. Really? Okay. Um, I was five. And then let's that's a great that. story, Joe. In uh, 2012, the SpaceX <laughs> Dragon becomes the first commercial spacecraft to dock at the International Space Station. Um, and then uh, a couple of real quick birthdays. Um, Ralph Waldo Emerson, I'm sure one of your favorites, Josh. I do enjoy Emerson, yes. Okay. Um, 1939, Ian McKellen. Now, do you know what movies he was in, Christy Lee? Ian McKellen. You'd was... recognize him immediately. Sir Ian McKellen. Older gent. Uh, Shakespearean yes. uh, You actor. shall not pass. I don't know. Um, he's, he's one of the... Uh, uh, Bilbo. Was that... You shall not pass. Uh, was that... Um, Nerdy Hobbit movies. He's Magneto. Lord the of the X -Men. Rings. Oh. Yeah, Gandalf, Magneto. Gotcha. It's like the nerd Elvis. Isn't he Dumbledore <laughs> when he gets recast? No. He's not recast Dumbledore? Okay. No. How about this one? This is an easy one. Frank Oz, 1944, Chick McGee. Oh, Miss Piggy. Mm. Yeah. And? Yoda. Yeah. Fozzie Yoda, Bear. W w Yoda, which sounds a lot Just like, like Miss Piggy. Piggy. The yeah. prison worker in the Blues Brothers. <laughs> oh, yeah. One used prophylactic. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> right uh, and didn't he direct uh, the British version of... Four. Yes, Death at a Funeral. Death he directed Little funeral. Shop of Horrors, Dirty Rotten yeah. Scoundrels. Oh, he's in and a busy out. guy. Birthday happy me it is. Well, actually, to break up the cast, he would bring Miss Piggy in to direct a couple of days. Oh, um, <laughs> happy birthday to the great Mike Myers, currently with a new uh, show out there. Oh, I tried to watch that. It's pretty silly. It's yeah. pretty silly. You'll have to open up your mind. <laughs> yeah. I look forward to it. He was a groovy baby. I like silly. Born in 1963. I think it appeals more to a... Male sensibilities. Lastly, uh, happy birthday, and H, which of course is how the British pronounce the letter H. No, uh, it, they, it rhymes with snitch. Okay. <laughs> what am I? She runs around saying. Uh, uh, time now to uh, check in with uh, doing something nice for yourself or for a gift. Uh, what are you looking forward to today, Tom? A little package in my door from Bespoke Post happens to be a box, a box of awesome. That's right. Tell me more. Well, Bespoke Post partners with small businesses and emerging brands. To bring you the most unique goods each and every month. Plus, they have their new seasonal lineup of must-have collections. For instance, me, Josh, what do you got over there? The Scorch. What is that? Hot Scorch. sauces from <laughs> all around the country. Small brands all over this great land of ours. Some from Texas, Nevada, California, and more. Oh, that's right up Ace's Alley. He likes the oh, hot sauces. he likes that mm. hot sauce. Yeah. yeah. And uh, they release new boxes each and every month. But how do they know, Christy, what I like? Well, because you take a quiz, right. Chick, at boxofawesome.com. Those answers help them pick the right box of awesome just for you. They release new boxes every month across a ton of different categories. No matter what you're into, maybe it's not hot sauce you're into. Maybe you want a nice something to take to the beach or you're a camper. They've got all that and more. They release new boxes and they valued at over $70 and you only pay a fraction of that. Plus, with each box of awesome, as we mentioned earlier, you're supporting small businesses. Get 20% off your first monthly box right now when you sign up at boxofawesome.com. Enter the code Bob and Tom at checkout. That's boxofawesome.com. Code Bob and Tom for 20% off your first box of awesome. Thank you very much, Christy Lee. Uh, coming up in the news, we have uh, bumblebees, pythons, pythons. Boy, you don't want a python where this one is. Um, and uh, we'll also find out about uh, pharmaceuticals. And speaking of Oz, we have a Wizard of Oz update. Oh, that's right. right. Uh, all coming up. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Everything about the show is at bobandtom.com. Check it out now. State law.
we've got some extra from the Bob and Tom Show. Comedian Greg Warren, former uh, state champion wrestler. You're the son of a wrestling coach. Now, well, I assume your dad was also your wrestling coach. Is yes. that correct? Yes, he was. He was a high school wrestling coach. So I wrestled, and my mom was into music, so I played the clarinet in the band, uh -huh. which uh, they made fun of me, especially the guys on the wrestling team, especially sure. my best friend, Huey Baker. He was, uh, he was a black guy. Mm -hmm. He's one of those guys that would just get a hold of something and never shut up. And <laughs> Look at Greg, man. Greg played a flute. It's a, it's a clarinet. You, it's a flute, Greg. You a flute man. <laughs> Look at little flute man, Greg. Flute your flute, Greg. Little flute man, Greg. He'll be on the bus going to a match. He'll be real quiet, and all of a sudden you hear, Hop, two, three, four. What the hell are we fighting for? Flute man. <laughs> it's embarrassing when you're out there wrestling and you hear, Hit him with your flute, Greg. <laughs> Bob and Tom 24-7. It's not on air. It's online. Bob and Tom 24-7. Good, good morning. Mark Allison along with you, May 25th. Jessica Allsman, Ali Breen on the way. Don't forget, you can watch the show as it happens live. BobandTom.com forward slash live is the address you head to so you can watch the live video feed. How much will that cost me? Zero. Free. BobandTom.com forward slash live for those of you that want to watch the show. Continue listening here on Bob and Tom 24-7. Allie Breen and Sexy Time on the way. I'm Chick McGee with your Bob and Tom sports update. Luca had 30 points, 14 rebounds. Mavericks avoided being swept. 119-109 win over Golden State in Dallas. In the NHL, Andrew Kopp had a goal, two assists. Frank Vetrano and Adam Fox each had a goal and an assist. Rangers beat the Hurricanes 4-1 to in Game 4, evening the second round series at two games apiece. And Ryan Nugent Hopkins scored his second goal of the game, 327 left regulation. The Oilers beat the Calgary Flames 5-3 to to take a three-game-to-one lead in that second round playoff series major league baseball interleague action tampa bay beat miami toronto beat st louis and arizona over kansas city american league your winners minnesota the yankees houston boston the angels and oakland and in the national league cubs beat cincinnati colorado beat pittsburgh also winning the dodgers atlanta milwaukee and san francisco I'm Chick McGee, and that's your Bob and Tom Sports Update. Hey, man, it's Donnie Baker. And the fact remains, there's nothing better than being a VIP. And I don't mean like his dudes on Pervert Rabbit Xanadu's. I'm talking about a Bob and Tom VIP. Best thing, you'll never miss another minute of the show. I swear to God, you can hear the show here in the morning, and then because you're a Bob and Tom VIP, you'll get the podcast of the entire show, a 12-month library of podcasts, hundreds of Bob and Tom comedy tapes, and a 60-day video archive of the show. Bob and Tom VIP. You have to get it. It's state law. This is Bob and Tom 24-7. Comedy, guess, Bob and Tom exclusives. And it's here on the internet. Bob and Tom 24-7. And now, from the Amish Brewing Company, Buttermilk Ice Light. Ringer! <laughs> nice toss, Graber. Thank you, my friends. Women of the Old Testament. Hmm. Okay. Ruth... Or Mary Magdalene. <laughs> mm, Ruth. Okay, how about this? Ruth or Eve? Eve. <laughs> buttermilk ice light from the Amish Brewing Company. The hand-churned buttermilk is frozen. The curds removed. Put in the back of a buggy and driven around town until thawed. Then returned to the farm and slowly filtered through a hand-sewn patchwork quilt. <laughs> then refrozen to create the unique taste of buttermilk ice light. Okay. Plain black floor-length dress or red lacy see-through teddy. Mm. Plain black floor link dress. <laughs> when you say buttermilk, you've said it all. 99 glasses of buttermilk on the wall. Hold, hold it. Fritz, uh. Fritz, move over. Let me drive the buggy. Ah. It's okay, Graber. I took his reins away when he wasn't looking. <laughs> You're a good friend, Yoder. <laughs> the Amish Brewing Company would like to remind you, if thou hast had too much to drink, thou shalt not drive. <laughs> Amish Brewing Company, Napanee, Indiana. <laughs> Hi, this is Rodney Carrington, and you are listening to Bob and Tom 24-7.
comedian Dwight Slade. I think they're overdoing the ID for liquor. We ID under 65. Bring your walker. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got carded the other day, and it's like, look into my eyes. You ever seen a 21 year old with this much hate and bitterness <laughs> in their eyes? <laughs> yeah. Let's not count the birthdays. Let's count the dark angels. Uh -huh. Oh, the people you. who think and cluck at the same time. <laughs> how, how does that work? You ask them a question. You go, hey, are we doing dinner tomorrow? Dinner tomorrow. <laughs> What are you, an aborigine? Answer the question. <laughs> I want to go to dinner. You're hunting for Coke bottles. Let's go! <laughs> I actually uh, have a, a sexual fantasy associated with the earthquake. Go. All right. Woke well, chick up. Uh -huh. mm. uh, in my fantasy, I am making love to this woman. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, she feels the earth move beneath her. Mm. Ah, yes. And then she rolls over on top of me and shields me from debris. <laughs> 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 Safety first, everybody. Safety That's first. Hi, fellas. This is Floyd Tucker, the over-the-road trucker. You're listening to Bob and Tom. Cast. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Howdy. There's Josh Arnold at the sidekick chair. Hey. There's Jessica Holzman. Hello. There's Ace Cosby. Hey. There's Willie Griswold. Good morning. I'm Chick McGee. And now here's, oh, Captain, my Captain, it's Tom Griswold. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Now, we were talking, just a little bit off the air, Christy and I were talking about something. Uh, uh, it was field day at... Um, uh, one of my kids, um, a couple of my kids' school, they had a fun time out outside, having a great time doing these great games. Cool. What games did they play? Oh, a bunch of cool stuff. But they, I they, bet they don't play at, dodgeball. At the end. <laughs> oh, they've been banned. They can't play dodgeball. I don't know if they can play dodgeball. That was a joke. What about high waters, low waters? You ever play that? I have no idea. What's What's that? That? Take a rope and you got to jump over it. And... Oh yeah. yeah. But it, the point is, at the end they at the end they had a tug of war. Fat, oh, I love tug of war. Little fat Chucky broke his foot playing high water, low water. Oh no! Third oh, grade. <laughs> oh, sorry to hear sorry. that. Sorry. I never will forget what my mom told me. Your foot ain't broke. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Not, uh, Josh, I try to bring up something about the joys of being a child. And what? The next I have thing a memory. I, know, I, I yeah, hear about he Chip being hit with a ashtray in the head. No, he tripped over a rope and broke his foot. I'm not just well, I was that. dodging the ashtray, though. <laughs> <laughs> there are many stories. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's, what, uh, are we going to talk about tug of war? We, uh, because we were just going into the break here, and you were mentioning this. I, uh, I was saying how funny it was watching the kids having a tug. They were having so much fun. Sure. You seem you, like one of those guys who'd get out there on the tug of war and just uh, dominate. No, the last time right. I participated in tug of war, we lost. I just remember, oh, well, ready, go. We were just sliding across uh. the ground. <laughs> Yeah, that's it's fun though. Their their little feet are kind of yeah, their little feet are moving. <laughs> just fun. They had a great yeah. time. But you were saying, what was it now? I don't understand. About the plane pole. How does that work? Um, well, you have a huge plane that's I don't know, fifteen hundred pounds. What does a plane weigh? Fifteen hundred pounds. Fifteen thousand pounds. Kite weighs fifteen. Pounds. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> many they, many tons. Many tons, and they have a group of ten. And they have a rope wrapped around the front of the plane, and you have to pull it certain, like, 15 feet or whatever. Does the pilot pop the engine sign just for laughs? <laughs> no, the pilot does not pop the engine sign. Watch this. Uh -huh. There many... is a guy in there, though, that puts on the brake. That's, yeah. Is there a guy there to tuck in all the prolapsed anine? <laughs> <laughs> it's really, it's a really fun charity event. I do it every year. With, um, it's great. It's really fun to watch these people. It's, uh, once the thing gets rolling... It'll move, but getting it started is you see the little legs go. Like that. <laughs> Does anyone ever uh, fill their underwear? No, mm. not that I'm aware of. <laughs> I bet. We have costumes. There was Star Wars costume. How do they raise awesome. money? How many feet they pull it? Or uh, I don't no? know. How much. No, because you it, it's um, a contest. The you do it the fastest time, and the team wins a prize. Well, let but, me know the next time it happens. I'll just write you a check. <laughs> <laughs> I could be out there pulling it. You no. want to pull a plane? Uh, I'm all right. No, but no. <laughs> They're in pulling a train. Josh and I are saving ourselves for pulling a train. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> when they come up with that charity, we're there. <laughs> we'll make the Eiffel Tower. You don't want to be we'll the caboose. The, we'll do the whole thing. Okay, well, I've got a little request here. Yeah. Um, can you read the story again about uh, sunglasses? I, I think this is fascinating. I, I'm the only one that thinks this are is interesting. Are you going to play it again? What? <laughs> Researchers have found wearing sunglasses makes people more inclined to ogle. In the experiment, study participants donned sunglasses or were given clear glasses while viewing sexually provocative images. Porn. Researchers found that people spontaneously looked more and for longer 
at the porn images when their eyes were camouflaged (laughs) by sunglasses. Do they make this noise? Oh, yeah. (laughs) Oh, Oh, yes. yes. Oh, God, yes. That's real good good porn. porn. Look at that. Baby, baby, Yeah, baby. It's not just about porn. In other words, if... if, It's actually provocative image. But also anything. In other words... If people can't see your eyes, they don't know what you're looking at. Sure, so you absolutely. Be, you might tend to... It's an interesting study, I thought. It gave us an excuse to play a snippet of this great song. I wear my sunglasses at night okay, okay, so okay. I can play the same note all song in. <laughs> It's, it's a very soulful oh, tune. I like it. Soulful? Yeah. <laughs> I listen, to the guy, listen to him emote. Uh, well, we had a request for a little something because when they did the study, they were using porno Porn. and, um, to get people to watch Porn. it. So uh, here, here's a classic from uh, D- Da Vinci's Notebook. Back in the not-too-distant past When I would need a quick repast Or a temporary break from my agenda Up to the bedroom I would head Pull out the Playboy from neath the bed And sneak a peek at all the portraits of Pudenda My alternatives were slim If I tried to find another source for sin I'd have to hang out with the losers in the back room of my life local video store <laughs> but last month i finally made the call i got a brand new cable modem installed and it opened up the floodgates on a whole new universe of internet, internet porn <laughs> internet porn roman orgy scenes internet porn dominatrix queens internet porn girl on girl on girl on girl on girl on guy on sheep internet porn gross anatomy internet porn pam and tommy lee Internet porn when you're given so much to choose from. Who has time to sleep? (laughs) Honestly, honey, I don't know how the link got on there. After my girlfriend goes to sleep, then I get out of bed and down the hall I creep so I can hunker down and wallow in gravity until three or four. You'll always find me in that same tableau, silhouetted by my monitor's warm glow and absorbing all the bounty from the cornucopia of internet Porn, internet porn, barely legal teens, internet porn, naughty figurines, internet geriatric German grandmas spanking Spanish men, internet porn, erotic Asian art, internet porn, guys with extra parts, internet, I don't think I'm ever going to see the sun again, internet porn, melonlove.com, internet, there's my neighbor's mom, internet porn, by Wearing diapers, chasing nurses dressed like Smurfs. Internet porn, maison le clavage. Internet porn, on de trois menage. Internet, every kind of smut from every corner of the earth. <laughs> da Vinci's Notebook and their classic internet porn in honor of uh, the uh, famous study of uh, sunglasses and uh, viewing porno um, that um, I think was fascinating. I'm the only one, apparently. When we come back, we have... uh, Oh, coming up. Animal hunk. And we have uh, animals, the human animal for sexy Ah. time. (laughs) Sexy time with Allie Breen coming up. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Reach us toll-free at 1-888-BOB-TOM-1 or at bobandtom.com. This is the Bob and Tom Show.
things you hear on the Bob and Tom Show. I got this new venture. It's called Say It to My Face. Oh. Pretty good. <laughs> cool. Huh. Hey, Josh, let's say someone talks smack about you on Facebook yeah. or Twitter. Sure. And the first thing you do is you call me, then I go to their house. And when they answer the door, I'll just yell, say it to my face. <laughs> and then I'll jack them with a blood dart right to the larynx. <laughs> and, Christy, you and your ladies yes. don't got to worry either because I got you covered, too. See, my friend Tasha and I are launching an all-female company called Oh, no, you didn't. <laughs> well, it's hard to spell it on the radio, but in print, it's badass. It's all hymenated. Hymenated? Yep. So the next time some chick, you know, calls another chick an obese whale when you post your porta potty selfie on Instagrams, just give me and Tasha a call. She'll go to that chick's house and slap the spit out of her while screaming, <laughs> Oh, no, you didn't. <laughs> Bob and Tom, 24-7. Rolling through a Wednesday morning. We like to call it hump day around here. You know, middle of the week, halfway between Monday and Friday. Speaking of Friday, our Bob and Tom show carb day broadcast. Duke Tomato and the Power Trio with the Bob and Tom horns. Jeff Oske, actor Drew Powell. That's right. And, oh, just two-time Indy 500 winner Al Unser Jr. scheduled to appear. That's our carb day broadcast coming up this Friday morning. And you can catch all the action right here on Bob and Tom 24-7. And don't forget, race day morning this Sunday. That's right, a Bob and Tom show on Sunday. Are you serious? Yes. Five hours, yes. 7 a.m. Wait, 7, 8, 9, 10. A four-hour morning show on race day morning, 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. I can do math. Four hours this Sunday. It's race day morning, and you can catch all the action right here on Bob and Tom 24-7. Four hours, everybody. Hi, everybody. Christy Lee from the Bob and Tom Entertainment News Desk. Steven Tyler is in rehab after relapsing from sobriety due to pain medication from recent foot surgery. Tyler voluntarily entered treatment to concentrate on his recovery. However, that means Aerosmith has canceled their residency in Las Vegas for June and July. They plan to resume playing shows sometime in September. Actor Richard Gere has hosted a benefit concert for Ukraine at Carnegie Hall. The event raised $360,000 for direct relief, a humanitarian organization providing medical aid. Opera star Denise Graves and violinist Itzhak Perlman participated in the event on Monday night. Another year, another comedian, another complaint against Netflix for airing a comedy special featuring a comedian mocking the transgender community. Last year, you recall, it was Dave Chappelle. This year, it's Ricky Gervais. His new special, Supernature, made its debut yesterday. Almost immediately, it got criticism for what an LGBTQ advocacy group calls anti-trans rants disguised as jokes. While Gervais explains in the show his jokes target everyone and that any digs at transgender people aren't reflective of his personal views, critics blasted him and, of course, Netflix. And that's your news. I'm Christy Lee. More of the Bob and Tom Show coming up. Hey, Shooter, it's Kenny Tarmac. Hey, we just landed. I'm an ORD just got in from TPA through ATL. And hey, guess what else just landed? The Bob and Tom app. I know, I know. Now, thanks to the Bob and Tom app, even if I have to go all the way from Foxtrot 20 down to Alpha 4, I can still listen live, see their videos, find an affiliate station, use the alarm, and even send a message. This is Kenny Tarmac signing off and reminding you everything I touch turns to sold. Hi, this is Kostaki Economopoulos, and you are listening to Bob and Tom 24 7. Rob Haney is our guest. Now, uh, Rob, are you... Uh, are well, I, I, I was, as you might know, I try to be clean. And this is, I, I, I feel I might be going over the board with this. But what's, what's the show that's always about sex? It's only a real personal? That, well, then back me if you saw this. The night they had Dr. Ruth Westheimer on as a guest. And this is all true. And I, I don't know how I'm going to clean this up. This guy calls in to, to, to ask Dr. Ruth for advice. And he said that he had been dating this girl, but he broke up with her because she had, and this is the hard part, she had extreme odor mm -hmm. uh -huh. All right. that, that's what the man said i'm sorry but that's what he, and anyways he said that since they had broken up they had remained close friends and she had dated two other guys and those relationships broke off kind of suddenly he thought maybe it was the same reason mm -hmm. should i tell her and as god is my witness this was dr ruth's advice she said send the girl some flowers 
And on one side of the card, write a little poem, something something positive, something upbeat. Uh -huh. Which, you know, to me, that's terrible advice. I mean, you know, uh, I, I can't imagine, you know, can you imagine that poor guy trying to write that poem? <laughs> no. Uh, roses are red, violets are blue, you're real sweet, but you're... <laughs> <laughs> I've went over the line, haven't I? So that's not me. I don't, that, that's offensive, isn't it, Paul? You're a classy guy, and that is, that is offensive. So. Did that, uh, are we back on the air? We are now. <laughs> I apologize. Did that have to be clear? I apologize. Yes. I apologize to you ladies. Okay? <laughs> Get you're listening to Bob and Tom 24 7. These are stupid. Them are not stupid. They're stupid. Them are not stupid. They're stupid. Essential morning radio. They're stupid. This is Bob and Tom 24 7. 24 7. 24 7. Bob and Tom 24 7. Comedy via your computer. Bob and Tom 24 7. This is Bob and Tom 24 7. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Howdy. There's Josh Arnold at the sidekick chair. Hello. Jessica Alsman is here. Hi. There's Ace Cosby. Howdy. There's Wooly Griswold. What's up? I'm Chick McGee over here hanging out with a new theory. And here's Tom. So a couple things. During the break, we were watching the video of this idiot zookeeper putting his finger in these in the lion cage yeah, was, he a, kitty, 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 was he a zookeeper yeah, yeah it was a, he worked at the zoo he worked at the zoo an attendant this, and this is in jamaica look how he loves me and he puts his <laughs> finger in there and you can see he's taunting the lion yeah, he wants yeah. to pet the lion to show off for his friends and the lion clomps down on his uh, finger and then as you put it josh he pulls and pulls until he separates himself from the finger oh yeah. The finger's gone. Well, this guy knows what he's doing. He works at a Jamaican zoo. I'm sure he had dozens of hours of training. You know, I'm yeah. sure this guy, yeah, really yeah. above board down there. Yeah. Hey, man. <laughs> I like the ganja before I go. Um, the JZS has to be, uh, you know, an august body. The Jamaican yeah. Zoo Society. <laughs> One can only imagine. I uh, was thinking about uh, the pulling, and that got me thinking about the tug of war that I watched. Uh, it was a right. special event with my kids, and it was just so much fun watching a tug of war. Do you, you ever have that tug of war with your dog? You're not supposed to do that. It teaches but sure, yeah, it happens it, to be belligerent. Yeah, yeah, well, no, it teaches a dog to have control over you. Oh. So you're saying the fact that I lost a tug of war game with my dog over a gym shoe is a bad thing? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, just checking. That is. Just, 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 just checking. Okay, oh, we Can you have chew a, up your gym shoe? Uh, <laughs> we have a lot to get to here. Do you call them gym shoes? Uh, yeah. What do you call them? I don't know. Sneakers? Gym shoes? <laughs> gym shoes. Tennis shoes? Yeah, tennis, yeah. tennis shoes. Is there anything in your life that you don't <laughs> recall 1967 through 1974 about? I don't anything know. at all. What do you call them, Willie? Tennis shoes or sneakers? Tennis yeah. shoes. Okay. Sneakers. But you don't play tennis in a Mississippi. Nobody calls them gym shoes, though. What, do you have gym? What, third period? <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh, I used to love gym. Did you? Oh, you did. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now, um, I've always said gym shoes. I don't know. What do you call them, Josh? Uh, tennis shoes. Okay, but you don't play tennis in them. I so call them that, tennis that, that's shoes. That's just as invalid as calling them gym shoes. Yeah, it's one of those. Other um, than everyone calls them tennis shoes. But I'm just saying, though, I think you could, there's a strong argument to be made that gym. What do you call them, Ace? Tennis shoes. Me just too. Shoes. Just shoes. Unless it's or, like... Or kicks. I'm Ooh, kicks. kicks. That's nice. Okay. <laughs> uh, hey, you got some new kicks. Uh, yeah. I have yeah. no idea what you were talking about. Um, okay. Uh, uh, Christy Lee is at the news desk. What have we missed? A man in Malaysia was on the receiving end of a snake bite. Uh oh. His backside while sitting on the commode. Ooh. Mr. Sabri Tazali told the star online he usually spends about 15 minutes playing games on his mobile device while oh, defecating. A little, a little, a little me time. Yes. Yeah. But in but this wait, case, they they have a picture of the snake in, in the in the article. They've got the the snake the, and and this poor guy. He was mid game when a python latched itself onto his buttocks. Oh, oh. that's non venomous at least. The 28 year old said he got up, yanked the reptile off, threw it against the wall. <laughs> Tazali called the fire and rescue department and the python was captured. He then went to an area hospital where he received a tetanus shot. <laughs> to make matters worse, he later discovered the snake had left behind teeth fragments yeah. in his rear end. You know end. that uh, pythons uh, 
don't have uh, snake teeth. They have, their teeth look amazing. They look like ours. Oh, do they really? Yeah. When they <laughs> smile, it's like a full set. No, that's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? You feel like you have to say that. Well, because there's that one fish that does, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah that's oh, yeah, true. the one fish does, yeah. The it looks like he's wearing dentures. The yes. fish that has people teeth. That is weird. There's a picture of this, this guy. I think it's funny that he goes, he spends 15 minutes at a time, as they put it, defecating playing games. He admits it. What's the problem with that? That's a long time to be sitting. He needs more fiber in his diet. I just wonder. <sighs> uh, I mean, well, that, this will maybe clear his constipation, knowing that there may be a, uh, a snake coming up to uh, He's not fang his browner, if you will. Fang his browner. <laughs> fang his browner. <laughs> he's not cramping the whole time. Oh, yeah, That's God. the first two minutes, and then he's just sitting there playing games the rest yeah. of the time. You never do that? What game do you think he's playing? Call of Duty? Oh. Oh, man. Angry turds. Angry turds. Oh, oh, Madden, oh. Madden number two. Now, Josh, are, are you a Candy Crush guy? No, I never did play that. A Willie? I play a version of Risk on my phone called Lux. A lot of fun. Ace, you play a game in your phone? Not at all, no. Do you have a phone that plays games or do you still have a flip phone? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. uh, Chick? Uh, I have a special gaming. Uh, it's called uh, PSP Vita or whatever the hell it is. And I've got a, a game called Lumines. <laughs> you fill squares up, and it's kind of like Tetris, only it's a little okay. more involved. Okay. Nice. Yeah, okay. I can lose an hour. Alzi, what do you do? Uh, I play Catan or Word, was it Woodblock? Hmm. Something like oh, that. Yeah, Woodblock. I just do uh, crossword puzzles and a Wordle. I play Wordscapes. So maybe he was playing Turtle. Turtle. Oh, oh nice. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, turtle. Very good. Very good. Uh, the little five letter word was dumps. <laughs> <laughs> dumps. <laughs> Snake. Where'd this, that word I, come from? Oh! <laughs> terrifying. I mean,. As you say, Josh, he was relieved to find out it wasn't a poisonous snake, but still, a python in the facility. Oh, that's, it, it, he felt it. There's no doubt. Isn't oh, this yeah. one of your nightmares come true, Tom? Don't oh, you? Oh, see, like, if I, when I hear, so, this is why I'll never go to Australia for fear that there'll be a snake in the toilet. Uh, this this is, was uh, in uh, Malaysia. Mal same thing. Uh, <laughs> same difference. Okay. <laughs> All those Malaysian fellas running around barbecuing and drinking Fosters and mm -hmm. going to Outback Steakhouse. Oh, shrimp on the ball, buddy. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> oh. No, um, okay, whoa, sorry, whoa, whoa, whoa. I was just looking at that. Okay. <laughs> uh, drivers in Florida were caught in a traffic jam after an 11-foot alligator crawled onto the road. <laughs> According to KMG-TV... We're magic. <laughs> the gator forced... KMG, we drive little cars. WKMG. <laughs> I saw a guy go by the other day in an, in, an, in an MG. I'd forgotten how little those are. So cool. I always wanted an MG midget when I was a kid. I didn't know how... <laughs> How small they were. Now, do they still call them the midget, or is yeah. that... There's a midget and a sports car. I do, can't imagine. Do they imagine. still call it that? Is yeah. it, is it you know, I think it's still midget, I think. Okay. Um, I think. You ever drive a little MG, Josh? <sighs> I, I couldn't even tell you. I wouldn't be able to even point one out. Oh, They're, come on. They really? call... Uh, I don't know anything about... When I see when I look at cars, I just see cars. I don't... Look, I don't... I, I really don't care about them. <laughs> I really don't care about we them. cannot ever be together. I know, I Damn. know, but that's just one interest I have. Don't no, they, I don't have. Don't they still call Tootsie Rolls midgies? Uh, and that's short for midgets. I don't know. I don't know. Right? right? We'll, we'll have to find out. I'm sorry. So, so, I'm, so once again, an alligator in Florida. <laughs> yeah, the Gator forced authorities to temporarily close State Road 417 near Oviedo. Oviedo. Gator Force. Drivers were able to pass by slowly in an unblocked lane, but when the reptile moved to the shoulder, both lanes of the toll road were reopened. Okay. Boy, that's got to be a long wait. They move slowly when they want to. Yeah, you think waiting on geese is a pain. Yeah. Yeah, throw a dog out there. That'll get him off the road. <laughs> Couldn't have gone with chicken? <laughs> <laughs> just, you know, Christy, you're a big fan of AAA, as am I. But, oh, yeah. You know, in uh, in, in Florida, the, what are the A stands for alligators? They're there everywhere. They are <laughs> Why everywhere. do we keep getting these stories? They're, it's the Florida speed bump. Yep, that's true. Hmm. Isn't there a place there called Alligator Alley? Sure. Yeah, in the Everglades. I've is that what it's officially it. named, or yeah. is that yes. just sort of yep. what and when you And when you drive through there... They are lined up all along the banks, just sunbathing. It's unbelievable. Well, and that's not that far from uh, the little towns and hamlets there in Florida. I... Yeah. 
Well, actually, actually, actually check Come on, Alligator man. Alley is, is quite, quite far from... Is it quite uh, a ways? Yes. I'm yes, sorry. Yes, the Alligator Alley would be like... Uh, when you're going How from, far? Let's say, uh, what's a, we could go like Fort Myers to Miami or something. Yes, very you good. Know, yeah, whereas opposed, if you were in Central Florida... Central Florida. And you were going sort of northeast... Right. You might pass through Sanford, Florida. Sanford. Formerly right. the home of Larry the Cable Guy. Uh-huh. <laughs> and then, if, then you're heading to Daytona Beach, you, of course, okay. pass through or pass by a Deland. Oh, Deland. Deland. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. That's an wow. interesting... Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Why do they call it Deland? Oh. Well, they call it Deland because it's right near Desee. <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. You know, my new favorite chocolate is De Brand chocolate. Oh, nice. That? That's Why a do very they call nice it that? Because yeah, it's delicious. I don't know. I, I just, <laughs> that was fun. It's you, delicious. Went there to get some uh, coffee the other day. And it, you have chocolate here? Give me that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. I had no idea how delicious it could be. Give me the teaser, Christy. Oh, uh, well, we have Allie Breen coming up next with... Sexy time. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> Gross. Don't All you need to know. Right now, it's uh, it's dinner time or lunch time or breakfast time. How about getting uh, your food? Dinner time. There dinner we go. Time. There we go. Uh, from from Hello Fresh. Let's see now. Here's how this works. Hello Fresh. They do the shopping. They do the measuring. They deliver the box with all those fresh ingredients, and you make great meals. Like I said, you can do breakfast, lunch, or dinner. They've got them all. In fact, every week, more than fifty different recipes. All kinds of different recipes, too. Let's, let me get this straight for you. You've got um, their new Mediterranean options. You've got comfort food. You've got uh, low-cal or or low-carb. Uh, Whatever you're into, they're going to have it for you. And uh, you whip them together and have restaurant-quality food, and, as they used to say in the commercial, and I helped. That's right. Get started today. HelloFresh.com slash BTShow16. Willie, what's the latest? One of my favorites, the pork sausage and shingled potatoes with broccoli and balsamic glaze. Now, this is a sheet pan meal so you do it all in the oven super easy, but in the summertime, I like to take the pork sausage, go outside on the grill. Oh, now, they're going to send yes. you six ingredients, put those together in four easy steps, and you have this delicious dinner from our friends at HelloFresh. The key to this is they've got the little packets of spices, stuff you're mm-hmm. never going to do on your own, and you're going to become a better cook and have some fun. Great for date night, Josh. Get started today. Great for date night, Alsie. All you, right. You and your Donnie could have a, have a very nice I time. I will cheer him on as he cooks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, get started today, HelloFresh.com slash BT Show 16. Now, why the BT Show 16? Well, it's because it's part of a special program. What does that program provide? 16 free meals, three free gifts. Get the details, HelloFresh.com slash BT Show 16, like Bob Tom Show. BT Show 16 at HelloFresh.com slash BT Show 16. We're coming back with one of our best features. It's uh, the lovely Allie Breen and Sexy Time. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Hi, this is Bobcat Goldthwaite, and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. How you doing? Hey, Bobcat, Mark Allison with you, rolling through a Wednesday morning. Don't forget, Donnie Baker coming up tomorrow night, the 26th of May through May 29th at Comedy Off-Broadway in Lexington, Kentucky. Lexington, you have been warned. DonnieBaker.com for tickets. Rolling through a Wednesday. Allie Breen coming up. Jessica Allsman all is well with the world. And you're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Good morning. I'm Mark Allison with things you may have missed. Roman Abramovich's 19-year ownership of Chelsea ending after the British government approved the sale of the Premier League club by the sanctioned Russian oligarch to a consortium fronted by Los Angeles Dodgers part owner Todd Boley. The government had to be sure that Abramovich, who was sanctioned over his links to Russian President Vladimir Putin, did not profit from the enforced sale of the club that his investment turned into one of the most successful in European football. The reigning FIFA Club World Cup winners and 2021 European champions will be sold for $3.1 billion U.S., the highest price ever for a sports team, once Premier League approval is granted. The University of California system has agreed to pay $375 million to more than 300 women who said they were sexually abused by a longtime UCLA gynecologist. The announcement Tuesday brings total payments by the university in lawsuits against Dr. James Heap to nearly $700 million. That's the largest amount paid by a public university in a wave of sexual misconduct scandals involving campus doctors. The private University of Southern California paid out more than $1 billion to settle thousands of cases against its longtime gynecologist. Heaps worked at UCLA for 35 years and has pleaded not guilty to 21 sexual abuse charges. That's a look at things you may have missed. More of the Bob and Tom Show coming up. 
things you hear on the Bob and Tom Show. Hi, I'm Marty Gleckman <laughs> for Casket Carnival. It's a Casket Carnival. You won't lose your shirt. It's a Casket Carnival. When we shovel on the dirt, we'll make sure you'll really save before we stick you in the grave. We won't stick you. We've got lots of games and prizes, and since many of our coffins are scratch and dent or gently used models, we pass the savings on to you at Casket Carnival. And don't forget to say hello to our lovable mascot, Embalmo the Clown. Hey, yeah, there, and thanks for coming to the Casket Carnival. You're really going to dig our prices there. Don't forget to ask about our layaway plan, huh? Hey, geez, what's wrong with these people? I'm dying up there, huh? Uh, at the cremation station, we want to earn your business. You know, sometimes I wish I were dead. Hey, hi, this is Tom. And this is Chick from the Bob and Tom Show. Hey, Christy, what's the best way to get full access to the show? Hey, what? you introduced me. Uh, that would be to become a Bob and Tom VIP. Very good. Now, Josh, what's a feature of Bob and Tom VIP? Wait a minute. Well, the live five-camera video stream of the show, plus a podcast of the show, and comedy from the Bob and Tom archives. Excellent. Chick, what do you have to say for yourself? Become a Bob and Tom VIP now. Just go to bobandtom.com slash VIP. VIP. See, that was worth the wait, wasn't it? You don't say we didn't warn you. There's laughter ahead. You guys want to grab lunch? We yeah. can't go anymore. <laughs> Holy That's cow. a good day's work, everybody. This is Bob and Tom 24-7. Morning, Bob and Tom Show. Yes, uh, if I could just have a few minutes of your time, I'd like to speak with you today about the joys of water sports. Is this Bob and or Tom? This is, uh, yeah, this is Bob. Yeah, uh, perhaps you already own a boat. However, this is a wonderful opportunity for you to upgrade your boat. Shut with... up, Ryan. I read the script all wrote. <laughs> <laughs> upgrade boats. I want him to buy one. I almost got him, Donnie. Okay, okay. Uh, so... <laughs> the badass wave buster, uh, beast on the water. I am tell Chicky, look. Center and he'll buy it. <laughs> get a free tube if you're not a lard queen or like pork. I ain't even gave my pager number, man. Donnie, all right, I'm not going to do this anymore, Donnie. Get back to work, Randy. You oh. screwed it up anyway. <laughs> Bob and Tom, 24 7. What'd you do, Doc? Ah, uh, so I screwed up. You know how too many times I, I say the wrong thing. Yeah. Right. Well, Kathy's into this mail order stuff again. Uh -huh. Right. Yeah. She's into this big time. I came home the other day. There was a case of breast enlargement cream on the kitchen table. <laughs> there was? Breast enlargement cream? <laughs> yeah, sitting right there on the table. I said, what the hell is this for? She said she rubs it on her breast. They get bigger. Uh -huh. I said, just use toilet paper. It's been working on your butt for eight years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a beautiful Right now, Killer Bees joins dog. us in the studio. Uh, Bees, how you doing? Real good, man. Well, Ranking up a you. shopping list over here. My wife's eating in bed now. She's at that part of the pregnancy where they crave all this food. Mm -hmm. Some people have mirrors over the bed. We got a sneeze guard. <laughs> 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 Sleeping on those posturepedic seal meal, man. <laughs> hey, you ain't lived till you're making love, and your wife says, "Go slow. I'm spilling my chili." <laughs> <laughs> Spanning the globe to bring you the constant variety of loads of curvy cleavage on display. Woo! The thrill of victory <laughs> and the agony of defeat. But don't touch those. Sorry. The human drama of loads of curvy cleavage on display. Woo! This is. The Bob and Tom Show. No shoes. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hey. Josh Arnold, the sidekick chair. Hello. There's Jessica Alsman. Hi. Ace Cosby, here. Here. There's Willie Griswold. Here. I'm Chick McGee. Here's Tom Griswold. Thank you very much, Chick McGee. I look up on the screen. There is the lovely Allie Breen. Oh, Wait boy. a second. Yeah. Um, we are not at home, I, it looks like, Allie. Uh, I see yeah, a, we are not at home. I see this is a, real sexy time. I'm in bed. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I see a balcony. Um, where, where are you? Florida. No, I'm actually in L.A. I have a voiceover job until Friday. Oh, great. Nice. Good for oh, cool. you. Yeah. Can, can you say what yeah. it's for? Yeah, I mean, it's a cartoon pilot. I don't think it has a name yet, so uh, I'm playing a little boy. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, if, if for some, that may be our first letter in oh, sexy boy. time. Uh, yeah. Nancy Cartwright <laughs> has uh, made yeah. tens of millions of she dollars. Sure has. Absolutely. Amazing. Yeah. What's this your little boy voice? Nice job. 
<laughs> this is pretty you? much it. I go a little <laughs> lower, but that's it. And slower. Really? But yeah, really? so apparently I have a little boy voice. We'll see how it turns out. Yeah, I don't hear that. Do you? Me either. Maybe it's because we know what she looks like. Close your eyes. Talk okay. slower. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, the, sh the show is, of course, called Sexy Time. And yes. um, Allie is a stand-up comedian and, and voiceover artist, apparently. And it uh, looks like it looks really nice Hoping there. To be. Looks nice. Yeah. It should be fun. It's nice. It's very early, but it's nice. Okay. Well, uh, let's get to our letters. What have you got? Dear Allie, my boyfriend loves to watch me use toys in the bedroom. Recently, while he was watching, he opened his own drawer, took out his own toy, a fleshlight, and started using that in front of me and asked if I liked it. Yeah. I didn't want to ruin the mood, so I said I did, but really I did not. Why are we both using toys in front of each other instead of just interacting? Oh, God. Do girls actually like watching their guys use a toy? I don't know if I'm being a prude or if this is normal. What should I do? It doesn't matter if you're a prude or if it's normal. You didn't care for it. You can just tell him yeah. now probably. when you're not in the throes to say, yeah, you probably, know, I didn't really care for that. Probably shouldn't have lied to him in the first place. Yeah. See, once again, Josh's solution to everything is uh, op open communication. Yeah. Which, as we Crazy. all know, who we've never been works. in <laughs> relationships, it never works. I don't know yeah, what well, he's saying. You guys, you, no, nobody in this room, huh? probably besides me, has huh? open communication with anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. And that's because you, right. that's because you live alone. <laughs> you know, you, when you talk to the mirror, the mirror goes, "You know, you're right, Josh." Thank uh, you, yeah, thank you for. I often me. agree with myself. Thank you for telling <laughs> me that. And uh, would you please squeegee me off? Okay. Um, I've never come across this situation, so to speak. Now the the <laughs> flesh. I, I can't really go into too many details, but it's my understanding the fleshlight oh, is a um, uh, a device that would be. <laughs> Sort of recreating the, 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 the device the, a man the, uses. The, the innards yeah. of a lady. In private, usually. In front of a man. <laughs> wow. Well, uh, well explained, Tom. Good job. No, I, 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 innards. I have a technical question. Is the, <laughs> does the, is the flashlight an electronic device or is it merely sort of a sleeve? <laughs> is there some. There's probably more than one version. I bet yes, there's one that vibrates. Dr. Sadie, uh, I almost said Sadie Hawkins. <laughs> <laughs> Sadie Allison? She asks you to the dance. Yes. Uh, yeah, Dr. Dr. Sadie Allison has brought in some that are sort of electric, but, so, but they, I think the traditional flashlight is manual. Mm -hmm. they, so they don't, they don't heat up? Some, but not the traditional flashlight. I don't, okay. I don't believe. I mean, who knows? They may have 10 models. I mean, it would heat up on its own, I would think. Once yeah, you're, uh... friction and whatnot. Like, like, starting, yep. like starting a fire in the Boy Scouts back in the day. I've never tried a flashlight, but I know a couple of guys who swear by them. Really? Yes. Do you put them in your hand luggage so they don't get lost? <laughs> <laughs> no, if you're flying with it, you have to get a special one that's see-through. That's the whole thing. Yeah, you yeah, show the TSA. Oh, yeah. You can see the innards. Do you put it in the dishwasher to wash it? How do you wash it? I don't that? know how they're washed. Mm. Well, they get a little gamey. Maybe it's one of those like pipe cleaner <laughs> things like a water bottle. Oh, no, yeah, like a baby bottle. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, I, I don't have an answer for this. It's, it's still a little... I tell them you don't like it. You won't have to put up with it anymore. Okay, let's get to our next letter. Yeah, Allie Breen is I would guest. make that a public service announcement for most guys. I don't know that any girl really is into that. I know guys like to watch. I don't know if girls would be. I don't know. Maybe I'm just speaking for myself. Oh, Jess? Yeah. Is that you almost weighing in? No, no, I almost weighed in. Oh, that was you, Christy. What do you think? I, I mean, I don't know that I would be repulsed if that's the word i whatever i know plenty of women who like watching their man do that yes, yes. without any yeah. toys yes right cuz you can that's see where it. i was yeah. going well, yeah. cuz you can see it when it's not in the fleshlight <laughs> <laughs> i assume yeah. yeah. the fleshlight uh, here's the here's the play by play in the fleshlight there it is nope there it is <laughs> <laughs> right Pretty yeah. much. I mean, yeah. I'm assuming. I don't. I've never had a flashlight. I do. Of I'll get you one. Uh, does it, that's okay. Uh, <laughs> I think never everyone should get Tom one. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I mean. Now, you know, here in the states, we call out. a flashlight a flashlight, but in Canada, they call it a torch. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So, so uh, what's your point? Well, my point is that with the a flash, torchlight. Oh, flash there. Torch. <laughs> I, I, I called a torch. I, I saw my man put it in a torch. I, wow. <laughs> it could be confusing. I'll change that Didn't song. Didn't get much for torch. That's all right. No, flash torch. Okay. What else have you got, Allie? Dear Allie, my sister started an OnlyFans after losing her job over the pandemic, and it's going pretty well. 
I just found out my boyfriend subscribed to it. Oh. <laughs> he says it was to be supportive and he's never actually used it, but uh -huh. I'm super creeped out. Do you think he's actually being supportive or you think he actually wants to see her pictures? Both. Um, uh, very creepy. He definitely wants to Ooh. see the pic Because just to support her, he could go, here's $20. Yes. <laughs> He doesn't have to do the OnlyFans. Yeah, yeah, get yeah, her a Subway gift card. Yeah, here's a gift certificate to Starbucks. <laughs> right. <laughs> nice jobs. Yeah. Um, if you're uncomfortable with him on it, ask him to uh, unsubscribe or have her block him. But hopefully he'll unsubscribe on his own. Yeah. Or at least he'll say he'll un unsubscribe. Right. Well, can yeah. she see who's subscribing? Could her sister tell her? If he's actually probably. using his name and picture. She's probably not going to oh. rat him out well, either. Well, if, if she what? sends him a flashlight and says, sign this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a big clue. Oh, that's yeah. so wow. weird. Man, like that's it. But good creepy. for her for making no, some money. That is. I've never been on OnlyFans. Explain to me exactly. Is it strictly porno? Not, no. no, no. I mean, there are comedians on there. And there are. Yeah. Uh, and what do they do? The comedians I usually mean, just push their podcasts new, and yeah, stuff. Yeah, new, new content. Thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But the subscribe. but it is mainly porn, and uh, the women can do whatever they want. And a lot of bikini shots. Like, sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I mean, even most of the comedians who are on there are doing, they're putting up sexy photos, I think. Oh, they are? I mean, really? yeah. I mean, the one or two I know in New York are doing that for sure. Have okay. you considered it? <laughs> no, you know what I mean? The Just only time... Well, yeah, I never did until that girl, Bad Bad Baby. She yeah. made like fifty million or something. Yeah, it's crazy how much year. money it's you can insane. make. The Catch Me yeah. Outside girl. Yep, that's the one. Yep. Mm -hmm. I bet oh, that's like generational. I, I, I bet Louis C.K. doesn't, huh? Uh, you know, he, he he could steer into it. He should. But yeah, he could yeah. steer into it. And just be. On there. <laughs> he should just to be funny. That would be. Crazy. With the the comedians I know that are on it, you'll see a lot of uh, lewds, not nudes. Being like, hey, it's kind of sexy, but we're not showing any uh, viola. Mm. We're not showing any downstairs. Right. Mm -hmm. No downstairs. Just no a little downstairs. extra money. <laughs> Here's my shoulder. Mm -hmm. There's freckles. <laughs> Enjoy. Are, are there guy comedians on it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I was just for really. Women. Oh, sure, yeah. Mark Norman and Joe List are on there. and um, I like Mark Norman. He's yeah, yeah oh, oh, Joe List funny. is brilliant. Is, mm -hmm. is, uh, Mark, yeah. What is he doing, though? Is he they're, it's mostly their podcast, okay. pushing uh, that. Okay. All right. Tom, you so can they're be on, on their OnlyFans. Funny. We'll set you up a page. That's okay. I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm busy. <laughs> you do well, pretty well, I think. That's yeah, the beauty of it. We just is take there, pictures of you and post them. Is there one for pervs that are into fish called Only Fins? <laughs> <laughs> Those who were they were disappointed with plenty of fish when they found out it was people. <laughs> they tried Fender, but that was. Not I fun. bet there's some mermaids on there. Only I bet there are mermaids. Fins. I mean, any fetish you want is on there. Mm. It's good. The women control all the content. They they only put out what they're comfortable with. And they, you and they subscribe make... like on a monthly basis. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And some are free. How do you find people? Do you scroll through and it has like the, the you know, thumb, thumbnail pictures of people? You can search you by name and okay. then you get suggestions as well. Mm -hmm. And you can also just go to okay. Google and then type in girls on OnlyFans with whatever your fetish is. And then there's some sort of uh, like on Reddit or whatever folks are talking about it. Oh. So mm -hmm. you could, you could, we could Google um, women on uh, that are dressed as mermaids on OnlyFans. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And there's yes. a forum up there, and the fellows are pay to see them. Yeah, and they 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 name their own price. So some women would be twenty bucks a month, some would be free, but then they would send you videos that you would have to pay to unlock. Some do both. And they would describe if they're mermaids uh, from the bottom up or the top down. Yes. Well, or yeah. Because that'd be kind of disappointing, really, I guess. <laughs> well, here's old, well, old oh, catfish Tom. Nancy. Kind of <laughs> Mostly legs. <laughs> no. No no legs. No legs. No mermaids. No legs. So he's no, saying, what if you get the reverse? See, well, you, there's the no such of, thing yeah. as the reverse. There's no reverse you mermaid. Idiot. That's oh, not a mermaid. That's a reverse I, I, cowgirl. You're check out ReverseMermaid.com. So uh, 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 reverse uh, mermaid. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Our guest is Allie Breen. She's in Los Angeles, California, doing some voiceover work. That sounds great, Allie. Allie is a stand-up comedian, and she's also the host of, uh, of of this program, which we call Sexy Time. <laughs> what else have you got, Allie? That's right. Dear Allie, I went on a first date with a girl to an Italian restaurant and a movie. We couldn't finish our meals, and I didn't want to wrap up mine, so she wrapped up both of ours to take home. Yeah. <laughs> then, during the movie, she actually took out her meal and started eating stuff from it with her hands. Yeah, she yeah. did. 
otherwise she was actually pretty cool but i really can't get over this what should i do yeah, then you know what do yourself do her a favor and yeah. don't see her again yeah. yeah she's the coolest <laughs> I know. are you serious she's eating alfredo with her fingers christy no. oh i need a meat i like that she was that comfortable she was just being yeah. herself and no. she's sneaking in food to the movie theater. Yeah. One of my favorite things. Wait a minute, to do. what is she? Homeless? No. <laughs> no. No. That's what it sounds Good like. For her. You've never taken some fudge brownie M and M's and you no. hide them in the cargo shorts. No. You get in there. Oh. Yeah, but no, but not. Uh, not not lasagna. <laughs> yeah. Did she offer any to him, or was it just like she was hogging it? You know. Do you want any uh, popcorn? No, no. I've got this tour of Italy. I'm gonna go ahead and polish up. Because he's got the Leaning Tower of Pisa <laughs> on the bottom of the popcorn oh. <laughs> bucket. I, uh, that's weird. That but I guess I, on the it's one hand, she's kind of she's kind of being uh, being herself, yeah. and having yeah. fun. I don't know. I... <laughs> Unconventional for sure. But it's, since you hated yeah. it so much, leave her alone. She'll yeah. find somebody who yeah. likes it. Yeah, I'll do chicken wings on the first date as a good test because, like, if you're not going to like me when I'm covered in sauce, you're probably not going to like me at all. Mm -hmm. So I good think this point. girl's doing a similar thing. She's letting her weird flag fly. Yeah. yeah but what kind of Italian restaurant do you go to where you don't finish the food? Oh, boy. Oh, my gosh. Oh, they Buka, so Buka de Beppo, uh, yeah. those servings are pretty yeah. big. <laughs> Go for it. Come on. <laughs> okay. Go uh, for it. Yeah. Uh, Allie Breen is our guest. Once again, the show is sexy time here in the Bob and Tom program. Give me more. What do you got? Dear Allie, I finally got into a happy relationship after having a horrible breakup two years ago. Oh. I just started posting pictures of me with my new girlfriend, and suddenly my ex started messaging me again. Sure, oh, sure. yeah. I don't know if the timing is coincidental, but it actually feels good to be back in touch. Oh. I can't oh. tell my girlfriend that we're talking again, but I kind of want to see where this goes. Is it that big of a deal to not tell her if we're only in the texting phase? Coming from the lips of an angel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you still love yeah. her. Yeah. You are yeah. in dangerous territory, my friend. You. She mm. just wants to keep you for herself, so you still, like, oogle over her, and this is awkward. She doesn't like it. Yeah. She's like, just... Even if she hooks up with you, she's not going to be your girlfriend. Yeah, no, she, she treated you bad yeah. the first time. She's going to treat you bad the second time. She's only jealous because you got somebody else. Uh-huh. Blocker. Blocker. <laughs> yeah. Ow. In this case, I said it's the best way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. She just wants to prove That's that what she the can block still is. But you know what? Yeah. He doesn't want that. He wants to get back together. If we're we're talking to somebody who's already made up their mind. Oh, so you're saying he should get back together, then he should dump her so he's got a nice clean Oh, break. there you go. No, well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go that. all Allsman on it. Dump her and then shoot out her porch light. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> now, is that, is, is that uh, shooting out one's porch light, is that like a Cleveland steamer? Uh, or, no. It's just, <laughs> oh, you didn't mean it euphemistically. The Chicago sunroof. No, it's actually physically shooting. Oh. Out of porch light. Oh, okay, okay. guys, because yeah. I, you know, you've got all these things from that, across the street, and then peeling you, out. You know the, the Chicago sunroof, don't you, Christy? <laughs> no, oh, yeah, I'll, yes. I'll tell you off the air. That's where you take a crap through the sunroof. Oh, <laughs> oh, it lands hopefully in the driver's seat. Oh. <laughs> but you'll take anything. Gear shift. Can never be too short. Tell now. the guy that he, she's just trying to still control him, and that she's a bad person, and he's probably screwing up a good thing to just block mm -hmm. her. Yeah, she needs her ego stroked. Yep, yep. exactly. Um, now, Allie, uh, oh, I, I'm really intrigued by this, that you're doing this voiceover thing and you're portraying a little boy. Did you have to yeah. audition? Did you have to read a bunch of stuff to get this? Yeah, I mean, I just had to send in uh, tapes reading some stuff. Okay. Exactly. So, And I read for a few different parts, but that's what they landed on. Have you seen the drawing? No, not yet. So, Okay, so you have no idea what the character's sketch is. That's cool, yeah. Yeah. I'd love to do this. You're so I know. Lucky. This, oh this is one of my, one of my dreams, yeah. too. And as, as Josh yeah, pointed totally. out, um, uh, well, I think every, does everyone know that Bart Simpson is not? Uh, <laughs> I don't think we're giving anything away. <laughs> right. saying, yeah. Everybody knows Nancy Cartwright. And Carter Bobby Hill is, is uh, was yeah. with Pamela Adlin. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, most cartoon children yeah. 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 are guys. girls. Bob Burgers are all, they're the guys doing funny. girls' voices. Women, yeah. yeah. Pamela Adlin. Yeah. And, and that's okay now where they're not getting, uh, <sighs> you know. Uh, I bet some people have trouble with it. Let me ask you something. More so that guys would be doing girl voices as why opposed to women doing looking, men's voices. Why are you looking for trouble? You're just <laughs> looking for trouble. I'm just, you know, tired of being, you know. You're no, you're right. Pot is what Trying you're to doing. kick some stuff up. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Okay, uh, we got time for one more letter, Allie. What do you got? Dear Allie, I am 41 years old, divorced, and met a guy on a dating site who actually seemed pretty great. We met in person at a restaurant, got along well, and then when we ordered dessert, his wife showed up. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> wow. 
He didn't so, make. He didn't make you give her half the dessert. Did so he? yeah. When he ordered dessert, did he say, "I'll have a piece of my ex-wife"? <laughs> no, it's a his current wife. Is he, is he still his married? Current wife. Oh. I so, want some cake, but I don't want a whole piece. Just a side piece, please and thank you. Oh, there you go. Oh, Boy. No. So I want to hear what else goes. happens. It was insane. I didn't know what was happening. And then they explained they wanted me to be part of a thruple with them. Oh. Uh -huh. I left in shock. But seriously, now as I've kept dating, the rest of the dating pool is pretty bad. Am I going to seriously need to make huge concessions like this as an older woman on the market no. to get a good man? No, no, no. You're no, not, you, no. Don't, you don't have to make no. concessions like that. If First you of all, yeah, this is a dishonest way to get you involved. In it the is. Yeah. I'm sure there are plenty of ways to find somebody on a... On a site, absolutely. Where there are a lot of women who are interested. But in you're that. right, Tom. This yeah. to to tr to trap her into this situation is a little weird. You passed maybe the that's test. maybe that's part yeah. of their fantasy, though. It could be. Oh, yeah. I bet that is. Uh huh. I bet you're right. They yeah. wanted to surprise her. That was part of it. Uh, you know what I say? Uh, write it off as a, a flattering thing, <laughs> and uh, yeah, go find a guy that you. This would be a great scene in a movie, though. It sure would. It have has her, to have worked yeah. before. And ha and have the have the wife come up and start picking stuff stuff off of her plate and eating it. Because, <laughs> from what I understand, <laughs> what? Yes. <laughs> Uh, from what I understand, a thruple is more than just a three-way. She, they want her to be in a relationship. It's a full relationship. relationship. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I see. A thruple. That's yes. A, so yeah. What do we call those words, Josh? Portmanteaus. Portmanteaus. Yeah. Not. Some are better than others. Mm -hmm. Brunch acceptable. Thruple. Eh. Nah. Yeah, it yeah. Seems forced. Wasn't well, there just a politician who was in a thruple? Wasn't that a news story? There was someone. Yes, it I was think, uh, a President Joe was Biden. <laughs> <laughs> He is in a thruple. <laughs> but of course, mainstream media won't tell you that. <laughs> Just an outrageous place. <laughs> we got to go. Allie, best of luck with your voiceover. Thanks so much. You, I'll tell you how you it goes. You look great. California must be treating you well. You look uh, wonderful. Thank you, guys. Yeah, so best of you. luck with that project. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. We'll, yeah, we'll that'll be a dream if you, job. If you want to reach Ellie, it's A-L-L-I-B-R-E-E-N on various social media platforms. Thank you very much. Now, uh, cartoons are dead. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Allie. Right now, I want to tell you about Simply Safe. Yes. We don't, you don't have to listen to us. Simply Safe keeps winning all of the awards. Chick McGee turned me on to Simply Safe. What was it, six this, years ago? Yep, and this is the design it yourself, install it yourself, home security system we've been been telling you about but it's not always outside forces that you need simply safe's protection from this is terry's story you've heard this a simply safe customer she was away for the weekend for her daughter's wedding in the morning of the big day she got a call as if mom wasn't doing enough she got a call from simply safe's 24 7 professional monitoring center they let her know that her system had detected water in the basement in the moments like this time is critical because even a little bit of water can cause Tens of thousands of dollars in damage. Simply Safe detected the water just moments after the leak started. She made arrangements for the water to be shut off, and there was a happy ending. A comprehensive Simply Safe system and 24 7 professional monitoring. You can have someone always looking out for you, just like Terry did. Plans cost under a dollar a day with no long term contracts or hidden fees. Customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes. Go to simplysafetom.com. Go now and claim a free indoor security camera plus 20% off with interactive monitoring. That's simplysafetom.com. Now, Chick's too modest to mention it, but uh, how many cameras do you have now? Nine. Nine so, cameras. Uh, Chick's Simply Safe system Nine. is kind of like uh, you're uh, switching the Super Bowl. That's right. <laughs> camera seven. Okay. Living room. Camera two. That's right. Simply Safe is the best. Like I said, read the reviews. SimplySafeTom.com. When we come back, maybe a little more history for you and a little more something, something. And we've got, um, we promised a story about, um, about the bees. Coming back. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Keep us with you at all times. Get the Bob and Tom app now at your app store. State law.
things you hear on the Bob and Tom Show. Boy, this week in Fort Mitchell, Kentucky, sure has a lot of dummies in town. It's the annual ventriloquist convention. Uh, morning, Bob and Tom Show. <laughs> I'm sorry? What did you say? From the ventriloquism convention? Yeah. And uh, I'm not moving on this. Yeah, I, I can tell. Um, oh, we can tell. I can tell your, your lips are pretty, so, uh, uh, pretty still there. Jerry, what's the name of your partner? Timmy. Timmy? It's really. Can, can, can <laughs> Timmy. Can, can Timmy speak into the phone? Hand in the phone. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to drink some water. Drink some water while talking to us. Okay, okay go ahead. I'll <laughs> <laughs> have to call you back. <laughs> You're listening to Bob and Tom 24 7. <laughs> Awful entertaining. Essential morning radio. Uh, this is Bob and Tom 24-7. 24-7. 24-7. Rolling through a Wednesday with you. It is May the 25th. Coming up this weekend, the Carb Day broadcast on Friday, the Race Day broadcast on Sunday, the Indianapolis 500 right around the corner. Hope you can make it to Indianapolis for the race. If you never have been here, I highly suggest it. They're expecting an excess, and I'm not missing up my numbers here. 350,000 plus, maybe 375,000. The largest one-day sporting event on the planet, ladies and gentlemen. And it all happens coming up this Sunday, the 106th running of the Indianapolis 500. Again, our Carb Day broadcast, the final day of practice, coming up Friday morning. You got your actor, Drew Powell, two-time Indy 500 winner, Al Unser Jr., Duke Tomato, and the Power Trio all joining us just outside the start-finish line in Indianapolis Speedway, Indiana, and the race day broadcast coming up Sunday morning, 7 a.m. to 11 a.m., right here on Bob and Tom 24-7. Hi, everybody. Christy Lee from the Bob and Tom News Desk. The head of the Food and Drug Administration is preparing to tell lawmakers about events that led to a months-long gap before inspecting the plant, the center of a nationwide baby formula shortage. FDA Commissioner Robert Califf is scheduled to answer questions today from House lawmakers probing the formula shortage. According to prepared testimony, Califf will tell lawmakers a COVID-19 outbreak at Abbott's formula plant led regulators to delay their inspection from late December to January. It's one thing to study beers you sip out of a bottle or a glass, not a baby bottle. It's another thing to study one in a classroom or lab. Eastern Washington University and No Lee Brewhouse of Spokane are teaming up to put together the school's first professional certificate program for the craft beer industry. The 15 credit program begins in the fall. No Lee Brewhouse owners John and Cindy Bryant donated $10,000 to help launch the program. And after a series of adventures, a gold signet ring that is more than 3,000 years old has made its way back to Greece. The ring was stolen from an Aegean Sea island during World War II. After being pilfered, it crossed the Atlantic, where it was bought by a Nobel Prize winning Hungarian scientist and ended up in a Swedish museum before being transferred back to Greece. It's the latest in a series of coups by Greek authorities seeking the return of works of art plundered from the antiquities rich country. And that's your news. I'm Christy Lee. More of the Bob and Tom Show on the way. Bob and Tom. Hi, this is Tom. Coming up Thursday morning in the Bob and Tom Show, we'll hang out with our West Coast correspondent, comedian Al Jackson. Plus, here's some music from Haywood Banks. <laughs> Water, hey, you there, MacGyver. Drool's cool, but don't rely on saliva. <laughs> yeah. That's Thursday morning on the Bob and Tom Show. Bob and Tom. The Bob and Tom Show, weekday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern on Bob and Tom 24-7. Hey, everybody, this is Jimmy Pardo. You recognize my voice from the show and my face from television. You are listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. It's the most talked about show on television, The Bachelorette, where 25 eligible bachelors try to win the hand of one single woman. And now, Bob and Tom Television brings you a new twist on this hit show. She's 30 and single. She's... What the hell do you mean by that? 
Oh, uh, uh, nothing. Meet Linda Jackson. Now, here come the fellas. Say hello to Todd Williams. Hi, Linda. I'm really pleased to... Yeah. Next. Uh, and here's our next eligible guy. Say hello to... Hold it. Are you really going to say each time, say hello to Dick Ding Dong or whatever? <laughs> Jesus. <coughs> okay. Here he is, Jerry Peterson. Hello, Linda. I can't tell you how happy I am to finally meet you. And... Right, right. Uh, what do you do, Jerry? Uh, well, I own my own consulting business and... Ah, uh... consulting, eh? <laughs> and when did you lose your Amway dealership, Jerry? Huh? Sheesh. <laughs> what a bitch. She's the bitchlerette. <laughs> She's single, pissed off, and is looking for money. <gasps> Lots of money. Hi, I'm Linda. I'm Phil. Yeah. Did you forget something? No, I don't think so. Any Gift? Gift? I didn't know that we were... Mm, Bye-bye. <laughs> Loser. <laughs> wow. Tune in to Bob and Tom TV and see why she's called the... Yes. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Yep. There's Josh Arnold at the sidekick chair. Hi, Chick. There's Jessica Alsman. Hello. There's Ace Cosby hey. manning the track phone hotline hot phone. There's Willie Griswold. Good morning. I'm Chick McGee, and here's Tom. Uh, we have um, already done our Today in History segment. Uh, we can maybe go a little deeper. Oh. No, but first, uh, Christy, do, do we have our bee story? Do you want to get that? Over 15,000 honeybees were removed from a piece of equipment at Louis Armstrong International Airport in New Orleans. Beekeeper Craig Forsyth told WDSU <laughs> that he was called out to the airport by Delta Airlines. The bees were discovered inside a piece of equipment that helps get bags on and off planes. Forsyth said that he it was able to suction. still laughing at WDSU. Oh, no, I know. I'm actually, I was just thinking about this. You get, you know, you get you got the the airline pilot going. If you look out the left side of the plane, you'll see a guy who looks like he's dancing. No, he's getting the bejesus thing out of him. A swarm of bees. I'm sorry. I was, how'd they get them out? He was able to suction up the bees and, quote, put them in a special place. Oh, that's, oh, yeah. that's plan B. No injuries were reported. <laughs> well, there you go. Oh, look at it. It's Concourse B. Oh. <laughs> the seats are also named B sometimes. Yeah, so. yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, they got the queen. How? Queen B. She was in first class. Come on. <laughs> oh, naturally. <laughs> she's, she's, she's queen B. Queen B. Uh, okay, well, you want to try going deep into today in history? Deeper, I can't deeper. think of any way to stop you. Time now for Deep History. <laughs> it's National Wine Day. That's all you need. Deep, to deep, deep, deep. Uh, we covered the fact that the Star Wars, whatever it's called, Episode Four, mm -hmm. the first one, uh, it, it, it was uh, released on this date in 1977. Also in 1979, Alien Ooh, released. That was a scary. A thing. classic. God, that scared the hell out. Sure, it still holds up. Oh, yeah, it puts a baby inside him. Um, and then also, as we mentioned, on yeah. in, in '83, it was Return of the Jedi. Now, um, let's see, what did we skip here? Oh, um, uh, Happy Birthday! We covered Anne H. Uh, comedian Dimitri Martin having a happy birthday, mm -hmm. uh, turning uh, almost fifty. We have oh, um, send him a card on an easel. <laughs> if you know Dimitri Martin, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah. Cillian Murphy. <laughs> yeah, great actor. Yeah, Peaky Blinders. Peaky mm -hmm. Blinders, that first Batman movie. The yeah. second one, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I was just in it for a minute. Yeah. Um, Ethan Supley. Yes, you know him. He was the big guy on uh, My Name is Earl. And since then, oh, yeah. he is he is like in super shape. The kid's Rip. jacked. Rip. Yes. It is inspirational, yeah. man. Yeah. No kidding. He's a cool actor, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All rats and all that. All right. He's uh, a comedy fan, too. He's funny. Mm -hmm. Brian Erlocker, former linebacker for the Chicago Bears. I think he's a member of the Hall of Fame. Is yeah. Ooh, Do you feel like one of those who's on first things with him? No. Uh, no. Is, this or, is this Earl Locker? No, no, that's uh, <laughs> Dennis's Locker. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Locker? <laughs> no, but I bet if you did, wow. he'd, really, he'd really think that was funny. <laughs> I'll have to okay. get him on the phone. You should tell him. In the world of hair transplants? Okay. Oh, yeah, he sure was. Now, uh, well, let's, uh, let's review what we learned on today's show, then. What have you got? Is that, is that right? All right. Time now for what we learned on today's <laughs> show. Here we go. Uh, Ace... When he's not here, mostly listens to talk radio in his car. Great shows like this. While driving, <laughs> while driving very slowly. There are no other great shows like this. And, Ace, I can't believe you're listening. And to always that. coming to complete stops at stop signs. Always. 
So you should see him tearing out of the parking lot. <laughs> we all line up just to watch him pull out. <laughs> Have you seen him leave the... He oh, flies yeah. out of here, Tom. Have you seen it? Yeah, I think the, the, he, can be, he can be the new Mr. Magoo. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit magoo -ish. Man's cautious. They'd have uh, to uh, make a couple of changes. <laughs> we... Uh, all right. I don't have a little more. No, you don't. You don't have a what? A chef. Oh, a chef. <laughs> uh, we had a story about some guys moving a house down the middle of the street that they abandoned. In Louisiana. Right in the middle of the street. And then we played Madness in the street. Oh, house so in the middle of the, in the middle of the street. Oh, house. Boys. In the middle of the Great song. Yeah. Come on. Uh, and then. Uh, was our castle and our keep, our uh, house. And then we uh, had a song about uh, sunglasses and looking at porn. I wear my sunglasses at night. Oh, okay. so Corey Hart, great song. And once again, the scientific study, the, 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 the subjects that had the sunglasses on would watch the porn longer and with uh, more focus, apparently. Evidently. Because they knew someone was looking at their eyes, so they, right. they couldn't see their eyes. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. I thought that was fascinating. Fascinating. Um, Change the world. Uh, we learned about uh, the fleshlight. What are you talking about? <laughs> Uh, no, monkeypox, the outbreak. That's where we are. Okay, and it sorry. started. Why at a are rave. you jumping ahead? He's got this. It started at a rave in Europe with monkeypox. Oh, Evidently, geez. there was a monkey at the rave. Mm. Things got out of hand. Mama's got the monkeypox. Daddy never uh, According to uh, Donnie Baker, the guy who created orange barrels must have in ground pool money. Uh, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of those out there now. And uh, Donnie Baker has a new company called Your Pillow. Mm -hmm. He thinks he may, that makes it uh, more inclusive. Uh, but it's also made of, I believe, what did he say? It's fiber, made of a fiber 1950 zero fiberglass. <laughs> Go get your eyes near it. Okay. As you all know, if you've been listening to this show any time at all, uh, Tom loves the group, the association, and particularly <laughs> the song... Enter, Enter the, the Young. young. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're thinking it's just because of the title, you are absolutely correct. Yep. And the seriousness with which they sing it, it's uh, it's awful. Enter the... Well, where is it, Slappy? <laughs> Enter the Young. We had, we, had to make, we had to make room for some other Enter things. Enter the Young. <laughs> yeah, they learn to play. Enter the Young. Uh, I'm getting my new uh, welcome mat. Uh, I ordered it this morning that says, doesn't say welcome. What does or it say? It says there's no reason for you to be here right there on the map. <laughs> Love it. Positive. That's a welcome to the compound. Oh, we had some questions about yesterday's show, by the way. What else? Uh -huh. I bet. When I played this song. Western Union. Because oh. it was the anniversary of the creation of the Morse Code, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. It seems to happen every three months on this show. Yeah, no, I, I love Morse code. It's always fun. It's always fun. And yeah, and if you are wanna, you saying Morse code? Morse. It's M O R S. Morse. Yeah, yeah I know. know. If you want to know more more about Morse code, it's you'll find it at morsecode dot dot dash dot com. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh. Look at him. He's loving it. Wow. Uh, yeah. And Pat, before he left, uh, sang a song uh, down at the porn shop about, of course, uh, Josh, Josh. Arnold. Okay, very And I don't know if you've heard this or not, but he, Pat has the number one comedy album in the United States. He does. It's called The Captured yeah. Live. This is The Bob and Tom Show. Become a Bob and Tom VIP and get your Bob and Tom fix 24-7. Get all the info in the VIP area at BobandTom.com. This is The Bob and Tom Show.